talk then. Someone should talk. And it's obviously already, already a shambles. Can you believe that? I, I, I'm amazed that we're back on the air and it's already a shambles. What are you doing? What? What are you talking about? I'm talking, the, no one was speaking, the record was ending, the, no one was speaking, it was just Kate. Well, I might shoot off. <laughs> <laughs> already, I might shoot off. It's Pretty like nothing's changed. Boys are back in town on XFM 104.9. We're back then, aren't we, Carl? Mm. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'm not coming back, I'm definitely not coming back. Oh, 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 care, care someone, care that I'm not coming back. Rick, I seem to remember the end of, yeah, the end of the last time we were on, what yeah. was that, three months ago? Yeah, three months Carl ago. Carl said he's never gonna do the show again, yeah. there was nothing that was gonna bring him back, yeah. he didn't enjoy it, wasn't gonna do it. All the rules, right? Really? Yes, um, I've, I've known him co coming back for so about two months, you know, cause he's got our agent now, representing him. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought he was a fool, really. Why? Well, what, what's yeah. he done for me? What's well, he done for us? No, I know, but I mean, he's, he's your agent, so, uh, and he's sort of calling Graham. And it was all a con, so Carl could get Mondays off. Poor Graham, the station's struggling enough as it is. Yeah. It's like running around like a headless chicken. Yeah. No one's listening, no one's listening. That's why I don't bother talking with the record then, cause it, there's no, it's, there's no loss. Sure. To London. <laughs> sure. Right? It's, it's, it's pointless, this show. We don't do it for the money, we don't do it for the kudos. I don't know why we do it. No. Is there anything on telly at this time? I'm gonna have to lie in. I know. But, um, it's all a ruse to get Mondays off. He's got Mondays off now, cos he has to do the show, two hours, Tonight. right, and he's still getting paid. And it's all a con because he knows that he's holding him over a barrel and he's, uh, it's like, oh, we've got to keep Carl happy. Mm. Right? I, I had, I had Mondays and Tuesdays off before Duncan got involved. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean, though? And it's like, poor Graham, who's the MD, the, uh, in charge of the thing, probably pulling his hair out, worrying about the station, right? You know, it's a sinking ship. And then Carl comes and well, I, I, you know, I'll do it, but I want Mandos off. They, uh, he's probably sitting home now. His family, he's probably ridiculed by yeah. his well, wife. Well, his kids almost certainly would have lost all respect for him. He's, he's been fooled by Carl Pilkington. He calls his mates and goes, oh, I'm, I'm busy, Graham. I don't, yeah. you know, I just can't think. Uh, it's just- It's, it's embarrassing. Just, but it's, do you know what I mean? And you think it's funny, and you think you've got one over him, he's going, oh, Mandos off for two enough. hours. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do. You think, like, and now you're now embarrassed, we've said it on air. But uh -huh. you're only, you're only, you're only conning yourself in the long run. Because, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, I hate that sort of, the world owes me a living, how much can I get, what can I get out of the world? What are you gonna give back to the world, Carl? What are you doing now then? Are you gonna prepare Monday? No, what have you, you prepared for this show now? You've had three months to prepare. Yeah. What have you, what have you got? What have you got for us? Okay, what's happened in the last three months? Uh, what? In this place or just my life? Well, what have you got for us? We're three months, we're cloning about, you get Mondays off, you're getting paid for it, you've got a cushy deal, you're having a laugh, you're taking the piss out of the management, right? So, what have you got for us? Give it to us. We've, we, I've kind of, uh, updated Rockbusters a bit. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, you said don't mess with it, if something's good, don't mess with it. What do you mean it wasn't good? <laughs> it was never good. It was never good, no, of course we had good. to fix it. It was fun to do, it was a laugh. I mean, much more, I imagine it was much more fun for me than the 450 <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I like, you know what I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed squeezing your head and dressing you up. No, but that's just it. When I had a meeting with, with Graham, right, I said, look, I'm not being funny. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I've had enough of it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what's up with you? you? You sounds like you have a right good laugh. I said, yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that's all good acting and stuff. I said, it's hell in there. <laughs> Um, I said, like I, he's talking about Vietnam. Yeah. I <laughs> said, having, having my head squoze, right? <laughs> what? Squoze? Squoze, squoze is squoze. still not a word. We've been away three months, it's still not a word. Right? Yeah. I said he's putting a dustbin lid on my head. Yeah. <laughs> you told this to the end, he's, he's hitting me with a tray. Yeah. Uh, he's chucking toilet paper at me. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but that's all over two years. I said, no, that was the same day. <laughs> <laughs> So. Okay then, what has changed in three months? Exc they're listening, they've been listening for six minutes now, come on, give us something. Bit of Nickelback. What's, <laughs> no, what's happened in three we'll days? Play a record well, what, what, three months? What, in my life or yeah. in here? Nothing's yeah. happened there, nothing's changed there. Right. But, I don't know, what, well, well, uh, do you know, do you know last time we were on? Yeah. Right? And, uh, I was telling you about the woman over the road, where what? I live. The one that walks around naked. There's a woman who walks about the flat oh, naked. This right? is when uh, Carl was watching a woman naked. Then she looked at, so, saw him looking. So what he did, this is the genius he did to get out of this. <laughs> he pulled his pants down, so he was naked too. <laughs> his girlfriend comes in and goes, Carl, what are you doing? He went. I can't tell you now, but don't look out of the window. <laughs> yeah, go on. Sorry, that woman. She's uh, she's bought some blinds. <laughs> 
Nickelback, someday on XFM 104.9. How old's the bloke from Nickelback? He looks know. about 40. It reminds me of, um, uh, you know when a kid's made up a fate to look like a lion? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like the Wizard of Oz lion. Yeah. But, you know, good tune. Not I've got to be controversial. I think rock rules the world again, Steve. Well, I hope so, mate. I hope so. Do you know so. what I mean? Are we gonna hear some rock later in the show? We're gonna hear lots of rock. Excellent. In fact, I might even play a little bit of Rainbow. Blimey. Just to, you know, rewind. We've got the darkness, but sure. I want to remind them where it all came from. Yeah. You've heard the Liz. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna hear the bow. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Um, no, just high five. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Carl. Yeah, keep it real. Here we are then. Oh, Back. incidentally, before we uh, Go carry on. on, I just thought, um, it's weird, I was reading some of the fan emails and stuff we got, and one of the things a lot of people like, it actually it divides the listeners, is your laugh. It's interesting. Some people love it, they find it infectious, they yeah. find it adorable. I mean, close up in a small space, like a kitchen Terrifying. or something, it's annoying. Like, Horrific. Carl was annoyed, because I squeaked in his ear earlier, didn't I? Sure. Why did I laugh? You were on the toilet? <laughs> I think I squeezed his head again, didn't I? And he said, no, it's not one o'clock He doesn't yet. like the closing. The closing head. But, yeah. Um, but it's the closing one. The funny thing is, right, we were out a few weeks ago with, with a mate of mine, mm. right, and uh, he went to sque squeeze me head, mm -hmm. right, give, give it a squeeze. Sure. And uh, I was like, don't do that, you know, you know I don't like it, right? And Ricky said to me, mate, yeah, he doesn't like having his head squeeze. As if it's like Marmite. As, <laughs> if, as if some people love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some people hate it. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, anyway, it, yeah. there's but there's a, there was a little taster of the laugh. That was more <laughs> the kind of deep throaty laugh, the belly yeah. laugh. But there's that kind of high peach squeak that you do. Well, I've got to get air out quickly because exactly. I'm going to burst. Sometimes I laugh so much that my liver and all they try and get out to it. So I have to get out really fast, like a like a siren. Right. Do you know what I mean? Is that <laughs> is that how you explain the fact that you're you're quite fat? Yeah, that's actually laugh. that's just laughing <laughs> waiting to come out. Every yeah. time you laugh, you, you become a svelte young thing <laughs> like Brett yeah. Anderson. Oh dear. Well, anyway. It reminded me of the, uh, the game that you, you and I used to play in our very early days of XFM when it was literally... Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Make Ricky Gervais laugh, which Love was a it. great game, I think. I remember the first one. It was that fella drinking a pint of beer. Yeah. I remember yeah. the very first time, it yeah. never, I tell you what, it's you not great. You know what, great. though? Ant and Deck do it now. They do. do they? they actually, it's very similar to Make Ricky Laugh. It's called Make Ant Laugh. <laughs> Interesting. So... So many of our great ideas have been, uh, have been stolen. Yeah. Or stoled. Stoled, yeah. And anyway, I just, I was looking through the paper in the week and there was Go a picture on. which, um... <laughs> Which I think might, it might be a Ricky Gervais, <laughs> make Ricky Gervais laugh, I don't know. And again, obviously it doesn't really work for the listeners at home, but I'll try yeah. and do my best to describe it. Can it's we stop saying my name, because it's like a Dave Gorman project? Can we just stop, let's, I, it's getting, it, you know, say a word often enough, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Let's stop saying Ricky Gervais. Well, what are we gonna refer to you as? <laughs> Alright, well, make Patty laugh <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is a new, a new game. I'm trying to get one of those squeaks of a laugh. I'm okay. concerned because well, I know. I, I, no, I'm not going to. I'm not a monkey. I'm not <laughs> sure, a performing, you're not a performing monkey. Well, no. Okay. I know that. Right. But anyway, let me um. just briefly summarise the story <laughs> okay. for those at home. Okay. The uh, the headline was Mum 48, <laughs> a mother of 48 seduced boy of 14. <laughs> well, that's not funny. Not her own boy, obviously, but uh, uh, no, a still... neighbourhood child. Um, I don't think it's a funny said, story so far. He said, Grand Lana Allen, 48, led him upstairs and undressed to her waist, then took his trousers off. <laughs> okay, bear that in mind. This, this is, is a is quote, this is a quote from him, right? right? Bear in mind, he's a 14 year old boy, he's quite excited about this. He yeah. says, then we had sex, it was every boy's fantasy. <laughs> Alright? You're gonna show me the picture of her now, aren't you? So it's a picture of her. Oh, this is not- Bear right. in mind- This is- Okay. In his own words, Rick. Right. In his own <laughs> words, this was every boy's <laughs> fantasy. Okay, okay. Here's the picture. It's a silent laugh. <laughs> He's collapsed I on the floor. I wasn't expecting that! <laughs> I wasn't expecting- I was thinking it looked like a fat man! I was not expecting that! Oh my god! Oh god! She looks like a drummer of Iron Maiden! That's <laughs> she looks a bit like Lemmy! <laughs> But I tell you, she looks like she <laughs> make, reminds me of most. Did you see I those? I got one with a fag on as well. <laughs> no, I know. It's just the, uh, the, that's all of them out of makeup, though. Carl, have you seen yeah. every boy's fantasy? You should see. You should see. <laughs> 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 oh oh God! Oh. Have a look, Carl. Oh. Oh God. How old is she? <laughs> Forty-eight. Oh. Oh God! Oh, forty-eight. <laughs> That's lovely. Nothing wrong. With, nothing wrong with that. I'd but... say if you don't know what, if you didn't see, we weren't lucky enough <sighs> to see the picture. She looks <sighs> just like 
the, um, oldest man in the world. His photo's on, uh, in newspapers and on the oh. web for a while. He was about 135 yes, or something. No, hang on, hang on a minute. Here Carl. Here As you know, Carl, but, Carl's got a theory that Chinese people don't age well. This man was a, he was a, uh, a giant man, <laughs> right? And he was 120 or something. Yeah. Mm. Did was, you see a picture of him? Yeah, he's he still was, alive. He was, no, he's not. No, he's, no, he's not. No, he's dead. Died, uh, died at 120, so. He said 120 or something, but makes you wonder. Go what on. makes you wonder? Well, because they don't age well. <laughs> I think he's using that. <laughs> what he's probably about, about so thirty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Honestly, we walk down the street, right, and we see a, 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 an elderly Chinese person, yeah, right, and um, it's kind of go. Oh, I'm just thinking he is. Yeah, like it, it's not. <laughs> I don't understand this this notion that Chinese people don't age yeah. well. I don't know what that... where this has come oh. about. No, I, I mean I'm not having a go. No, right, I, don't, I don't- I never want anyone to think I'm, I'm like, having a go at them. But no. they are really good looking and they're healthy and that. <laughs> till they're about- <laughs> I, I, I've never seen one, right? C can you- I'm can you- scared now. Can you tell me if you've seen a Chinese person no. who's about 30? Why? It's always- it's either 20 <laughs> or 50. There's no middle ground. <laughs> This is two hours of absolute drivel but from sorry, the brain of Carl Wilkinson. Let me just check something. So uh, the guy, the Chinese gentleman who died recently was 130. Mm, your well. theory is- <laughs> sure, <laughs> Your theory is that he's maybe in his late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. This is an elaborate conspiracy on his part because obviously whenever they talk about the oldest people in the world, it is always a Chinese person. Yeah. Invariably. They, they do, yeah. I mean, they mm. seem to win that Again. every year. Go on. So <laughs> your theory is that in those small backwater the villages in China- know. Ross McWhorter comes to a little yeah, village- Yeah, they go, the and they, he, go, on the he way. goes, ah, well, until recently, the oldest person in the world, uh, how old are you? And they're so embarrassed, because they think they look about under 20, they go, uh, under 120, they go, really? Go, yeah, can I have his birth certificate now? In fact, I think this Chinese bloke didn't, he, it wasn't verified with the conspiracy theorists because he didn't have his papers. Didn't have his papers, no. So. Is this the same one or a different fella? I think Try it might it be on. the same guy, I'm not sure. <laughs> Try it on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an in, there's a huge conspiracy amongst these Chinese villages that Look, every when time. When you get uh, to about 50, say you're 70. Because no one will believe us. Well, if you can confirm or deny that, then, uh, then please email in ricky.gervais at xfm.com. This is the racist show on XFM 104.9. Call in if you're anything less than a little mank. Outcast, hey ya, on XFM 104.9. With me, Ricky Gervais. You, Stephen Merchant, GQ presenters of the year. Radio personalities of the year. It's official. We're uh, the best radio personalities. Of the year. I've, I, um, we got that award sent to us, didn't we? And we yes. did a little thing. But it was only our two names on it. It so had your name, Rick, definitely. I remember that. It had my and name. And your name. Didn't see Carl Pilkington's name No. Anyway. And yet he's the one with the day off and the money and the, the, the con in the MD and making him cry at home. Let me just mate. remind- Go on. Can I just check that Go again? He, so he's made a fool out of the MD. He's made a fool out of the And all the MD, major- all Basically this, all the capital all this shit about, oh, I'm not sure if I'm coming back or not. I want a, okay, I want a day off then. Which is the same day off as his girlfriend gets off. So he's just like walking around, I don't know, Hyde Park. Yeah. Just feeding ducks when yeah. he should be working out what can he can do instead of rock busters, which is basically blockbusters <laughs> with a word changed. <laughs> Christ's sake! <laughs> right. Little if that's if that's annoyed you, I'll what? tell you what is really weighing me up. Go on. The last week or so, this postal strike. <laughs> I tell you, Rick, I, I have got no sympathy for him. I'd be a scab. I'd be walking through there. And I'd be, <laughs> no, and I'd be giving him the finger. I go, you can intimidate my family. I don't care. I don't care because the post has got to get through. Because yeah. I tell you what. Um, it's, it's, it's not the fact that, uh, you know, the unions, they could organise a strike, I'm behind that, fair enough, but not when it's mm. these wildcats. They're just out there, they're just taking days off willy-nilly, they're not, they're, wow. they're sealing out the post boxes, it's going crazy. Maybe Carl could deliver a few records but, Monday. Well, I know, so I know could... Carl must be livid, because he's probably his copies of the New Scientist <laughs> and the Literary Review <laughs> haven't turned up, so he's, he's in a terrible way. And, uh, I got important documents that are supposed to be coming to yeah. me, there's nothing, there's no, yeah. there's hiding the hair of it. And I was cooking last night, and I, it got me panicked, because I was thinking about, if this just is going to spread now amongst other organisations and other yeah. groups, and do you know what? <laughs> like a cancer. It was partly because I was cooking. Yeah. But do you know, I suddenly become terrified that they might go on strike. Go on. The guys in charge of the potatoes. 
Oh, Every, I, I mean, what, anyone involved with potatoes? I had so the, much the mash farmers? last night. I had so much sausage mash. Well, I, I, the second helpings that I had to sit on the edge of a seat so my stomach could hang down. It's I mean, love spuds, spuds and bread. I could not do without spuds I feel, and bread. I feel like maybe I could make my own bread. Spuds, I wouldn't know where to start with a spud. Yeah, and it's like you, they're amazing. You can boil them. You can broil them. Yeah, I don't know what broiling is, but I. I, it's I suspect it's tasty. I don't think it's as good as I mean. Obviously, the chipped potato is for is the working classes. Oh, chip. it was always on. The chip fat fire was always on in my household. The ceiling, the uh, you know, the, the death trap fire. Um, what's it? Polystyrene ceiling <laughs> <Yeah>. was yellow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come yeah. Wednesday in our house. Yeah. And, uh, it, we yeah, always had chips. Because I, all I remember hearing, if I think back to my childhood, all I remember was, um, got to stop and get some potatoes, or phone your dad, tell him to get some potatoes. Well, that was, that was your job, wasn't it? Carl? Yeah, the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's, like, I mean, it genuinely, it does concern me, because What did you have to do? Didn't you have to, what, did you have to fill a diary out for your well, teacher? Do you know when you're at school, I don't know if, if you do the same thing, but you, you get like a little red book, right? And every night, I think it was a way of the teachers sort of keeping an eye on you. So if you went out robbing, if you wrote it in your diary, they'd go, what you're playing at. Sure. Right? So you'd have to write down what you did every night. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't get up to that much at that point. Sure. I, I used to just go on my errands. Yeah. And it was my job to like- I haven't had errand for- since yeah, the 70s. Nice really. just just got just on, I went to Euphase. Right, the little local supermarket. Yeah. And I got, uh- What's it called? Euthan- Euthanasia? <laughs> what? I did- <laughs> Euphase. 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 Yeah. Like, H U G H U phase. Oh, Hugh oh phase it's his name. name. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I just had to get. Right, yeah. I just had to get like a bag of potatoes. Of course you did. Yeah. And a loaf. Staple. So yeah. uh, I used to put that in my diary every day, and it got to a point when like even the teachers were like, just just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, stop putting the same thing in. I sure, love start joyriding or something. Live. I'm, I remember wh uh, when James was little. She was at school. I think it was about ten or something. Like that do a project uh, over the week, and they were given a big list, of, like a, a list of a hundred animals mm. that they had to tick when they saw one that week. And the teacher knew she cheated because she ticked beaver. <laughs> so she was trying to win and get it as you knew, unless. It was Susie Dibblethwaite's beaver. <laughs> oh, I know the Dibblethwaite had one. Slut. I don't know, maybe. Uh, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, uh, uh, I'm just, I don't know, I just, it feels like, it feels like the potato people have got me over a barrel. You know, I mean, they could hike the prices up. I still have to buy the potatoes. I got nothing else. I got out of that. You know, you got your fancy pastas for the, uh, for the upper classes, but for the working classes, it's chips or, uh, or mash, isn't it, really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think people who do potatoes are going to go on strike. I don't think so. Because we just go and pick them ourselves, don't we? Or grow them ourselves. Sure. Sure. Is, is the, what would be the most pointless strike? What would be the strike that we went so? Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you, I'll tell you one strike that would we'd go so. Um, those guys who do sketches in Covent Garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, take your picture. Uh, or they, they, they do a caricature of you. The strike! Yeah. Imagine the strike! You go out and you go, well, I want one with a big nose and a big yeah. chin. I want an amusing caricature of me and my sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. But I need, I, can't, I need a sketch, I need a pencil drawing of Leonardo DiCaprio. Looking like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, how are we gonna get this? This is unbelievable. Yeah, I'll so tell uh, you, I'll tell you also, the strikes that have no effect. What? Those, um, people in, um, in nightclub toilets. Who just, you know, kind of there, they got the, uh, the Lynx deodorant oh, spray. Oh, they're quite controversial at the moment, with uh, the Tweedy case. <laughs> oh, the Cheryl Tweedy case. Do you know what I mean? Sure, I got so, some thoughts on that, actually. Like what? Well, or maybe we play a record, I'll share my thoughts on. Well, thought, um, um, coming up, um, some Steve Merchant thoughts on the Cheryl, uh, Tweedy case. <laughs> <laughs> That's a <laughs> thing, 104.9. Some REM, right? I've uh, What's yeah, the frequency, yeah, Kenneth? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, What's the frequency, Kenneth? I'm telling you, it's 104.9 XFM. I'm Richard oh. Mays with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl the user Pilkington. <laughs> Just takes, takes, takes. Takes, takes, takes. Destroyed a man. <laughs> <laughs> Go to you, Steve. <laughs> you should talk like that more. It's cool and sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I make it clear now, I do not condone in any way, shape, or form what Cheryl Tweedy did. But I have to say, they wind me up. By they, you mean... Toilet attendants. Yes, no. yes, 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 yes. Right, yeah. Not, not, um, uh, pop idol winners. That's what I thought you meant, yeah. Yeah. So, um, go on. But, because I'll tell you what it is, you go into a club <laughs> or, uh, pubs or big venue pubs, you go yeah. in there and there's the toilet attendant in there, he's got his little display of, um, you know, aftershaves, sprays, yeah. some sweets maybe, blue straws, whatever it might be. Yeah, maybe, blue, a blue straws, uh, maybe a lollipop. Maybe a lollipop. And, all right, I don't know if they're in, I assume they're not employed by the club. I'm assuming the club's got, they, they got, we've got the DJ, we've got the bar staff, wait a minute, we need a guy do to they, irritate do, the when, when the manager walks in, do they hide? Well, this is it, I don't know if it's a guy who's just like- <laughs> Is it like basking? Yeah, he snuck in. Like, yeah, okay. He came in when it was free during happy hour, <laughs> he's got a little bag, carrier bag, yeah. he snuck in the, in the toilet. But the uh, thing is, it's the fact that 
Uh, toilet attendants, fair enough. I mean, it, I'm happy if a toilet attendant sneaks in under cover of darkness, cleans it for me, and then shoots off. But it's when I have to see them there. I, I feel know. guilty because I'm like, I've got a, it's like I maybe wash my hands, I'll forget he's there. He'll hand me a paper towel, suddenly I've got to tip him, like but a quid or something. It annoys me because there, I wash my hands at all. I don't usually wash my hands. I, I, wash I, my I, hands. I, I sometimes don't even bother getting my knob out. Oh. I do it by stand and change my trousers <laughs> when I get home. <laughs> exactly. So it annoys me I have to do, go through this charade of getting it out, <laughs> slashing <laughs> out of it, shaking it dry, and then washing my hands. See, just if he did any of those elements, what, I'd take him a quid, yeah. Pop it out, pop it out. But yeah. not to hand me a paper towel and get it myself. And I I just, know. It's just guilt, and I, sometimes I'll hold it in, because I'm nervous I don't want to go back in what there. What annoys me is it, like, a posh award ceremony, it's a pound of piss. It is a pound of piss. Do you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I, Or in a like... top hotel or something. Yeah. It's absurd. And I, t I tell you what's worse than that, I know that he's doing it because he's got to feed his kids, but it's the fact that I've got to look him in the eye. You know, yeah. it's like he's humanized. You know, if he was only dehumanized, Rick. Yeah. If he was, if I could see him and I didn't think he was a human being, I wouldn't feel guilty. I if know. he could sort of hide under the, under the, the urinal, perhaps, yeah. or if and he just could hide underneath the sink, like thing from the Adam's. Like, just he just put, puts out. He you know, just pop a hand out. Doesn't say anything. With just hands through the paper. So you don't even see, like you know, hand over. And then I go, I put a pound in. I take the thing, put a pound in. Nick a lollipop and run away. <laughs> no aggro. Exactly. It's the fact I've got to see them and I feel guilty because, you know, I'm on the radio, I've got a cushy life. I know. Here's a guy who's just trying to make ends meet. It makes me feel bad, it ruins me evening. Yeah. I'm just pleading for them. Can they not do it anymore? Can they maybe get a can they get a job illegal mini cabin or something? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Born again. Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. We're back. It's the 1st of November. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's the same old email address if people want to get in touch. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've had a couple of emails, Rick. Someone, Go actually, on. Ian, he's emailed in. He said that because of the blinking post postman, yeah. it's his wife's birthday today. She's had no cards or oh. presents because, uh, presumably because she's got no friends, but also because of the the postal strike. But you won't be able to use that excuse for Suzanne's birthday again because she knows that the postal strike won't be on. Around that time. <laughs> Alright, Carl. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so would you just say happy birthday to Tracy? Have those condoms run out yet that you got for Christmas? I Carl. I've still got them. Have you? Hmm. Um. <laughs> just say happy birthday to Tracy. It'll make, happy birthday, it'll make Tracy. Happy. And hello to Aidan, who's uh, thrown in to let us know he's actually listening in Northern Ireland. Oh, God so bless we're, him. we're, we've gone international. Sure. Now there's uh, also a question here. A questionnaire has been sent in by, uh, Ruth Chamberlain. At Cord Wainers College. Cord Wainers College? Seems a weird. Cord Wainers? It used to, yeah. It's, it's either used to be a poly or a laundrette. <laughs> I, don't I think it's, yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's something that she's doing for, um, she's studying product design for the fashion industry. And anyway, she's got, um, some questionnaire. And we're obviously, we're too busy and important to fill out the questionnaire. But we thought maybe you could answer it, Carl. Look, about Carl, look, he's yawning, he's looking round. He's only got to do two hours and he gets a whole day off and he's getting paid for it. Do something, Carl. Be grateful. You've probably, you've probably ruined a man's career. He's been ridiculed now for doing this. That, that he's so weak where he should have slapped, squ squoze your head and kicked you out of the building. So, let's have a little bit of effort. You've only got an hour and a quarter to do, then you get two days off, alright? Alright. Right, Carl, it's a questionnaire about happiness. Oh yeah. There's one person- <laughs> <laughs> Well that should answer it right there. The uh, first question, Carl, on a happy scale of one to ten, where are you on the happy scale? Uh, Is it at this moment or in general? Well, I would say generally. Okay. Yeah, but you don't always have to like- oh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm happy in that, but I don't always show it. You never show it? No, but it doesn't mean I'm not- I'm not happy in that. Like, I, I'm alright at the moment. I'd say I'm probably on a- It's probably on a, about an eight. I was- a, I was probably on about a nine when I woke up, right? <laughs> and then, uh, sort of fell out with Suzanne over her haircut. Yeah. Right? She went for a haircut and came back with something that- I didn't like. What, sorry, what did you say? <laughs> you so so when your girlfriend walked to the door, she had her hair done. You said I don't like it. All right? Do you well, say you that? could tell by the look on my face. It, I, and but I the, said, but don't you say no? I'm I'm happy with it. I just just can't tell. I'm loving it because I'll, then she might have it done again. Oh, you Carl, can't I just cannot get over you. I really can't. I no, but cannot... you, you haven't seen it. All right? I'll st so so then I was fed up. But what, then I thought, sorry, what authority have you got? Up to talk about haircuts. Yeah, you had that. You had the uh, well, officially from a, a barber in Manchester above a railway station in a shack. It was two pounds a cut. Told you you have the hair of a Chinaman. Well, you <laughs> wish you had the hair of a Chinaman now. You got nowhere. <laughs> You're a little bald man with your mouth open. So don't. Is she listening to this, Suzanne? Sitting at home with a woolly hat on. <laughs> I don't know. But well, she knows now, doesn't she? What did you say? What, what did you do you about it? I though? just said you look like someone out of Slade. <laughs> 
interestingly, no. that's what I look for in a girlfriend. Oh, God. Which one oh. is Slade? That one with the not, funny, uh... Not Dave Hill. Yeah. The one with the crooked fringe and the goofy- she has her teeth done as well, did she? She had two <laughs> front teeth put in. Dump her. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> So, so prior to that you're on a nine, then you saw the haircut, you're on an eight. Yeah. Yeah. And now then, what you uh, on? I'm probably on about a six at the moment. Why? What's happened? Well, while Star Sailor was on, a bit more head squeezing going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, about a five or six. So generally speaking, <laughs> what would you say you are about on a four. You're on a four. <laughs> four, 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 four. <laughs> Um, uh, what would you give someone who uh, wasn't very happy? What would you give them? Uh, what are you thinking, Carl? Depends why they're not happy. They're not- they're low, okay, so what would you give them? I mean, if you- if, yeah, depends, innit? If it's someone who's just lost their arms and legs in an accident, you don't give them a lollipop. Sure, or some mittens. Yeah. <laughs> you give them a hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 dare I say it, a smile. <laughs> a skateboard! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't no, know. You gotta answer the question. Right, so hang on, let, let's assume that you've upset your girlfriend because you slagged off her haircut. What right? are you gonna do you now to go make her happy? How are you gonna cheer her up? Uh, and not buy her a baseball cap? <laughs> I don't know yet, I haven't thought about it because I've got this to sort out, haven't I? <laughs> so w w when I get home, get her some gel or something. <laughs> Christ. Okay, oh. and uh, oh. alright, just name something that always puts a smile on your face, Khan. It always cheers you up. If you're feeling a bit blue, it always cheers you up. A monkey, innit? Learning something. Right. <laughs> that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love the qualifier. <laughs> that's no, I a think bit it was weird. Too, I, do, I think it was two different seven sentences. <laughs> I think <laughs> it was learning something. That's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, learning something that's a bit weird. Okay, and finally, um, if you could have something to make you happy, what would it be? Little chimp, wouldn't it? Little chimp in a suit. Well, don't answer for him. Don't put words into me. Uh, you can have anything you want, it'll cheer you up and make you happy. What would it be? You can't say a, a skin of titanium. It's got to be something possible. Yeah. X-ray vision. No. What, what would you have? It can be, it can be conceptual. It could be world peace. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a new watch. Yeah, like someone else wish for that. Sure. It'd be a waste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, why should you do it? And then uh, someone else gets a nice new watch and this world piece. <laughs> exactly. You're walking round, it's nice and peaceful, you know what time it is. He's swanning round, he's got a lovely new watch and there's no threat of him being bombed. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm quite happy the way I am, really. I don't, I don't really want Are that you much. really? But you're on a four. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, on a happy yeah, scale yeah, of four. Yeah, you're on a four. Surely you want to get to ten. Surely the point of life is to be on ten. Yeah, but what's, what's a ten? Do you know what I mean? No. What's- what's a ten? Contentment. Absolute contentment. Bliss. Joy in your heart. Yeah. Inwardly and outwardly. Not walking round with a little round mank head with your mouth open going, what's the point of that? I've done it once. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you still got all the condoms? You go, I've done it once. <laughs> <laughs> what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get everything. Uh, some air gel. Come on! Ten! Just one thing that would make you happy. It would cheer you up if you were feeling low. Tuesday's off as well? <laughs> I'd have the MD just, uh, you know, resign straight away, shall I? I honestly don't know what would make me happy just like that. Cause I- cause I am happy. I know you- I know you say I'm fed up and that. Do you know what- do you know what- it's it, 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 it wouldn't want to be too rich. He said, cause if I was too rich, then Suzanne would say, let's go around the world. He said he wants to be rich enough, so they're happy in that and they got their bathroom and everything, but they can't- they still can't afford any more holidays a year. Mm. Think of that. Think of that wish. Think of that capping your wishes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Putting a ceiling yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on your ambition. I love it. <laughs> uh, it's genius. Look at his face. Play a record. You It's idiot. like if you'd won that ticket round Charlie's Chocolate Factory <laughs> <laughs> and he'd said, actually, Carl, I want you to take over the factory. It was a test. You'd have said, I just wanted to look around the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I'm and happy to go it, back it, and live. No, no, he'd have said, he said I'll, I'll work it, but I'm not working Mondays. <laughs> exactly. Play a record. <laughs> Imagine giving a Chocolate Factory to a kid. I know. Idiot. Give it to the fat one at least, he yeah. enjoyed it more. Beautiful. Billy Bragg from his, uh, essential Billy Bragg compilation. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, Billy Bragg, or oh, I can't be bothered, politics, and I have to say, buy this CD, skip past every song that is, for instance, um, <laughs> there is power in a union. <laughs> Don't be duped by fascism. Yeah, it's your, uh, it's your, uh, right 
and duty to vote. Yeah. Right wing, wrong wing. <laughs> exactly. Ignore yeah. all that. But just listen, love, just listen to the love, love songs. His love songs are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it, it's fan fantastic. New England. Tonight I celebrate my love for you with a pint of beer and a new tattoo. Uh, it's yeah, great. Brilliant. Yeah, look, lose the ones about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Stri striking. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because we know what we think of that. So, um, yeah, I heartily recommend that. Um, and, uh, what, Carl, what? we're on happiness, Carl. Yeah. I'll oh, try and explain Carl's to Carl happiness. that the aim to, you know, it's really to get on a ten. Yeah. For well, I like the he's fact that he four. started on a nine. But I love the fact he's happy with four. Yeah. Uh, I love that. No, but what, what I mean is, right, I'm not looking for, like, happiness. Right. I'm You're all right. You're not looking for happiness. What? <laughs> What's that for? What I mean is, right, I'm happy when I'm not fed up. So what I mean is, I'm happy. Is this the? Is this your, in your new book, <laughs> Psychology of the Mind? <laughs> what? What is that? I'm happy when I'm not fed up. <laughs> That's like an eight-year-old trying to try and explain happiness. Johnny, what is it when I'm happy when I'm not fed up, Miss? Well done, good boy. That's it. You're happy when you're not fed up. Talk like <laughs> an adult. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying to you, though. I don't. What? I, I'm happy most of the time. It's just that when things niggle me, I find that m I realise when I'm annoyed more than when I'm happy. But Carl, you, every time we talk to you, you are whinging about something. You've got yeah. something that annoys you. But he's you. one of those people that if he whinges loud enough, he gets away with it. Like he's in here, I think he goes, oh, I'm really busy. I, went, I come in and he's doing nothing. He's chatting because yeah. he's having big long chats with everyone about how someone's wound him up. Yeah. And they all come in and they go, oh, Carl's fed up. Because he's got this show. You know what I mean? He's wormed his no, way. Well, hang on a minute. Go you on. came in. You came in moaning about the post and that today. Yeah. Well, everyone's annoyed and frustrated by that. There's small businesses going out I'm of not, business. I'm not. You haven't heard me. No, you're about not because that. who's sending you letters? No one. Mm. You've got no friends. No. You've said that yourself. Yeah. You've openly declared you don't want friends. They're too much hassle. Yeah. 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 For, uh, that, so. yeah. That is that is my jo friends is the, it, that is the point of life to me. It's I can't wait to see them. I squeeze their head. I welcome them in. Oh, they annoy me. <laughs> they <laughs> they annoy me. I love it. Friends are annoying. He's even scared of like uh, doing some uh, uh, with a friend or you know, uh, getting a gift because he goes after buying one back now. Yeah, it's sort of like life's a bit of a chore for Carl, isn't it? Well, anyway, all right. Let's leave that aside. Obviously, you're never going to be entirely happy. Although apparently you are already on the brink of happiness. All you no, have to I'm say is your hair look nice. That's all you have to say. Yeah, it looks good, yeah. And that's it. End of story. What's the point in that? What is the point in that? Because she doesn't re- she doesn't really care what you think, but she doesn't want to hear that she looks like Dave Hill from Slade. She's not having her hair cut just to please you, Carl. Despite what you might think. <laughs> yeah. He's taken aback by that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, happiness then, yeah. All right, so, the thing is, I, I was happy the other week, right, when I was going up to Manchester on the train, mm. nice quiet carriage, I'm sat there reading about sharks and that, right? <laughs> nice, yeah. nice and quiet. And I got annoyed, I texted you, didn't I? Yeah. When, uh, two fellas got on. Um, can we talk about it? Well, yeah, you, you, I mean, you've, you've started it. Two gay men got on. Go on. Two gay fellas got on. Yeah. And it wasn't the fact they were gay that bothered me. It no. was like, you know, each to their own. Let sure. them get, you know what I mean? Let yeah. them do what they do. Yeah. And, um, Behind closed doors. But they started talking really loud. Huh? Right? And they were going on about, uh... That's annoying up. anyway. That's annoying whether you're straight or gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. talking too loud. But do you know what theory I have about <laughs> they go out late? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gay people always go out late. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When we're, yeah, I mean, what, what, what time do you go out in the evening? Uh, 7.30. If you go out about 7.30, yeah. if you, yeah. you know, if I'm out of work, I might, I might go out about 8 o'clock or something. Yeah. Mm. I guarantee I'll sort of be in bed by about half 12. Sure. At that time, they're still sort of ironing the jeans. <laughs> right? And, and the funny thing was, <laughs> I, I've, I've, in their jeans. I've always said this, right? <laughs> and, and you, so, you sort of said that's rubbish. I'm sat on the train reading about sharks. These two are talking and they're going, oh, we can't wait to get there. And his phone goes and he goes, uh, hello? And, uh, on the end, he goes, anyway, I'll, I'll see you at one then. Right? Right. So I thought, well, maybe that's tomorrow. Yeah. Could be one in the afternoon. That's when most people would meet. Yeah. And then he carried that's on talking. most people would meet! Carried on talking, and he goes, yeah, so anyway, like I say, see you tonight. One o'clock is meeting someone. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't know you why he's out that late. Do you remember when his favourite record of all time is The Killing of Georgie? Sure. He said, would he have been killed if he'd have been <laughs> back at a decent time? <laughs> yes. Uh, there's no mention point. of the time sure. in this song. And then the funny- the funny bit was actually that did make me laugh, right? Uh, when he'd finished talking on the phone, he said to his partner, right, uh, oh, there you go, let's have a little chat, and the fella said, who was that? And he said, oh, it's- it's Dave. He said, which one's Dave? He said, you know, the one with the shaved head. 
I thought, in the gay community, yeah, that isn't a good description. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So uh, yeah, well, I've got little shaved heads. Before we move on, was the shark's article interesting? Did you learn anything? It was pretty good. Was it? Go yeah, on, I'll teach it? you something about that later. Oh, okay. Uh, is, this, is this educating Ricky? Uh, it wasn't, but I can, I can t teach you a bit. Yeah? Alright. That's good. Play some ads on that. Play some ads on the tune, and then have we got maybe a competition? Yeah. All what right. have we got? We're all looking forward to that. All right. Fortune faded. Red hot chilli peppers and XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Back for two hours a day, then a Monday off. Carning the management, baby, and sending this station spiralling down <laughs> into the depths for his greed <laughs> and selfishness. Yes. Okay. Uh, we were talking earlier about things that have happened when we were away. Um, quite a lot. Quite a lot, but there's one thing I heard. It might be a rumour. I hope it's a rumour. I kept it from you, Steve, because I, I didn't- I want you to sort of have spirits out, because we've been at it in the office and we've got to be- Okay. Um, okay, I'm just gonna say it. Um, I think Shed Seven have split up. Sorry, I didn't- Shed Seven have split up. Uh, <coughs> I, sorry, I think I got something in my <laughs> eye. Uh, it's just a bit dusty, though, I think. So, okay, if it's true, it's true. If not, we got their- at least we got their music. Their music didn't- <laughs> the music- the music lives on. So we're gonna dedicate this show to Shed Seven and all the bands they- Influence. Influence. So we're just gonna play- just every- every- every artist that- that formed a band after they'd heard Shed 7. Just play them from now on and obviously the hits, all the hits, oh, the I, Shed 7 hits. When I saw this, I saw it on a website, it said about, is it true, Shed 7 has split up? And the next, you know, one of those dorky message boards, someone came out and said, you are joking! <laughs> 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 oh. Oh dear, what else is that? I just way? pray that, uh, uh, it's just a rumour. It is just a rumour, yeah. Then uh, get in touch. Just, just, just call in if it's true. Um, maybe Well, no, call in, call in yourself. It, well, Monday. Shed, if Shed's listening, yeah. and he's, <laughs> he's not busy, he's got Mondays off now, uh, uh call in and say, what, what was the split all about? <laughs> Tell you what I, uh, read about. Sharks, away. monkeys, or jellyfish? Uh, it's, it's ten past, isn't it? We haven't, uh, we haven't done a, a little bit of knob news. <laughs> no, right. we haven't done knob news, no. But, um, it's been three months. It's been, it's been three months coming. There's this- there's this thing, uh, I don't know the full story, I don't know how it happened, right, but little- little Russian, uh, little Russian fella. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, sort of having a, uh, sort of emptying his bladder, right, and yeah. somehow electrocuted himself. Right. right. And, uh, sort of did a bit of damage. How did he- oh, is he- I, I don't know, some I don't live know. Wires or something. something like that. So did anyway- Did damage to himself or to an electric fire or something? No, to himself. To himself. Yeah. And, um, so the doctor- Didn't, didn't slip and t t curling tongs went up his ass when he was pissed because <laughs> that's- that's happened a lot in yeah, we've hospitals. All been there. We've all- we've all- we've all- we've all shoved the old curling tongs up the arse <laughs> when yeah. having a piss. Right. So, um, <laughs> I can't even be bothered. No, come on, we're interested, we're interested! Come on, Doc, come on, we're interested, don't you? You can't man. be bothered, you get Mondays off, do some work. Right, so anyway, so the doctor says, oh, it's not looking good, we'll have to take that off. Mm. What? He's like, the, oh. uh, uh, novectomy? Yeah. <laughs> really? But the funny thing is, right? Nothing funny about that. They've done, uh... You're doing me heading. You're doing <laughs> Just me tell heading the today. story! Just doing me heading. Well, oh, you can chill out I've on Monday. Got, I've only got 15 minutes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you every Saturday. I'm gonna get the money's worth out of this, cos you get Mondays off. And I can't- uh, I can't bear the fact that someone's getting away with something like that, cos it's terrible. So you're gonna stick this out, or you're gonna have to work Mondays. So take it on the chin, mm. right? Okay. Just finish the story. Yes. I command you. Just do it. Anyway, so they've- they said- he said, you know, you, will you be able to sort me a uh, little knob out? A prosthetic right? knob, yeah. yeah. But, they put him out yeah. for the operation. Yeah. He woke up. Yeah. Right, and he's thinking, oh, thank God that's over and done with. Yeah. <laughs> They've only grown it on his arm. What are you talking about? <laughs> You twat. Shut the f- d d d d you're an idiot. What do you mean they've grown it on his arm? Apparently, like, that's- that's the way they do it. Oh, yeah, but to, to then put it on- th that- that wasn't a mistake. It wasn't Dr. Graham. Does it go there? <laughs> Some bloke didn't- I didn't do a degree. Are you a real doctor? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but why- why put it there? Cos it's got a graph- cos it's got a grow. It's got a graph there. It's where they can control it. To skin- the to skin tissue. But on your arm. Well- but they're gonna remove it from the arm itself. What do you mean on the back? On your back? Somewhere- well, we can't wear a t-shirt. Yeah, but you could- you could He's in hospital! He, he, th this way he can still have a little tug, no, can't no, he? But they'll leave it there for quite a bit. It's not- Do you know what I mean? It's not gonna be like, oh, it's just there for a few days. Yeah. It's there for a bit. 
That's not good, is it? So he's got a cock on his arm? Yeah, what's up with that? What do you mean, what's up with that? Well, I mean, it, it, we could say it's a, it's a, it's a thumb or something, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they, they remove be, it. Be good for hitching. It down it, below if, later. if you had, if you had a knob instead of a thumb and you went hitchhiking, just tickle it. They can see it like a mile down the road, couldn't they? <laughs> Boasting. <laughs> Yeah. If I'd lost my knob, I'd go, oh, I'm not gonna have all that stuff. Just, just whack a pair of tits on me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd think, oh, I'll have a- just forget it. But, but why not just put it where it should be straight away instead of messing about? Where should it be straight away? <laughs> you know. On the forehead. Oh. <laughs> uh, listen, let's- are we doing a competition? Let's play a tune. Let's, let's, let's come just- Come on, let's Carl, just... you can't be bothered. Right, right okay, we're rainbow, gonna scrap rainbow, this yeah? and you're gonna work Mondays again. <laughs> Since you've been gone. By Rainbow on XFM 104.9. Well, it's what uh, the, uh, Londoners have been waiting for. It's Rockbusters, isn't it, Carl? Well, <sighs> it's, it's not- it's not Rockbusters, it's- it's something we've done. It's a bit like Rockbusters, but it's been tweaked. <laughs> Brilliant. Right? So remember that? It's done with sound effects and that. Oh, oh God. God. Really? What do you mean? Alright, come on. Right, remember this one. We- we tried it before. Oh, no, wait a minute. We've headphones on, right? Oh, wait a minute. Wait and this is one you've done in the past. This is not, not the competition. This is not the competition, but I said, like, what- what song is this? Yeah. <laughs> Smack my bitch up, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Smack my bitch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so it's kind of that, but- but rather than just doing songs, it's that film or song sounds good. You know when you do these things, you can't do them in the week, you've got to do them either Saturdays or Mondays. Yeah, I do, yeah. So, well, I'm going to check well, on that because well, it that really annoys do it, me. Does it? Because it's, it's been done, so it doesn't really. You don't have to worry about it when it's no, when it gets done, that, do you? Because it's done. So. Well, yeah, but I don't. You're taking time out of things you should do. Be doing at work. You're yeah, already yeah. weaseling well. XFM's going down the tube, mm. and you're taking the piss left, right, and centre. Mm. Right. So, so is is this week's little grab that film or song sounds good? So, what is it? Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Right? What it's a that? film or a song title, is it? No, it's it's a film or a song. What do Forget you mean? that. It's a film. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> that must have taken you three minutes. I hope you didn't do it on a Tuesday though, because that's cut into precious time. <laughs> right, have you sorry. seen how long a trial takes him? About thirty minutes. And he's sorry, do one a week. Just, let's just concentrate for a second. Okay. Right, this is a film, This is, is a film title. The title of a film. Yeah. Play it again. Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <clears throat> right? I, oh, dearie me. Dearie me. Three, Three months they've waited for that. Three months for that. <laughs> Shite. Do you want to say what the prices are? Oh, I can do. I'd say there's good news and there's bad. I don't know, it, I think maybe this is what people think of Carl's quizzes. This is the respect they show us. Because you know that, um, the various companies, they'll send you product which you can include in competitions, it's a yeah. promotional tool. Yeah. They've sent us, um, I'm Alan Partridge, Series 2, yeah. and Faulty Towers, the complete series, brilliant, on VHS. <sighs> I mean, who's got a video player anymore, Carl? It's for losers and the working classes. Yeah, for up north. I still sell them up north, I think. Thankfully. In, mar in market stores. <laughs> it's been redeemed. It's, I mean, I, I wonder how, old, how we got hold of that. Yeah. Yeah, the Office series two on DVD, that was, that was a nightmare, getting hold of that one. The best, um, album in the world ever, it's got stuff on there, Super Furry Animals is on there, Supergrass, Gold Frap. And, uh, also the best of the Boomtown Rats, which is not bad, and, um, a couple of Teachers DVDs. So, some good stuff there amongst the, uh, the VHSs. And you can win all of those treats by identifying this film. Oh, God. Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <clears throat> <laughs> Email only, we don't want to actually speak to you. <sighs> Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm sorry if that's brought you down, it's made um, us feel Can though. I just say something? What's the phone number, Carl? Uh, 0870 800 0870- 800. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Three. Call up for no reason because I want Carl to answer the phone. He hates doing it. So call up and talk to Carl. Ask him anything you want. Just talk to him. Okay? Right, answer the phone. They're going mad. Drills. <laughs> Big Sir on XFM 104.9. He's so annoyed that you have to answer all those calls. <laughs> Why did you like it? I just. 
We're wasting time, aren't we? <laughs> that's your listenership! No, no, no. They no, want to speak to you. No, that's nice and everything, that people call up. Yeah. But we should be concentrating on what we're doing. Yeah, well, I'm do, but I do this show to annoy you. I don't do it for the money, or the kudos, or the awards. <laughs> So I mean, I do it so you have to be here and do what I say for two hours because you're getting away with murder here in the week. I don't like seeing that. I don't like injustice in the world. I try and fight it wherever I can. <laughs> so I do it to annoy. It's good of you, Rick. Thanks yeah. for doing that, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's interesting I mean, though that you you it's pa you're passionate about fighting injustice, but you focus <laughs> specifically on Carl at XFM, one yeah. of the world's lesser crimes. <laughs> yeah, being a little yeah. bald mank twat. Exactly. I know. Yeah, but nonetheless, it is a crime. Look at him, look, he's got his head down like one of those, you know one of those chimps that have like lost their mate in London Zoo? <laughs> he just sits there like, you know, a, a broken animal. Carl, what are you thinking? Where are you on the happiness scale now of one to ten? Carl? On about a three. <laughs> Go on, Steve, what are you gonna do? <laughs> well, we were talking earlier about stuff that happened happened? while we've been away. Um, we, we, um, shed, shed, we don't talk about I haven't <laughs> been this upset <laughs> since, uh, yeah. Skunk and Hansi broke um, up. Yeah, I know. Cheryl Tweedy. Um, we've done that, we've done the Tweedster. Uh, Tweedster. Um, well, of course, the war. Is that all uh, done and dusted now? I think now? it's pretty much over. I think we've, um, we've sorted that out. Okay, good. What annoys me is we were going out, have a, going at Tony Blair and Bush right for like bomb, you know, bombing stuff and all that. But my point is this, right? Those bombs have all been bought and paid for. Yeah. You, the taxpayer, if they're, uh, yeah, yours. They're and I'm, I'm not for. a scientist, but I think bombs go off. <laughs> I think so. And if you don't use them, you lose them. <laughs> so let's use them. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, like it's, tinned food. It lasts like, for like, a yeah, while, but eventually yeah. it's going let's go, It's like anything. Oh, we better eat that. We're, 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 no, don't do it with the fresh stuff. Don't build the fresh ones. Let's use the old ones. Exactly. So, Because they're know, just stockpiling there and they cost we, us millions. I know. We want to see if they work as well. What? Oh, do you know, we, we never tried that one. Use them. <laughs> use them on just, you know. Oh, exactly. Carl, who would you bomb if you could? Uh, I wouldn't. Matt? What do you mean? Well, what, imagine you could bomb a country. You, you're not actually <laughs> going to bomb them, but you're just going to frighten them. Just going to put the frighteners on frighten them. Frighten them, yeah. You're just going to go, I'm going to bomb you, and then obviously. And they'll they're... go running uh, yeah. behind and under tin shouters and that. Yeah. Rick, Ricky's house? No, no come on. What country? No, what country? I, I wouldn't. I'd, honestly, no one sort of makes me fed up or anything. No yeah. one makes you fed up. Not not enough that I want to bomb a place. Well, you're not actually going to bomb. You're I just wouldn't get involved. The I'd just say let someone else do it. Just a good edit. What about you, Rick? <laughs> oh, I got a list here. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know who I'd uh, who I'd threaten? Go on. The Swiss. Oh, they've had it easy. They've always they? had it easy. They've always they've, chicken they've, it. It's that equivalent of having Mondays off. Exactly. It's like, oh, we don't want to fight. Exactly. You, can, you can both walk through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're a carpet. Exactly. Well, yeah. we're busy sorting out fascism. Yeah. You know, or Osama bin Laden. They're, they're just in, chilling out. They're old in ours and Hitler's coat. <laughs> exactly. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Little weed. We yeah. Have both turned on them. Yeah. And I'll tell you what else. This will just frighten them up. Just what? shake off a bit. Um, Iceland. They have had it easy. Because they have stayed out of everything. They have not been involved in anything, as far as I can tell. But you don't have to bomb them, do Eskimos, you? Eskimos, they've never been involved in anything. I know, but don't bomb them, just pour hot water on their <laughs> Exactly. Just send a plane over with warm <laughs> <Yeah>. water. Yeah. <laughs> with a big <laughs> flask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, just to shake things up a bit, just to keep oh, no, them on yeah. their toes, that's all it is. Why would you live there? If you could choose, I'd If you're an idea. Eskimo and you're born, and, well, little baby, you grow up and you go, what? I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm eating ice and fish for yeah. the rest of my life. Well, fair you're enough. You're having a laugh. Fair enough, like years and years ago, but now, presumably, they, they're, off, they're aware of the proper house and the, the fact you can live in, say, Somerset or the south of France. I know, but it's like, haven't they learned? It's sort of like, well, that they haven't even got, they're not even on as good a thing as the North American Indians. Now they're sort of pissed up. They got smoking fags. They live in lovely little cages. They, they're all brought to their little village. They're having a whale of the crazy. time. They don't have to go hunting anymore and yeah. that, killing buffalo. And exactly. the same with the es Eskimos. Let's get them some beer and fags down there. Knock the igloos down. Build them some lovely little or, semis or like. Or um, just a little kind of trailer or a caravanette or something like that. It's got to be better. It's got to be preferable. <laughs> I know. Some of them have got TV. He's built in, Rick. I know. What what showers. Want? Yeah, they've got cable and stuff, have they? Yeah. Or was there one sort of Icelandic well, channel? Get satellite or whatever, wouldn't Magnus you? Magnus Magnuson. Yeah, exactly. Probably doing. There's loads of mastermind reruns. Yeah. <laughs> and Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> Just on a loop. Yeah. That's porn over there. Yeah, though. exactly. Oh, brilliant. No, well, that's, oh. Like, that's like a hardcore documentary. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, this is uh, Racist FM 104.9. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who would you like to see bombed or not bombed? <laughs> Not bombed, but just put the frighteners on <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, it would Email Ricky Dr. Vase, XFL, anyone, go, yeah. any nation or anything. Carl, thoughts? Play a song? You're, you're not working for your money. You're not having Monday off. 
we've got to do something at Monday. Let's plan something at Monday. Just to get him in here. You've got to- two hours for eight hours off. You don't do an eight hour day anyway. Rick, how but much is he getting paid? He's, get, uh, he's getting money for this. It's, it's, I think his wages went up last time. So he's getting paid to be here, extracurricular, extra work, right? So it's moonlighting, and they're giving him a day off. Yeah. And he's contributing mm, nothing. Nothing. So. Huh? What, Carl? You say something, mate? Huh? What's going on? What? Going on with yourself. Well, say something back and earn your money. Well, let's, let's play a song. We've done a bit, done a bit of stuff there. You idiot. Don't say we, mate. I've not heard anything from you. We've heard your contribution. BAMP, 50 Cent on XFM 104.9, Mimi Gervais, uh, you, Stephen Merchant, and you, Carl Pilkington, all right? What are we doing then? How are we going? Carl, how are you feeling? Uh, what, uh, are you on a scale of ten now, happiness scale? About, uh, just building back up again a bit. Yeah? Why? Probably what? on about a five. Oh, that's not well, bad. What, what changed it? What changed it? Just calm down a bit. Sure. Yeah. So. The chill out vibes of PIMP probably helped you. Yeah. I think we should just say, um, give massive props to, uh, Adam and Joe, who stood in for oh, us. Oh yeah, stood in for us. Uh, Did great uh, job. Yeah, great, really good. In fact, fact interesting, are, are they, they, they going to get their own show here? I think they should. Yeah, they'll probably get something. Well, there you go. Well, um, yeah. it's interesting, because I was listening to them, and they, they had quite a nice selection of features, they had a couple of good competitions and things. Now, I don't know if, um, having done them for XFM, is it somehow, they may be kind of under some kind of XFM copyright? Which would mean, as we've got no ideas, maybe we could just hijack just some, of some of theirs. Maybe you could look Are into gonna, that. Obviously uh, not Monday, you're not here, but... I was with Joe Cornish last night, went to oh, a little, yeah. um, do, uh, uh, um, Jonathan's house, and Joe was there. And he walked in, and I was taken aback by how tall he is. Sure. Cos I for, I, I'd forgotten, and he's about 6'4", but he's an unlikely to, do you know what I mean by mm. that? It's sort yeah. of like some people surprise you. And, um, he was going, yeah, well, it's, it's, I don't consider, um, 6'4". Uh, big. I said, well, it's pretty big. I said, but I know what you mean. I walk around with Steve Merchant. Yeah. And, uh, he went, how tall Steve? And I said, six, six, six foot seven. Yep. And Joe went, oh, that's, that's, a, that's nearly a disability, isn't it? Do you know, he's absolutely right as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. do you know, I genuinely, since school, I <laughs> used to go to school with a little disabled fella. <laughs> lovely guy. No, I swear to God, lovely guy. And, do you know, I remember he came in when we got in the sixth form and he, he basically got, I don't know what the ins and outs of it were, but as far as I could tell, he'd got a car for free. A specially converted it, car, yeah. you know, because he was disabled, and yeah. uh, he was driving Same as Carl, around. same as Carl, me, 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 I need this, I need that. But it seemed to me that I was thinking, well, why can I not get something similar? Because there are some cars I can't fit in, because I'm too tall. I genuinely cannot drive the smaller cars, the cheaper cars. I've got, I'm obliged to buy a more expensive, larger car, because I can't fit in the time. Yeah, that's like saying you've got to pay more for your shoes, because there's more leather, which is true. Which is absolutely true. No, it's a nightmare yet, getting shoes. But fat people have to pay Do more you know for you know It's a nightmare getting chairs, comfy chairs that I can sit in in the home. I sit in a chair for very long and my back's killing me. Now, how is that not a disability? But no, I don't see, I don't, you don't see people like me whinging. But I think tall people, uh, I've read an article that taller people on average, uh, get, uh, higher wages through something, through, you know, an advantage, or just because they're taken more seriously than little dumpy fellas. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think so there are, are I, I genuinely belts. don't think there are many benefits of being really tall. People seem to assume there are, but beyond the fact that I can reach things down from a high shelf. I know. I don't think there's any real perks. I've seen you hit your head a few times. That's I, a disability. I know, I have seen you hit your head a few times, and I think, oh God. That must have hurt. Obviously, I'll make sure, okay, and then laugh. Of course. But I know it must be annoying. No, but I mean, there, there are, uh, there, there's a pub, there's one pub in Soho that he has to go down backwards. Yeah. <laughs> he has to lean that. It looks like a limbo dancer. Yeah, I've, they've <laughs> almost got a lower <laughs> meal on roots. I always find it amusing. But, oh, it's, but like, for instance, on a plane, on an aeroplane, I can't get... Some of the seats, I can't fit in some of the seats. Not yeah, in any but way, that's not, not the way that I could... Well, you're people, talking, how is that not a disability? There's some seats that people can't afford because they're poor. It's not that, a disability. Well, that's irrelevant. Don't go on a plane then, because you're poor. But if you can't afford to go on a plane, you can't afford to go on a plane. You should have studied hard at school. But what annoys, yeah, but I mean, what annoys me about that is, yeah, there's, there's, this a, there's is a physical disability yeah, I was I've born with. There's a, there's a weight allowance, so I might not be allowed loads of bags on, but there might be a big fat pig in the queue who's allowed the same chocolate but allowance as me. That's because they've been eating like a bloater. I couldn't stop myself from growing this tall. It wasn't a conscious decision. I didn't think. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I won't. I won't smoke when I'm a teenager. Maybe I'll screw up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat healthy, I'll probably add an extra two feet. Uh, it just you, kept going. You do eat too healthy, you eat too, way too many greens. But that's not why I grew to this height, it's I a know, genetic well, thing, isn't it? it? Yeah, but if you live near, a, you know, a, some sort of pylon or something and just, as, as I say, smoked from an early age, you wouldn't have been that don't, tall. Don't think when I was a gangly teenager having the piss taken out of me, I wasn't thinking <laughs> I wish I'd been born near a pylon. <laughs> could you? You know, or Chernobyl. Could your mum or dad, like, could have 
could they have Found did you? Like they did with little, uh, didn't they do that with someone's feet? Well, yeah, concubines. Yeah, I didn't they, come they out this with... tall, did I? No, but no. I like shot the How they banded him? They'd have to bandage him round the feet and round the top of the head. Yeah, I'd be walking around <laughs> like a mummy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or a bonsai boy. But I, people didn't really realise I was going to be this tall until I was 14 or 15. Mm. You know, you don't realise when you're an eight year old. How tall, tall, how tall were you when you were about like a gangly? Okay, so a typical gangly teenager, fifteen. How tall were you at fifteen? I don't know, six foot five maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you were like a beanpole, weren't you? Well, of course. Yeah. And what sort of glasses did you have? Cool. And now what did you have? I don't know, a monocle. <laughs> no, I can't remember. <laughs> did you wear a bow tie once? Did when I you... wore a bow tie? I thought. I thought. I was trying to preempt <laughs> the styles that might be coming round. I mean, I think I've been watching a lot of George Formby films. <laughs> And I thought it can only be a lot. It can only be a matter of time before the bow tie comes in. I thought it might be quite kind of urbane and debonair. Yeah. So what was that? Was for Robin one? Day at the height of his fame <laughs> I think might around this time? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go for that dandy look. I thought that's <laughs> what the girls are going for. I know, yeah. The dandy. Oh dear. So I, I still want to see my... you with a pipe and trilby. Yeah. I just think you'd look great I walking like on the street. Boater. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I dear. genuinely, I, I really, it does frustrate me that I don't get any allowance it for being count tall. as a disability. Well, it does count. No, it doesn't. It's not a disability being six foot seven. But there how is. can you explain, for instance, uh, you know, travelling on a bus or a coach? There's some the seats I can't see. The advantage is, uh, um, people look at, I've, I've seen people stare at you, um, but they stare at me because I've been on the telly. Was that a disability? Are that people being recognised? Yes, but you could avoid that by not being on the telly. It's your choice. This yeah. is my point. It's your choice. Yeah, it's the same okay. as the big fat people. And it's their yeah. choice. It's a different sort of stare, isn't it? I've been there. Yeah. When, you know, the sort of stare that you get and the sort of stare, sort of stare Well, Steve obviously gets. I'm gonna, sorry Steve, but I'm gonna, you know, Follow up this inquiry. What do you mean, Carl? No, so I'm just saying it's more of a stare of, of fear than <laughs> like with you. They go, oh, it's him. Yeah, go on. Whereas with you, it's more like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what frustrates me? <laughs> I I thought he did deserve having a Monday off. I've changed yeah. my tune. Yeah, yeah. I was try sometimes I'm in. You don't realise this, listeners, but sometimes I'm an intermediary. I do step in when he's winding him up because yeah. Carl gets to the point where he's going to explode. Yeah, and it's crazy. Is okay, Jeff. But leave and him I for step in, while. and this yeah. is the kind of response I get from Carl. This is the kind of back chat I get. Well, I tell you, he's a little user. Because I'll tell you what, because he's too scared of winding you up because he knows that you'll just walk out of here and he won't get his Monday off. Absolutely, play a record, you little oik. Weasel, Jeez. you're a weasel. <laughs> Joe Jackson, different for girls on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilberton, he's annoying me now. Cause he's, he's, he's got a day off and he's got two hours and he's miserable. He's not even doing anything for the show. It really annoys me. Well, hang on, wait a minute. What? You, you've forgotten his brilliant film quiz. Yeah. He's contributed that. That he probably did during the week. Well, Do you know uh, what I mean? What are you, gonna, are you gonna change your attitude, Carl, or what? Or should we just like not bother with this show? Told you. What? Don't, don't annoy me and you'll get the best out of me. Yeah? I, I told you, I, I told you, this show is to annoy you. You knew that. But this is what you're gonna get. Do you know what I mean? But no, you've got, you've got to be good and get the day off or there's no point for uh, uh, any of us. Right, if you were having an operation, would you annoy the doctor? <laughs> what? You the... can't concentrate, can he? <laughs> Don't mind him up. that he's a doctor. <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got to press a button and find out what a monkey did in <laughs> 1932. <laughs> and it's, oh. Where's the monkey news? It's, it's been a bit quiet, hasn't it? I've been What, in the last three out. months? Okay, uh, there was something that I found last week about, uh, one that was in an old people's home. Um, <laughs> it, it escaped from some zoo, it was wandering about, it was enjoying itself, <laughs> and then when it got to the night time, it was like, oh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and the first place it came across was like this old people's home. Yeah. Went in there, I think it was there for about a week and a half, <laughs> without anyone realising. No. No, no, no. No, no, it did. No, what, what, so, so the, the helpers and the nurses and the, the social workers and the, the matrons and all that, they thought, well, uh, Mr. Sanders looks a bit hairy. <laughs> but I mean, that happens, you, you know, it comes out of your ear and your nose when you get to about 70. <laughs> and he stooped over, yeah, of course he has, he's got bow legs, yeah. And he eats more fruit, of course he does. Well, that, that's when they, that's when they realised. Why? Because the, someone in the kitchen said, hang on a minute, getting through more bananas than we know. <laughs> Uh, well, sure. do the competition. Do the one thing you've done this week. Probably in their time again. You're getting paid for it. You're having Mondays right, so off. Yeah, and you're not that, into it. So that, that waste film, of time. That film sounds good. It yeah. Like this. Yeah. Come here. Come here. <laughs> 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 well, happy now I've had that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> right. yeah. So that's a bit of a cryptic clue. Yeah. 
uh, someone eating this woman. Yeah. And he's happy that yeah. he had that. Yeah, go on, yeah. That was Gladiator. Yeah. So, who, who wins a this one? A couple of people sent I, in, I, I sent in Hannibal, which would still work. Yeah. And, um, someone else sent in Man Eater, which I suppose works as well. Although he did put the thing in about, I'm well happy. Mm. Glad. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know, it's not, so. it's, it's not worth the, I, I don't know, under pretty gets with this in a day off, no. Well, right, Eva, who got the answer right, Eva, who got the answer right, well done to her, I'm gonna give her the prizes, she said that she'd heard this before on Christine O'Connell's show. Ah, oh, this is really annoying. Right, that's it. You're gonna do summer or we're gonna stop this and you have to work Mondays again, cause you are taking the piss out of me, you're taking the piss out of Graham, and you're taking the piss out of London. I'll see you next week and you can change your attitude. Biscuit. We may be back next week, it depends how Carl uh, gets on, maybe right. bucks up his attitude. Thanks for listening. Yeah, 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 darkness. I believe in a thing called love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Steve, Steve Merchant, Merchant. you sure? That's little Carl Pilkington Carl over there. Where is he? There yeah, he is. There he is, yeah. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Um, back then, back together again. The old gang. Yeah, it started last week. Yeah, I think. Triumphant return. I think it went well last week, didn't it, Carl? Good show, wasn't it? You loved it, didn't you, Carl? Brilliant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, you weren't speaking to Suzanne last week at this time because <laughs> you said she had a haircut, probably quite an expensive haircut. She's a lady in media. She's got to look good. She goes, she probably doesn't go to the barber like you or just shave it at home. Probably spent quite a little bit of money on it. She came home. She thought, well, my 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 lover. sweetheart, my lover, my <laughs> sweetheart, my you know what I mean, the man yeah, in my, my life is gonna. He's gonna love this. Well, he adores everything about me, he's gonna love my hair. She walked in, hello Carl, alright? You look like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> is what you said to the poor woman. And then, talked about it on air, she was furious about that, did so you what did you do? Carl? She uh, did listen, yeah. She wasn't happy. And she heard you slagging her hair off? Yeah. And she, well, what so this is probably about? annoying her now. <laughs> well no, it doesn't matter, we can do a lot today cause she's at work. <laughs> So, and of course, no one's gonna tell her. Let's have a chat about a fat ass, shall we? Let's get it all done. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. You are oh. in so much trouble. That's. <laughs> Look, he's realised he has. He's a little bit worried. Oh, didn't you? Didn't you go and buy her a coat or something? Took, her, took her out on Sunday and treated her to a new coat and that. Yeah. But I offered. I said as well. Coat. I said I'd pay. <laughs> I said I'd pay to have it done again. Oh. Oh God! Oh my Christ! So she listened to the show. What did she say? You got home. She'd heard you slagging her hair off. I imagine. I mean, imagine that. I, he thinks that's a good thing. To, so like, we've won the pools. Brilliant. What are we doing? Well, you can have facial surgery now, love. <laughs> it's sort of like it's just uh, oh, Christ. If you offered to have it done again, unbelievable. What? Yeah. But, but I, I, so, yeah, I, I got home and uh, she's like all being moody with me. Right. Yeah. You thought um, something was uh, wrong, she must have listened to the show yeah. when I was slagging off her hair. <laughs> well, well you, his first thought was she probably looked at herself in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that barber's been round again. Yeah. 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 And um she just said, Oh, that wasn't very nice of you, was it? Oh. So I just said, Hang on a minute. I said, That's that's what we do on the show. When I'm slagging off, you know, Chinese people looking old or whatever, so you never interfere. <laughs> sure. <laughs> She's got to get her priorities. I love the fact that she's in the same queue <laughs> as a billion people you've never met. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's fantastic. She's in the same queue. Well, they, well, uh, you didn't complain. Well, no, when I was because Carl, off. I don't think Carl has ever admitted he might be in the wrong ever. Certainly not to your eye. So did that you admit, is so true, isn't it? That is so true. He's never admitted that he might be in the wrong. So did you, in this instance, agree that maybe you'd overstep the mark? No, I just said she she took it badly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's only a haircut. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well. See, so, Steve, you, you haven't see... seen it, so you can't, you can't start interfering on sure. this one. No, okay. No, I haven't seen it, but I, well. I, ver I very much doubt she looks like da Dave Hill from Slade, who, if I'm, uh, uh, unless I'm mistaken, used to cut his hair with garden shears blindfolded. <laughs> well. Um, so, you know what I mean? And did her teeth stick out when she started speaking with a brummy accent as well? No, I've got used to it now anyway. So, and so did you, you bought, so <laughs> at one point, at some point you came calling back and you said, do you want me, do you want me to buy you a coat? I just said, let's, let's leave that, let's go out and have a good weekend. Sure. <laughs> but get your hat before we go. So. <laughs> and, uh, ah! Oh treat, God! Treat, treated her to a new coat and that. Oh. It's, sort of, it's a nice coat so it takes, people will look at that rather than 
There. Look, looking at the head. So if is anyone- it, Does it do flash? It's got obscenities across the back. If anyone who knows Carl's girlfriend is listening- Tell her. And, um, maybe you're a work colleague and you're listening to the show- Because I think this is terrible. Get her to phone him now. Get her to phone him now. Uh, I mean, get forget the Get her to phone on the XFM number. What's the, the, what's the, what's the, what's the <laughs> fat ass uh, complaint line? <laughs> because you are in deep shite. Cemetery Gates by the Smiths, of course, off the Queen is Dead album. Lovely tune. Great Makes you happy, it. doesn't it? Absolutely. It's a nice song about dead people. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, um, just wondering Rick, what your opinions are, what your thoughts are on. on Britney Spears. Uh, liked a couple. Bit bored. She, mm. I think she's panicking a little bit. I think she's a little bit desperate with all this Madonna stuff. Yeah, all the kind of lesbian Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, you know, um, yeah, she's alright. I've got nothing against the girl. Well, I read, I think it was in Hot Tickets magazine. Sure. Uh, it's free with Evening Standard. Yeah. Um, oh, I might get some free Evening Standards now. I've plugged that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, was just reading in there that, I don't know if it's still gonna happen, but apparently she was gonna do a little cheeky appearance at G-A-Y. G-A-Y? The, in, uh, in London. And, uh, obviously I was quite excited because I'm a Spears fan. You know, sorry, do you know that's what that spells, don't you? G-A-Y? Yeah. Gay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it is a gay club. Oh, sure, this is what I, This is what I was ascertaining from the article. Oh, because they've, yeah, so they've yeah, said, yeah, they've yeah, just yeah. said, they've called it what, sort of what it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, um, and it, apparently she was gonna, she was gonna be, uh, previewing some of her new album, live on stage, at GAY, and that's an intimate venue, normally you'd have to see someone like Spears, probably at Wembley Arena, something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm a Spears fan, you know, get up a couple of the gang together. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So the lads. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cruise down there. Yeah. Uh, but then I read on in the article that apparently, the doorman at GAY were only gonna let in, uh, regulars, and the way they were going to ascertain if you were a regular was by asking a series of questions at the door. What, testing if you're testing really- you? Now I don't know if the questions would be about the interior of GAY. Or the interior of <laughs> someone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or just, just general kind of, Like, you know. what, what, do you reckon you'd have passed the, uh, pretend- Well that's what so I was wondering- So, you'd, wondering so you'd have had to pretend to be- GAY. GAY to get yeah. in to see Spears. Now Can that- you say gay on that, the radio? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, uh, but now, I, I'm that's, that's irony, like, isn't it? So you're pretending to be gay to get into a club to mm. see a bird that yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah, I've got, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a little quick test. <laughs> right. Shall I? Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, uh, what's, well, sorry, what's your name, mate? Um, Paolo. All right, Paolo. Yeah. Um, you, right, it, you haven't done a lot with your hair, you just sort of, let, sort of let it grow out. I mean, yeah. would you be putting product on a bit later? Because, I mean, you don't look very, I've been mean, sort of like, you don't, you look sort of quite, Quite masculine, quite. Yeah, masculine. well, sort of like, like you didn't care, like you have no care no, about no, no, how no, no, you no. look, like you're a. I no, mean, well, like, normally it would be shaved. Of course. Oh, okay. Yes. We would say normally that looks about like three months growth there. Why haven't you? I've been ill. <laughs> Nothing yeah. serious. Nothing serious. Okay. No, that's why I let it grow. So it's grown. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what? What time would you normally be going out then? Paolo? Normally I'd go out about sort of. Uh, I'd go out about eight-ish. I Eight o'clock in the evening no, you go? No, 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 no. Because no, that I'd sounds go... a bit early, that's what- No, no I'd go out about three in the morning normally. Right, so I'd take them as well. Yeah, okay, we'll right, so right, that's right, that's right, yeah. Where'd you go? Down sort of- Down Old Compton Street for Old a coffee Compton. and then yeah. on to <laughs> yeah. GAY like with that, your yeah. little shaved head. head. Yeah. Um, okay, well, well you, you, you're doing- you're Sounding doing fine. Sounding pretty good. Can I just ask you one final question? 20 I'm, bender points? Uh, 20 bender points, I'm just gonna let you in. Okay, I'm just gonna you. tell the guards to let you in. But, I'll just one more question. Yeah. Do you prefer knobs or tits, oh. Paolo? Uh, well, uh, knobs. Knobs, you love no, knobs, do you? Okay. Can't get enough knobs, so you, what, you hate tits, I assume? Loathe them. Loathe you them. hate tits, do you? Yes. Okay. What, even Liza Minnelli's? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, yeah, I love hers. But not in a not in a straight not way. In a straight way. In a game so game. okay, okay. So you, you love you love knobs more than tits, I love right? Knobs more than tits. Okay, I okay. Like knobs. In you go. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, you know Britney's yeah. on, do you? Oh, she is so sexy. Oh, but see, that's what would give me away. Like, I know. Great escape. It's just just the last. Yeah. You just well, you, you're. I, I mean, I think you're probably a bit bi. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. but I mean, go in anyway. Thanks yeah. very much. Okay, the drinks are quite expensive. Oh, of so. Pop your shirt off, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Outcast on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You alright, Carl? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Yeah? Just, um, when you were talking just now about, like, like the gay stuff. Yeah. Right, I don't know if you saw, uh, the thing the other week about the fella who's on that quiz show. Who? Sort of- Oh, right, okay. Gay Who? fella, 
straight sort of man, man woman. What you? are you talking about? What, what tell me the what, what 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 did you see? Tell me what you saw. It's so, This is like a I kid see. come running in and he's <laughs> seeing something frightening. It might yeah. could be an alien, could be a ghost, could be a paedophile, <laughs> and you've got to get exactly what actually <laughs> saw out of him. <laughs> right, what did you actually see? It's just this this fella who's a who's a woman. Right. Um, <laughs> right, okay, right. Try and talk like a human being. Right. It's, it's a quiz show that's coming on the telly. And um it's this this woman. Uh, right, is it a fella who's a woman, or is it a woman? It's a bit of both, that's why I'm talking about it. But what do you mean? Is it a pre-op, is it a transsexual, a transvestite, it's, it's just, is it a ladyboy, is it an hermaphrodite, what is it? I'll tell you about it. Well, tell, tell me. You. I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's a woman, N well, it's a man. <laughs> oh, for, oh no, listen, forget listen. it. Listen. Play a record. No, listen. No, come on. What? It's, 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 it, it is a man. He is a man. Well. <laughs> It's a TV program where they've got this- Transvestite or a, television? It is a transvestite, yeah. So but, it, but the problem is, uh, I'll tell you, just because you don't know about it, the program is- I don't know, I still don't know <laughs> about it. I don't know anything about it, still. I don't know, it's a woman, man, man, woman, man, man, woman, TV, TV program, look, TV. No, it's a, it's a man who is now sort of half a woman. <laughs> and- <laughs> A man who is now half a woman! No, well, this is what's weird about it. <laughs> he's, he's got the top half. <laughs> but not the bottom half. What do you mean? Out. He's got breasts and a wig, but he's still got his his boys downstairs. He's got. Do do his, his captain and the boys what are still there for? in his wife fronts. Why but that? upstairs, he's got a lovely pair of dumplings. Why do that? Well, he's halfway through. But why not get it all done in one one go? Maybe he couldn't afford it. Well, wait until you've got all the money. That just looks a mess. <laughs> And who's he pleasing there? Uh, <laughs> when he wakes well, up in the morning and pleases himself, he can't believe his luck. He doesn't yeah. know where to start. <laughs> no, but what I don't understand, I mean, do, you know, I don't want to see him. Well, can I just finish that sentence? What you don't understand? It's just about everything. <laughs> yeah. Right. What, no, what? I find it weird, right? I sort of get, I, I understand the, the gay thing, right? <laughs> but. Do you? What do you mean? Well, you know, I, I know. Well, I know, tell me the gay thing. Explain well, the gay I thing. I just know if you, you're a fella, you like, you like men. I don't know much more than that. What do you mean you don't know? But what I mean is. <laughs> With a transvestite, what's going on there? What what do they want? A transvestite is is, is a, a a cross dresser. See, I don't I don't get that either. <laughs> because you mean a transsexual? That's, somebody, that's a man who likes to dress in women's clothing. It's not necessarily they're not necessarily gay. They're not gay. They're often anything. not gay. They just happen to like wearing women's Those clothes. Those clothes, aren't yeah. But, but then why not wear women's clothes that could be seen as a bloke's like Suzanne wears jeans. No, but they, yeah, Just but that's buy the thing. Jeans. But that's, that's, that's their problem, is it? They, they, they like being seen as a, as a, as a, as a woman. They like being seen as a woman. It's not just that it's more comfortable or they wear a kilt. They like being seen as a woman. They feel more comfortable. All right. And what's the deal with this fella who's got- We don't both? know who this fella is. No. We don't know this man who's half a woman. He's called Miriam. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I love this scientific basis. No, I'm So all he's done, he's, he's had the tits done, he's probably had the hormones, probably lived as a woman for a while. The last step, that, cause you can probably reverse the breasts anyway, cause they're, they're probably implants and hormonal things and, whereas you, you chop your knob and, um, boys off, that's, you know, you come back the next day and go, so I didn't mean that, I, I want my ears pierced. It's a bit more of a bigger operation to put them back. So, Doctors are probably making sure that he's just I'm that sure if you've had the top half done, you're not gonna go back on what you've said. But no, what's the top half being done? You, 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 I could have, I could get you breast implants, give you a bit of hormonal treatment. No, that and you would could be a great idea for next week. <laughs> and, and you could reverse it. What you can't do is grow a knob back. Well, you can. Last week we were talking about growing one on your arm. Yeah. We've done that. Because, uh, <laughs> so that is possible. <laughs> but the thing is, I, the truth of it is, I think I do know about this story. I think it was a television program called There's Something About Miriam. The oh. conceit of which was that this pre-op transsexual- So I guess that right, yeah. Um, was masquerading as a woman. Right. And various blokes, un who didn't realise that this was a man, <gasps> had to, uh, oh, I've heard try and seduce this. him, her. And when they found out that it was actually a bloke, and they- a lot of them had kissed, uh, I him, agree. her, they, uh, they refused to let it be shown. I, 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 agree, I agree, though. I, 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 that's just terrible. Yeah. That's oh, deceit. Absurd. But I mean, you know, that's awful. I, 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 yeah, I, I hated that. Yeah. 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 So, so what, um, 
I think it was a Sky One program. Is there anything other than The Simpsons on Sky One that's worth watching? <laughs> Have you ever tried to watch that? <laughs> Have you ever seen Kirsty's Home Videos? Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's things like <laughs> <it's> dogs, <laughs> dogs on a slide, babies falling over. Do you know, it's uh, only recently reduced from an hour in length. Really? It's been an hour long, and it was just, if you haven't seen it, it's just like camcorder footage, like you've been finding like? people falling I, over. I like an old woman at a wedding falling over and showing her blues. <laughs> That's, That's my favourite. I like it when it's Kirsty's uh, home videos uncut. So it's kind of four old women, like, naked. With their tits falling out. Windsurfing. Uh, oh, Christ, it, it, imagine it, that. Does it whistle? Well, <laughs> it's just a, it's just, I mean, <laughs> have you ever really sat and watched anything on, on Sky One? No. That wasn't. The Simpsons, Simpsons or, Star I think that's, or Star Trek. I think that's what I watch on. I, I think that's or pretty wrestling. much what I watch. Wrestling. They have WWF wrestling, cartoons, and just the worst programs. I mean, it's I've a seen a bit of the wrestling. It's it's hilarious. It but is it's hilarious. Like a, it's like a station that's made by a fourteen-year-old boy. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's probably what it is, isn't it? Yeah. That, I mean, that's exactly the demographic. Do you like Sky One, Carl? I haven't got, I haven't got satellite ever, so. Why can't, why not? I thought you'd have loved that. No, I would love it. I'd oh, Discovery it. Channel's that. all know, about I know, I know. slugs and that and weird stuff like that. I know. Chimps. I was reading about a, slugs the other day. There's a thing, uh, on the, one of the channels called Monkey Business. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah. Because I was doing that thing, wasn't I, with Richie Bacon. Yeah. Where you watch the telly and that. You're and talking you... riddles. Mm. You actually talk in riddles and yeah. forget a play record. You <laughs> should be the gatekeeper <laughs> in some kind of Dungeons <laughs> and Dragons. <laughs> Hello, uh, uh, alright, yeah. Let me enter. <laughs> right, yeah, but I was doing that thing with Richard Bacon. What can he mean? <laughs> what what can he mean? mean? He is the wise There's one. There's a man Just who's a small woman. Yeah, yeah. The upper is half it? is, but is the bottom. Yeah, play a record. Bit of clash. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on. Train in vain. XFM. 104.9. Johnny Cash, Hurt, on XFM, 104.9. That's brilliant, isn't it? Good. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl... Pilkington. So, what have we done? We've done gays, transvestites. Have we done nobbies yet, or? It's nice it? that you can talk about pre op transsexuals nowadays on the radio. I know. You know, without the fear of complaints or I know. listeners. Listeners, <laughs> that's the thing. If we had any listeners, we'd get complaints, we really wouldn't would. we? We really would. We'd get some serious complaints if yeah. anyone cared enough. That's to why pick we haven't gone to, to a, a decent station with, you know. We would audience. never do, on a, on a real radio station, we could never do this, could no. we? Why We'd not? Have... Why not? See, I, I'm not doing this to, like, mess about and offend anyone. I think it's an interesting topic. What? You talking gobbledygook, not really knowing what- an yeah, Carl, woman, woman, Carl, for the first five minutes, you couldn't talk. What? <laughs> 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 okay. Look, um, although, although, with, you know, the, the, you know, who's the biggest, most professional person in radio? It's probably Terry Wogan, isn't mm. it? And it was you that said you can't tell what the sentence he's saying because no. he keeps going up at the end before. But he and never. After. There's well, never any well, punctuations. Well, yeah. So yeah. he'll just segue <laughs> from one point to the next. So he'll be like, going on my holidays, Friday. We're having a lovely time, says <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Dorothy Sheen <laughs> of Westminster. I'm thinking of going to Greece. <laughs> Oh, and it's so, uh, so he's got his knobs, but he's still got the tits. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah, typical, <laughs> typical. Oh, hello, Paolo. Do you want to come into my club yeah, to see? I'd love to go. Britney's Britney Spears, Spears. A fan. Yeah, well, it doesn't start for a while. It's sure. uh, it's only about eight o'clock, and you know you're not going out for hours yet. I no, am not no, no, eight or seven. No, no, no. But um, might as well watch a bit of telly. We've got uh, FA Cup final. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Just there, so good one, isn't it? Or we've got, um, the Eurovision Song Contest. What do you want to watch, Paolo? Oh, blimey, blimey. Well, I love all the, um, the camp and lame right. of the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. Well, I, oh, is that David Beckham playing? Because I love him. Oh, his I see hair what you've done. Legs. See what you've done. You see? So you will watch the football, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you'll be mainly looking at the. Just looking at the, the, the legs and the tight, yeah. the tight shorts. So while Beckham's knocking him in, <laughs> you'll be. <laughs> exactly, knocking <laughs> one. Um, <laughs> right. Let's, uh... Do you know, I just remember, I don't, I mean, I never really looked, but when you see old clips of, say, early 80s footballers, the shorts are much tighter, aren't I they? I think, I mean, I don't know, I don't <laughs> I look. Don't really know. I don't know. Do really you, looking. I remember oh. Carl saying when he went and there was two strippers, a bloke <laughs> and a woman, and they whipped off their clothes at the same time, and you looked straight at the boys' Yeah, everybody pack. would. You would have done. Right. You do do. You do do? You look at his do do? <laughs> what do you mean? You look at his do do? No, what? I'm just saying, you, if you were there, you would have done the same. Two people on the stage. Yeah. Woman and a man. Yeah. They were getting the clothes off. Yeah. Right? The fella <laughs> took his pants off the same time as the girl took her knickers off. Yeah, right. right. All I'm saying is it's human nature to have a, have a quick look, have a quick glance, see what's going on. <laughs> see what's going on! 
I and then I wanted, I wanted to look at the woman, but she put her knickers back on quick. <laughs> 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 she didn't live opposite from you, did she? But just, sorry, just to return briefly to the shorts question. I, yeah. It's only because in the 30s and 40s, they were huge shorts, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, genuinely massive, like, yeah, uh, huge. A, a small child could well, wear them as trousers, they were I think that's to do with comfort and decency, though, isn't it? And then, but by the sort of 80s, there was barely any shorts there. I think that was fashion. But it's weird that it's, uh, you feel like at some point someone's gone, guys, I mean, They've good gone too today, small. but this <laughs> is ludicrous. But that's, but that's what happened, isn't it? Because, you know, it, things get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And fashion, it's like, like flares, yeah. drain pipes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. heels, flat. Yeah. Tall hats, <laughs> flat hats. <laughs> yeah. What are you making the miniskirt? Uh, long hair, skinhead. <laughs> yeah. Miniskirt, uh, again, I don't know, they, I'm, I'm sure there's been, Ten resurgences of miniskirts yeah. since '65, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fashion. So the short. Uh, you know what? Do you know what I think, Steve? I think the shorts will get smaller again before we die. <laughs> I think we'll see one more tight little packet <laughs> of Premiership footballers running round with their awful squeezed yeah. like uh, like uh, the last chicken in a butcher's window, <laughs> almost protruding. wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. Well, imagine if they just wore cling film shorts so you could see what was happening there, Carl. Where would you look then? Because you like football, don't you? We're doing Rockbusters. <laughs> oh, I suppose so. Rockbusters. Go on, then. Oh. Right, uh, we brought it back. Uh, this is where I give a cryptic clue. Well. And some initials. Yeah. And you work it out and you win some stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna tell you what the prizes are. Needless to say, they're mediocre prizes for a mediocre quiz. Sure, okay, yeah. Oh, Where's well, right, DVDs and VHS, and VHS, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. VHS, who's still got that? Right, so there's three, three of them. And what you can do now, we've tweaked it a bit. Okay. You can text in. Mm hmm Right, so you can email or text. We've tweaked it a bit. Mm. Right. <laughs> 83XFM is the text, or it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Is that what it is? 83XFM? That's it. That is good, though, and it's convenient, because who's got their laptop up and running and exactly. texting? On the so just shoot your phone. Brilliant. All right. Mine so can do that. I don't know how to do that on my phone. I don't know how to get... What do you my... mean? Huh? What do you mean? My brother wanted my postcode, he said text it to me. Mm. I couldn't work out how to do WC and That's 1. because you're an old man. It's so I had, to, I had to write out double U C 1. Oh, for goodness sake. I didn't know how to do it. I it, it, just, it won't do it for me. Pathetic. It's ridiculous, go well, on. Well, it's 83936 if, if you have that problem, right? Right, come on, we get on with the quiz. I right, don't know, three, there's too many numbers now. Three, uh, three clues, here we go. First one is, uh, this Teletubby has got lice. Right. This Teletubby has got lice. This Teletubby has got lice. Right. The initial there is P, so it's a band or an artist yep. that starts with P and the clue is this Teletubby has got lice. Right? Yep. Um, second one. <sighs> I'm, I'm really already not holding out much hope I, for this. <laughs> Working out. Go on. Uh, right. Second one. I've just messed that first one up. Then, <laughs> right? Oh, for Christ. But wh when what? I give it out later, it'll be, we'll, I'll sneak it in without, right? Just don't repeat anything I say. You're an idiot. Listen, you really are no, an idiot. No, 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 play a record. No, play a record. No, play a record. No, you're a fool. Play no, a record. Let, let me just no, no, no. Press the no, button. Press you've the ruined button. it. You're an idiot. It's off. Ludicrous. Red Vines by Amy Man. Brilliant, that, isn't it? Very good. On XFM 104.9. Well, um, Carl mucked up Rockbusters, as usual. I mean, it's, uh, you know what, I like it when he mucks up early because it doesn't waste people's lives sure. for 40 minutes really, like he's mucked up at the end. Yeah. So, obviously, people are already, they, they know what it is, they know what it is already, they've said, well, it's police, isn't it? You meant to say nits instead of lice. Yeah. You're an idiot. So that one's gone, so what, what have you got next? Right, so that's just an idea, if you haven't heard it before, that's, that's how my head works. Right, this Teletubby has got knit. So Poe. P, so Poe is a Teletubby. Yeah. Uh, so, so what is this cryptic? It's not only what the, what the answer is, it's what the question was meant to be. Sure. So. Alright, so there's only two, so you've got even a better chance of winning than that. Well. So, the second one is, I'm saving that money to buy condoms. Alright. Think about it. Easy. Too easy. J right. J C. Yeah, right, well that's, that's too- that, uh, so everyone's got that one. I feel like saying it now. Yeah, but so don't- that's, don't Well that's rubbish. Now. Yeah, but you've got to have an easy one in there, otherwise people get bored, don't First they? one was easy, we gave them the answer. Yeah, but- hang on. <laughs> that's the easiest one we've ever had. Police. And the- and the- th and the second one is- Yeah. Uh, when you're making bread, add a little bit of colour for a change. Alright? When you're making bread, add a little bit of colour, just change things a little bit. What are the initials? Right? D. Just D. Just D, right? right? So, 
what you've got there, I'm saving that money to buy condoms, the initials mm -hmm. JC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's easy, yeah. Nice. And, uh, and when you're making some bread, just chuck some, chuck some colour in there. Sure. You know what I mean? Change, yeah. change yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Like the clue, the clue changes every time. <laughs> yeah. The clue changes every time. Unlike <laughs> the Times crossword, the clue changes every time it's said. 83 XFM is what it takes or it's Ricky Dr. Bay's at xfm.co.uk. Rubbish. Pointless. David Bowie and Waterloo Sunset. Love that. Love the original. Yeah. Love that one. Love the original. On yeah. XFM 104.9. Good work to David Bowie and the Kinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big time. Big time. Um. Reading the paper there, Yeah, Steve? well, I don't normally read the paper. But, no. um, I was having a glance through the Daily Express. Does anyone read the Express? Well, um, you do at the moment, look. <laughs> well, true. Live on air. Yeah. Read but it out and then uh, about 400 people have know what's in it. <laughs> I just read- I was obviously attracted, uh, by this little news item, gun cool. raid by three Saddams. Uh, three armed men- Oh, they're up to their old tricks again, yeah, are they? Yeah. yeah. Three armed men wearing Saddam Hussein masks were on the run last night after robbing a corner shop. The raiders threatened the worker with a handgun and a knife, ordering him to open the till, blah blah blah, get money out. And it says that they also tried to rob an earlier shop earlier in the day. Police said, we are linking the raids because the descriptions of the offenders are very similar. <laughs> <laughs> what was the- what did the first one not quite get yeah, right? Yeah, Well, they looked very similar. <laughs> I think it was Gaddafi. Three Gaddafis. Right, cause that's weird, cause we've had three, yes, I don't know what down a oh, shop so down Oh, that's what I meant. Is Saddam it the same guys? Cause I don't well, wanna, I assume so, I wouldn't have thought- I don't wanna- I don't wanna, you know, no, 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 get no, the it's Gaddafi almost guys a, on the Saddam Hussein No, I, no, I, I'm, I'm almost sure <laughs> it, it'd be the same way. I didn't know, I, one's got a moustache, haven't they, and one's like a or they all got a moustache, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it's- there were three blokes with masks. Middle Eastern appearance, I don't know, but I mean, I imagine it's the same <laughs> I am, um, because I've, I've only ever seen, really, um, robberies being planned in films. Sure. So I don't know how it works, I assume that So you say. <laughs> yeah. But I assume at some point someone's got to get together, one of them, the ringleaders, got to get together and go, okay, well, we need to wear masks, obviously, to disguise our patients. Yeah. I'm thinking of going with the regular stockings. No, no, no. No. <laughs> I'll tell you it'll be funny. <laughs> well, I don't want to be funny. Well, yeah, I don't know. I we want to strike fear into the hearts of yeah, people. Yeah, but I mean, kill two birds with one stone. We get the robbery and we have a laugh with it. fear. Do you, do you say you want to strike fear? Well, wear a mask of someone who's really scary. Who's the scariest bloke in the world? Well, I, I don't know. Saddam Hussein. I've got three of them. <laughs> well, what, why? I've got, I've got three of them. Let's all wear Saddam Hussein. It'd be a laugh. Well, it's not. I don't want it to be a laugh. I'd no, but it don't, don't hurt if we're having a laugh. And that's what I want. I want to make money and have a laugh. <laughs> why? Well, that's what, not, well, I'm yeah. only in the money. I'm only in it for the money. Well, the yeah, but I mean, not important. To well, no, well, no, it's we are on a straight field. We could also make a political point. I don't want to make a political no, point. No, you just want I'm, the money. I'm a thug. I'm well, not. I'm well, not clever. We could have a laugh and we could make a political point. Why not? What political point? Whether it's weird, you know, maybe we're sort of stealing from the rich. We're not like Robin Hood. Never mind Robin Hood, let's rob Barclays. That's what, the... Why are you making jokes? Well, I mean, don't worry, I'm going to do with stuff. I'm going to do with stuff. <laughs> you are, so... You're a comedian, you don't, I'm not well, sure you let's should just be in wear the game. masks, let's wear the masks. <laughs> How did it happen? <laughs> did they go and buy them? It's separately, look, look, spread yeah. out. Look, you go to the joke shop in Covent Garden, yeah. I'll go to the one in Southampton Row. Yeah. Brilliant. See, I, cause it's so often the case that they're using masks, it used to be Reagan, Thatcher, they were always a, if I was the guy selling those, like, when three guys came in, three shifty looking blokes, to yeah. buy three identical masks. Yeah, in stockings. <laughs> in stockings. Just, <laughs> just so they don't know who we are. Sorry, yeah. can I just check, you're not gonna rob Definitely not. with these masks. But just think of the police looking at those robbers. Uh, every time they go past one of those awful sort of gift shops, they think <laughs> that, oh no, it's just a, <laughs> yeah. it's just in the window there with, uh, <laughs> yeah. With Michael Jackson <laughs> and uh, Shirley Bassey. Yeah, George Bush. Oh, Paolo, can I ask you something? I yeah. know you love knobs and that, and you hate tits. Yeah. What about Shirley Bassey's tits? Oh, well, I mean, I'm a fan of them because I'm a fan of Shirley, but I don't like you know, them. Cool, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're pretty bent. You are pretty bent. <laughs> pretty Come good. in. Thanks, Br much. Brittany's on in seven hours. Excellent. Yeah, what are you doing yeah. out at this time? No, no, no. I just came out to uh, get some uh, nope. milk. <laughs> yeah, get some, uh, some cock in the toilet. <laughs> Carl. Um, plenty of answers, right. Carl, so far for your. Um, I yeah. say quiz, I'm not sure that's really valid. Yeah, loads coming in. We're giving away some more stuff later as well, with that yeah. film thing. That's coming up. Coming up. That's when you that. put yourself into a, a, a famous film yeah. and you act out. Is that, is that it? You've yeah. done, you've done The Graduate, haven't you? Done The Graduate, done Silence of the Lambs, yeah. done, uh, Billy Elliot. Uh, <laughs> I liked it where you, um, what was your one, uh, a sixth ends. <laughs> I see sense. weird stuff. Yeah, the sixth ends <laughs> was good. So well, that's coming up later. We're doing that later. That's well, look, well, we'll look forward to that. Look forward to we're that. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah, I'm assuming we've got some great music as well. Uh, still lined up. Thorns. Yeah. Thorns. Oh, I'm obsessed with this now. This is uh, the Thorns, and uh, I can't remember on XFM 104.9. Brilliant. Strokes. 12:51 on XFM 104.9. 
I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Not done a lot. Maybe you should earn your money as you get to Mondays off for this two hours of nonsense. What are you on about? I've done loads of stuff. Go slag, on, what? slag Suzanne off. Yeah, brilliant. First link. Yeah. Talks about trannies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, same old, same old. Yeah. Let's have something new. Something Come fresh. On. Well, I've been looking around, right, on the, on the internet for stuff. Yeah. On the internet? Yeah. Your Bible. Mm -hmm. Where you get all your information about the world and the universe <laughs> and morality from. And you know, like, how I always say to you, I don't really read that much of it, I just read, read the headline. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Anna Nova, I sort of nicked that idea to grab you. <laughs> right. so you <laughs> nicked what idea? Well, to sort of get to the meat straight away at the top. Do you know what I mean? The, the headline to the story and everything. What? Right, these are stories- But the headlines already existed, that was why you thought nah, that was a good not idea. like this though. Alright. Headline. Well, these are all headlines, right? Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh, God. You know, Vibrating what I mean? shoes could stop elderly falling. Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> you don't need to read on. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? could you read that anyway? <laughs> can't be bothered. <laughs> Read on right. anyway. Well, Read you have a look at that in a bit, right? Oh, so, oh, okay. so what this there, is bro. frustrating right. radio if you're sitting at home. No, well, you, you, it's not on. They've turned it off. If yeah. you ought to know more, you know where to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what they should do in the news. <laughs> Get the news done in, Bong. in a minute. There's a good story about Iraq. Right. Bong. Right. 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 Look it up. Look it up on the internet. Hand and over. Give us another bong. Bong. Family sick of living on Butthole Road. <laughs> Oh, ah, brilliant. oh, brilliant. Bong. Man wears same shoes for sixty years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bong. This isn't that good. Uh, some fella pulls a train with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in lighter news. I remember that. Triple done on this one. This is very good. And, oh. uh, the last one, man fails to break clothes pegs on face record. <laughs> She's always good. Well, yeah. that's, that's the one I did read on about. <laughs> I love that out of all those, that's the one he read on about. Go on then. Just, um... Why is that news? He fails to make a record. Mm. So did I today. <laughs> I know, yeah. I failed the long jump record today. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even take part. No! <laughs> I was rubbish. But what are the rules on, on world records and that? I don't, I don't know if there are rules. There are certain things you can't. I mean, it's it's the Guinness Book of Records, isn't it? Really, that's the arbiter, isn't it? Yeah, but is there anything if you said you wanted to do it, would they say, well, you can't do that? Yeah, they've they've stopped some gluttony records. Obviously, things that are in danger. It's anything that's illegal. Yeah, anything that's immoral. Yeah, like that that American serial killer that just got discovered. Yeah, having killed forty seven women. I don't think he can make that into the Guinness Book of Records. No, because th people would be trying to beat it, won't they? <laughs> but there was some some other story about a fellow eating watches and that. That can't be good for you. So why don't they say, look, don't do that, do something else? He wanted to stay regular. <laughs> do you know what, what do you mean? mean? I just, I just wondered what if What do you mean he was eating watches? He just said he was eating watches. He, he got, he got about three in about a minute. How did he, how did he time it? <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? And then, the other thing is, the one, the one that I was reading the world record with the fellow who's pulling a train with his mm. teeth. Mm. Does, does that make any difference? That he's done it with his teeth. What do you mean? Well, what difference does it make? Well, isn't it? It's quite hard to pull a train with your teeth, I imagine. Well, it's pretty hard to pull a train. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is it is it because he couldn't beat the fella who's pulling it with his hands? Well, that's so the, this is it? my point. There's the, I think there was uh, one bloke with a record for the backwards running backwards hundred meters was sort of like eleven and a half seconds. And I was thinking, turn around, you'd probably you'd probably have a really good <laughs> go at that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like doing a marathon with a milk bottle on your head. Take the milk <laughs> bottle off and see how fast you can go, you <laughs> twat. But you can just squeak it, like the fella who has done the pegs on the face, right? Yeah. Um, his name's Gary Stretch Turner, right? <laughs> right. So, he's sort of cheating already if he's, if he's got a stretchy head, right? <laughs> but, but you are, right, <laughs> you are one of the most stupid humans I have ever met. Well, get me in the book. Yeah? <laughs> Right? But listen. <laughs> so Gary, Gary Stretch Turner, right? His record is 153 pegs. Yeah. He did it again, and he only got 150 on. <laughs> so he hasn't broke his own record. Right. But what I'm saying is, if he tweaked it a bit more, would that make a new record? What? Well, if, if he said, 
I've got 150 pegs on, but at the same time he's eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. He'd be the, or, or the it, world or record breaker for pegs and eating burgers at the same time. Yeah, just change it a bit. If you know <laughs> that you're not gonna make it, just do something else. I'm assuming the rules are set at the beginning, Carl. That's yeah. it. That's where they say, right, you're just gonna do the pegs thing. You're not gonna introduce burgers halfway through, are you? Definitely not. <laughs> and okay. then they have a go. I was on one leg, not interested. How many pegs? 150. Can I just ask very briefly, I was quite interested by the family had to move because <laughs> they lived on Butthole Road. Yeah, I quite like that now, one. I, I don't know if I've told you before, Rick, where I used to live. I'm not gonna tell you the name of the street that I used to live on because- not on air because my parents still live there and I don't want right. you know. But I'm gonna write it for you now. This is the name, the genuine name of the street I used to live on. Just imagine when you're at school. Yeah. And oh. like in class, for instance in French, you've got to say- they've got- you've got to answer where you live. Yeah. J'habite, wherever. Yeah. That's the name, this is actually the name of the street we lived on. No, it's not. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> that is- I'm <laughs> absolutely right. I could phone my father now and he could confirm that for well, you. No, I swear because he doesn't wanna- To that's... God. And I tell you that- what, But listen, do you know what worries me? It's the apostrophe S. I know. Because that's blatant. Yes. Amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. But imagine how embarrassing So that if was. I look that up in the Bristol- You will find that in the Bristol A to Z. I swear that to God. That is really- Why have you never told me that before? I can't believe I haven't. That's I'm incredible. I'm still embarrassed now. Do you know if whenever I have to phone up, if I have to give that address, I always spell it instantly. Really? Like somehow that will hide it, that will disguise the name. But it's interesting, my friend Rufus, his parents lived in a place called Fockingham. <laughs> right? This is amazing when he was growing up. They, li he lived, they lived in Fockingham. Yeah. They moved to a village called Fingering Ho. No! I swear to God. Really? Amazing. Oh, well, God. Perhaps you come from an amusing town or street. Hello, well, mate. Okay. Fingering her or fucking them? <laughs> well, that's my business. <laughs> exactly. Well, this, this family who's sick of living on, uh, Butthole Road, <laughs> right, said the thing that pushed them over the edge was the sign was outside their house and tourists were always coming sort of having the picture taken with the pants down <laughs> next to the sign. <laughs> sure. Oh, no. no. That's, that's the thing that... What's it called? Butthole Road? Butthole Road, yeah. Well, oh, that's bad luck, isn't it? That is bad luck, isn't it? Who named it that, though? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but it's not as if they've named it that after they've moved there. They bought the house knowing, oh, there's a lovely house here, so wh where you live, what road it's on. Well, I'm gonna go, well, it doesn't matter, I'll look at the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, where, where am I going? Where am I seeing this Well, house? I'll take well, you there, I'll take you there. I'll take you there. Well, so, you don't need to look, just don't, don't look at that sign, just come into that house. lovely house, isn't it? It is nice, yeah. Well, my family wants to come later, so I'll Well, just tell them to, I'll meet them, I'll meet them by the bus stop and I'll drive them here. <laughs> you don't need to, you don't even know where you're going. You just, you'll just sort of know, won't you? You'll know from then on. How will we get letters? Have delivered to me if you want. I'll, I'll bring them, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring them round. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's incredible. But I can't get over that, where Steve used to live. That's extraordinary. Isn't it? Anyway, if you perhaps live in Tits Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or um, Wanklin Drive. <laughs> Wanklin Drive, just get in touch. Let yeah. us know. We're not really interested. But it no. might fill up five minutes. Let's play a record, let's come back with another of Carl's amazing quizzes. I'm going to Spunkton later. <laughs> <laughs> if I Was Your Girlfriend by Prince on XFM 104.9. Yeah. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, yeah. Carl talking to Big you. time. We've had quite a few, uh, calls. Greg used to live in a place in South Africa called Arsagay. Arsagay? Arsagay, Nothing yeah. Nothing with that. Paul's, uh, friend's parents live in Fart Town, just outside <laughs> Leeds. <laughs> Fart Town. Which is nice, isn't it? <laughs> That's just ridiculous. And, uh, Dean, uh, used to live in Butts Farm. Hamworth. Butts Farm. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, I assume they're free range butts. Sure. And not sort yeah. of battery farm butts. That, that, that'll be horrible. But, uh, yeah. Do you think that? That'd be great to just name a town, wouldn't it? I think if I, yeah, I was thinking if I was a, like a multi billionaire, a Bill Gates type figure, I'd yeah. like to buy somewhere, like, say, Manchester, and just rename it. And Whinging, like, whinging on the wall. Whinging on the wall, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and. Make maybe them work, work and work Mondays. Exactly. They'd be obliged to, to, that would have to be what it's called. Yeah. It's the rules. It'd be like mayor. Yeah. It'd be oh, great. it'd be great as mayor, wouldn't you? you? Well, you want to be mayor of Chinatown, don't you? I'd like to be mayor of Chinatown. It seems to me that there's not a great deal to do. No. Because it's not really a town. No, exactly. But I've been, it's just a but novelty who can we talk street. to about that? Who can go say that, that you've got to stop calling this a town? Because at best it's a novelty street well, with I... some, with some slippy, Pavements near yeah. restaurants. I, uh, I actually got stopped the other day by two tourists who said, do you know the way to Chinatown? And I really wanted to say to them, it's a disappointment. It's <laughs> not a town. Seriously, it's not worth it. Pop in, pop in a record shop. Do something else. Yeah. Pop in Garfunkel's. Have <laughs> 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 some delicious sausage and mash. But you'll get to Chinatown and you'll go, this is not a town. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you, uh, have you got a town hall? Mm, got not a betting really. shop? <laughs> yeah. It's not really a town. I don't think you could build a town entirely out of restaurants. <laughs> 
<laughs> not enough. <laughs> you need more stuff. Oh, dear. A lot of old people I've noticed there, Carl. Aren't there? Let's leave that, eh? What? We'll leave it. Leave what? the old- Leave what? Uh, just got to John. He was oh. just emailed and he said my secondary school was- <laughs> my secondary school was on a street simply called Bell End. <laughs> Bell End, really? Yep. Oh, that's, that's great. Thing. Um, there's uh, a road in Cricklewood somewhere called Clitterhouse Drive. <laughs> Clitterhouse? Yeah, I don't think you can really get that. You can't get them on that, that's fine. No, that's fine. Um, no, that guy used to stand with a laugh, just taking the mick, get a lot of that sort of thing. There's a place in America, apparently, Ben's emailed this in, there's a place in America called, uh, My Anus. My Anus? Yeah. I think I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. My Anus, yes, I have heard of that. That's, that's... That's unlucky. Oh uh, yeah, that is unfortunate. Where do you live, my- <laughs> where do you live, my anus? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, got, I've got a letter for you. Where should I- <laughs> Where should I send this? <laughs> Alright, don't get cheeky. <laughs> anyway, just r rather than reading out the A to Z, right? Mm -hmm. Are we doing Rockbusters <laughs> answers? Oh! oh! Yeah! Come on then. Right, Listen, this is- this is built- this has got Chris Moyles, The Breakfast Show, on Radio 1. <laughs> this yeah. sort of stuff. Well, Go on. Uh, have we- have we got a winner? Steve, did we you have? I'll check that in a minute. Alright, yeah, 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 right, well, you, you find a find a good winner. Yeah. yeah. The Rockbusters clues. The first one was this Teletubby has got no. mitts. Well, we know no, 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 we've no, done no, that. No. That yeah. was pole ice. Yeah, yeah right. rubbish. You ruined it. Right. The second one. I'm saving that money to buy condoms. Too easy, Johnny Cash. That was Johnny yeah. Cash. Rubbish. And the third one was w when you're making bread, add a bit of colour for a change and sort of you know change the colour of it. Right. Right, that was dye dough. <laughs> they got that. <laughs> Give us a winner. Well, this is, uh, the reason I've given this person the prizes is just because she's from Switzerland. Sure. She's listening in Geneva in Switzerland, so I mean, good luck to Tina. And she wins those prizes. Who did she want to win the war? Don't know, I don't think she had an opinion. Really? You sure? Yeah. They say that, but I, I reckon, I reckon they wanted us to win, really. I, so. I reckon so. Do you think that was true of all the wars? They were always on our side, really. I'd get her to, uh, who, I'd get her to, just, if she's still there, who did most Swiss people, maybe sort of like over 50, want to win the war? The Swiss war or the original war? The Second World War. The best war. Yeah, the, the main, one. the main the one. Main one. Yeah. Uh, so just, just, uh, just as a poll, in her opinion, uh, so, so ask people over sort of like 50 or 60, right, just quickly do it in the next 10 minutes, who did they really, I uh, they're neutral, but who did they really <laughs> want to win? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we know you're oh, neutral, but yeah, it's but 50 odd years England, later. Germany. We come up with great games, don't we? Hey, Bad Day, an REM on XFM, 104.9. Carl's Quiz. Mm -hmm. It's a classic film. He's done some jiggery pokery. He's in the film. It's his favourite film of all time. I thought The Elephant Man was your favourite film of all time. It's up there, but but this is like, this, this film's got everything. It's got hilarious bits in it. It's got sad bits in it. I've got the headphones on because I've got to hear it and I don't usually wear headphones, but, um, I just realised how noisy I am. Does that go out when I'm sort of does. does it really? Yes. So when I'm sort of like tapping and writing and that, cause you can- cause it's really clear. Everyone can hear that. Really? Yeah. The thing about that microphone, Rick, is it doesn't just pick up your voice. <laughs> it picks up all the things. <laughs> oh. That must be- Are you scratching now? <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 I, I don't know, know what it is, you've that got there, some be... kind of rash. Well look, look, it's eczema, I think. Look, what's that? Oh, Exmo, yeah. oh god, and what's that one then? That's oh. just one of your enormous oh, that, fat tits. What's that? Um, but yeah, that must be irritating to listen mm, to it. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. If your voice weren't bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got- and moving the mic, Moving the mic then, that yeah. makes the noise. Leave that. Eating sandwiches, <laughs> drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. Right, come on then, Carl. Right, so the film is Kez. You gotta listen to it properly, at the end there'll be a question about what's happened in there, yeah. so you gotta listen to it all I in. love the fact that in- Pole position in, in positions one and two of his favourite films of all time is The Elephant Man and Cares. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Go on. Alright. Am I leaving the mics open a bit when this is going out yeah, or what? Yeah, let's have a listen. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Alright. All right. So don't talk then, right? Just put that hot dog down, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bit in Kez where yeah. it's the teacher and, and, and he gets up and he has to Glover. talk. What's his name? Is it Brian Glover? No, no. No. No, it's What's the other the teacher. The other one. Anyway. Right. Go on. Alright. So, here we go. Things that had actually happened. Oh, oh, yeah. What about you, Casper? Casper! Alright. Alright? Alright. You haven't been listening to a word I've said, have you? Yeah, I've heard, uh, heard some of it. Yeah, you've- Some of it? Just- Stand up! Oh. Always somebody, isn't they? <coughs> right, now you're gonna tell us a story about yourself. 
what sort of story? I want you to think of an incident that happened to you sometime in the past that is true and that you think will interest the rest of the class. All right? All right. Uh, uh, what about... Uh, I work, I work on a, um, on a radio show at the weekend. Well, are you going to tell us about it? I just, um, just do, it's two hours, and it's, it's with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, and, uh, just sort of play music and, you know, tell stories and stuff. What kind of stories? Well, whatever. Like, last week it was science. We are talking about, uh, this lad who was growing... Uh, a, a knob on his arm, so... <laughs> it's weird. It's tricky, sir, cos, like, with Ricky, he, he gets bored quick and he won't listen to the stories and he'll start squeezing me head. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'm not interested in what he does. That isn't... that isn't normal, is it, sir, that? I mean, it sure is a bit gay. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Just messes about, though, do you know what I mean? I try and, like, come up with good stuff. Like monkey news and like quizzes and stuff, but then he'll just, you know, Ricky will just mess about. I mean, on on Saturday he did it again. He he, he squoze me head. How do you spell that? Squoze. S Q. I was going to show us what. It's a new word to me. Squoze is S Q U O Z E. I tell us what it is. It's when um, it's when he he gets me head. And he puts one hand on the back of it, right? And he puts the other hand on the front of it, and he just sort of swivels Swivel, it. Swivel, right down the back. Oh, swivel's not a... It's spelled S-W-I-D... Like How many times a day? How many times a day does, does he swivels it? It depends what time he, you know, what time he gets in. If he gets in about half past twelve, he could get a good three in. But, but I think, you know, I don't, I don't really want to talk about... Well, you don't, don't you? Well done, Billy. Big hand of applause. <laughs> that is... That, the effort. Yeah. Uh, wow. That, that's, uh... That's the best thing you've ever done, Carl. So that's... That's Kez, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Got some good prizes there. Not bad, yeah. Good stuff. Question is, how many times did I say Ricky can get... How many... How many head squeezes <laughs> can he get in before the start of the show? All right? So if you were listening properly... <laughs> The answer's in there, all right? And win some, got some good stuff there. Some DVDs, DVDs. in there, uh, some uh, CDs, including some Jimi Hendrix stuff and uh, other odds and ends. Good stuff. Brilliant. All right. And just text in, uh, 83 XFM. All right? All right. All right. Eddie and the Hot Rods, do anything you want to do on XFM 104.9. All right? Look at your face, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right. We've had loads of entries for the how many times did. I squoze his head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, the answer was three, wasn't it? Yeah. And who's the winner, Steve? Let's give it to John. He's emailed in, he's got it right. He said he squoezed your head three times on sure. average. It's not squoze, is it, Carl? That's incorrect. It's squoze, isn't it? Uh, it depends how you say it. Go uh, on. Squoze. Well, it doesn't really, because it's nonsense anyway. It's not a real word, but... You squoze my head. Yeah. I will squeeze your head. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Depends yeah. what, what line you're getting it in. Sure. Tense. Right? Right. Okay. Any monkey news? Any educating Ricky? Anything else? Um, I don't feel that you've earned Monday off yet, because it's just two hours and you only did, did about five minutes of it. Yeah, but that, that took a bit of time to make. Well, that's your own right. fault. Um, yeah, but I bet you didn't do it Monday. I bet you did it on another day. I had to come in Monday, didn't I? Yeah, I but, didn't I, bet, but I bet you'll do that on another day, so you're taking the piss even more, so you're doing it when you should be doing other stuff. Right. You've still got Monday off and you've mm. got two hours here. So, you're laughing either way. So don't give me that. So, do you know what I mean? What else you got? Monkey news. Yeah. Well, let's do monkey news. You want to do it now? Yeah. Oh, we may as well have some monkey news. Let's have Sorry. some monkey news. Let's do some monkey news. You made enough noise there, really? You want to? Sorry, but it's. Did, uh, sometimes I like to move around, lounge and that, and at the mic. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, let's have the jingle. We've not heard it for a while. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news, you. F right. Um, <laughs> I haven't read this through properly. Oh, so <laughs> no, no, oh, I'm just assumed that. Right. What do you mean you haven't read it through well, basically, properly? basically, right, it's, it's, um, it's about problems with chat rooms and that, right? A lot of people, it's like the new way of meeting people and that, innit, now, chat rooms. You get on there, you can right, have a chat- Right, if you say someone was having a, <laughs> a meeting with someone, <laughs> they wanted don't to meet- it. Right, okay. Please don't preempt but, but, it. Right, there is no, there is not an animal in the world that right, can operate and understand. Right, it doesn't matter, I know the story. <laughs> 
You and said, you said that Did they get mouths three months later, she realised, oh, there's a lot of bananas gone <laughs> from my fridge. See, what I want a divorce. This is what annoys Bobo. me. Bobo. <laughs> you, you say that monkeys can do Shakespeare if they're, if they're given the time. No! That's let's not it! Let's not get into the it's whole thing. It's a philosophical conundrum. Please, right. let's not get into that debate again. We'll it's about the. It's about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, so this one, this one then. Oh. So this chat room, right? And the thing is, with chat rooms, uh, you have like a big boss who's looking over it and making sure nothing dodgy is going on. Right. Right, so certain keywords come up and all that. Who's that, Dr. Zayas? <laughs> right? So anyway, they were, they were looking over it, trying to look for, for dodgy stuff, but they kept coming over like really strange things, like instead of saying, do you want to meet in a restaurant or a bar, right, it'd be like, do you want to meet in a tree? What tree do you want to meet? Right, okay. <laughs> Are you shooting that's off? That's the end, yeah. I'll see you later, mate. I'm just gonna good. listen to the end of it anyway. It's, you're an idiot. You're an idiot if you believe that shit, honestly. No, I'm, ju I'm just telling you let's, what's, let's, what's let's, online. Let's, let's, let's well, hear uh, the rest uh, of it. Well, how- you, you are- you're nearly- you're, you're ill. You're nearly- you- you, okay, right. well, I don't know the PC term for this, so I really apologise. You're nearly retarded in some aspects. <laughs> um, yeah. instead of sort of saying wear something sexy, they'd say make sure you bring plenty of bananas. Right, you're like talking that. absolute- Okay. Are you making up the monkey news now because you can't find it anymore? And instead of saying, should we get married, they're saying, how swollen and red is your arse? <laughs> Do you you stupid fool. Do you that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Ronson and ooh -wee on XFM. Well, what a great show. Mm -hmm. We've had- Informative. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, yeah, we've learnt some, haven't we? Yep. What have we learnt? All well, sorts well, of stuff. we've learnt that Carl is an idiot. Yes. That he believes that monkeys can get on chat. That's a confirmation of it really, yeah, yeah. We, we always suspect it, but that's that. Uh, I just so. read a little email, um, from someone who just said that in, t in Northern Ireland there is a town called Muff. Is there? Yeah, it's worth knowing. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else do we learn? Uh, Monkey News? Uh, um, no one's got anything like Monkey no. News on radio. Have no. they? <laughs> Think of that as a boast. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No one has got anything like this gout. Yeah. You, you call that a boil? <laughs> look at that is. and look where it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brilliant. We've okay. not uh, heard sadly back from that woman, um, from Switzerland. Haven't we? I know you threw out a question. Yeah, I just, I just thought I wanted to find out whether the, who the Swiss really, well I say they're neutral, but I, I would assume they'd be rooting for us and keeping quiet. You'd hope so. Whenever Germans went through, I went, oh yeah, well, yeah, whoever wins, yeah, but they're going, oh. <laughs> exactly. Whereas with us, they go, oh, right, lads, oh, right, lads, you want some chocolate? Yeah. Here's a cooker cock, no, don't let it go off, I'm hiding. Yeah. Know yeah. what I mean? Sure, sure, But, sure. uh, they better, they better want of, uh, us to win, because it wasn't for us, and we'd have let fascism go in there and, uh, they'd be speaking, Bloody German and Italian all over the place, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. Huh? I think they do. What? They do speak German and Italian. Why? Why? I don't know. They just couldn't be bothered to come up with their own language, and they chose that one, I suppose. Or they chose those. What's the point of being foreign if you don't speak English? I've no idea. I, you'd have to ask them. That's mental. I don't know. What would I do if I went there? You, well, you wouldn't. Why would you go? They don't speak the language. If you're gonna have to choose a language to speak, choose English. English. Even the Dutch, they got their own language, but they don't speak they it. They can't it sounds, with well, it. sounds silly. Yeah. So they speak English. Of course they do. You see, do Dutch people? Yeah. So in Amsterdam, um, with clogs on, they'd be they'd be chatting, chatting in English. In English, yeah. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Oh God, there was a I was there once and there was a there was a mouse. Right. <laughs> just there on the stair. <laughs> right. it, a, it was a little mouse with clogs on. Yeah. Where? Yeah. On there. <laughs> on the stair. stair. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's language. We learned about languages, didn't we? I'm not a linguist, but I pretty much think. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you something I learned in the week. Go on. Yeah. This um, will be one thing. That, he did definitely learned only one thing this week. It's a good one, though. Don't insult Suzanne's hair. I learned two things Go right, on. this week. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, Don't put your trousers on over your head. Because <laughs> I know you're a person yeah. with that for a while. Mercury may look nice, but bad for you. <laughs> Go on. Um, there are more moves on a chessboard than particles in the universe. That puts you off learning it, doesn't it? Well, no, it's a possibility. No, no, they it's said it that is. It is. They said that that's. Yes, that's right. It's a possibility because it's it's basically that it turns towards infinity because no two games are the same. So it's not that you've got to learn that many moves. Uh, it's not that. Good. I don't wish to criticise Rick because I know you were trying to inform him. Then it's a good job you're not a teacher. Because as you gabbled the phrase, it tends towards infinity, yeah. it kind of came out as, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. imagine, if you're, imagine if you're one of those kind of foreign <laughs> students who's gone here to study, and they, you know, sometimes they put, what, the, tape, they put the tape recorder by the, uh, by yeah. the lecturer. Yeah. Listen back to that, really. <laughs> it, it's something towards infinity, I'm not sure. It tends towards infinity. It's talking about tense. <laughs> yeah. I not understand. Cuckoo. 
So, uh, yeah, we've all, we've, we've all had a good time. We've all had a good few We've lives. had a great time. Can I just say to everyone, have a great Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see you like, later. You like, you like the Thorns, you played the Thorns. Love the thorns I think you'll enjoy thorns. this, it's an old track from Hawksley Workman. Brilliant. Bad name, good song. See you next week. James Addiction, Just Because on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We're all here then. Oi oi. About far, five past one, yeah. got two hours to go. I imagine you've got all kinds of treats lined up, really. Well, there's lots of things on the show, great music, you know. Nirvana, Radiohead, The Darkness, to name but three. Can I play you something from Led Zeppelin later? Yeah, please do, and maybe some Neil Young. Oh. Um, now, coming up also on the show, we're continuing a thing we start. We've only got four weeks to go before maybe we either give it all together or go away for a couple of months. Is it four months. weeks or three weeks now? Is it three weeks? Oh, sure. I don't know. I think it's the 16th of August, isn't it? It'll end soon enough. <laughs> wow. Might be that. It'd be a shame to end it forever, but it's all up to Carl. So, uh, again, he's in a grumpy mood. We've tried to try and up his attitude, and it's, it's them, it's the listener that counts, Carl, not us. We may be feeling bad, but you, the listener, count. You come first, yeah? <laughs> okay, up, 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 yeah? Big. Big em up. Big up London. Big up you, the listener. Carl, leave yourself at home for a little while. Yeah? Um, we're gonna continue that thing we started last week. We're doing the list of the most hated people in Britain. And it's not us, it's the listener. So, we're, um, keep coming, yeah. uh, with those suggestions of people you just, uh, obviously, uh, you don't hate them. We don't want a list of mass murderers, dictators, and politicians. You can't have them, but, uh... Ooh, with uh, mass murderers and politicians, what's the difference? Oh, good, good point. Oh, good point. Uh, satire. Satire, yeah. No, <laughs> that, that's, we're, we're doing some jokes like that as well, aren't we? <laughs> satire like we're that. We're trying there, to get onto Radio 4. Trying to get on there, yeah. And, uh... If there's any kind of amusing show that perhaps takes a sideways look at the week's news and yeah. the new, new people. Uh, if there are any Radio 4 producers who, uh, you know, been knocking around for about 12 years with the same old hacks and they're desperately trying to get on Tally, yeah. they want to give us a call. We're not interested. No. No. We've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. yeah, so if people that you hate, um, minor celebrities, people yeah. on TV, pop stars you don't like, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. And we're I'll tell you what, then we do like the Channel 4 do, then we give you the sort of list of the top ten at the end, and you can vote within that top ten. I'll tell you the ones out could in front wire, of- Sorry, could we wire up some kind of premium rate phone line so that we make a fortune? We can't them? afford it, but yeah. if when you email in, if you could also maybe, um, send us a lottery ticket, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, we make something yeah. out of this. The ones in the lead, I'll no, do in no particular order, but these are the ones way out in front at the moment, is Chris Moyles, Robbie Williams, Chris Tarrant, Davina McCall. Interesting. I'm sort of surprised at that, but yeah. I know that it's probably just I over think she's just been on TV too much lately. Been yeah, that t-shirt annoys me, big mother. Sure. That, that annoys me. Um, we don't care. We don't care whether you're pregnant or not. <laughs> Loads of people <laughs> have children. Yeah. I don't care. Get on with it. Um, and, uh, Dominic Mohan. So, uh, there's the, there, I mean, but, Think of your own. There's a lot of people just coming up behind there, though. Graham Norton. He's yeah. just approaching Graham from behind. <laughs> 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 oh, that's the sort of stuff! It's not a lot. We've done satire, we've done it, we've done it. I mean, he's, he's the king of the, uh, <laughs> double anyone... entendre. Well, he's the king of the single entendre, but we can double it up if you want. <laughs> if anyone. 104.9, <laughs> this is the sort of things we're available. Go on. If any I'm loving this. This is gonna be good. I'm loving what's coming next. What? If any of the producers of <laughs> Carry On London are listening and they need some <laughs> new talent to write some smutty innuendo, I think we're Man. Yeah. Um, anyway. Carl, you better press the knob, right, <laughs> to start the record. Spunk. <laughs> Ricky, I know you're a uh, Neil Young fan. Love him. You probably won't have this album. It has basically not been available for years. It's never been available on CD before. It was part of this kind of trilogy of albums he did that were very depressing, and uh, they've just been re-released. This is absolute dynamite. It's uh, On the Beach. On the Beach? Yeah. And that's the opening track, Walk On, Neil Young. Brilliant. Yeah, on XFM 104.9, that's the sort of stuff. You've had satire, you've had a little bit of politics, you've had, uh, we said, we said Spunk, which is a bit naughty, isn't it? Which <laughs> exactly. is great. Cutting Still edge. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And you've had Neil Young and Jane's Addiction, so. I can't think probably of quite anything else I'd rather Down with the kids and everything, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, pretty hip, pretty weird. Yeah, so. Oh, do you know what else? <laughs> I wish Tony Blair would just stop. Oh. Doing what, uh, yeah. Doing stuff wrong. Good, that's good. Who else is there to have a go at? Um. Oh, Peter Mandelson or someone? <laughs> no. No? No, he's good, isn't he? Cause is he? He's, he's good because he's gay, isn't he? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he is. If he's not, then I'm sorry, but if he is, then well done. Brilliant. Good to, uh, all gay people good. Yeah. Um, any underprivileged people, you're all brilliant. But people who are overprivileged, oh. Do you know what I like? Go on. Foreigners. Yeah. All the mad shit they get up to. Oh, what is you it see on the news. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that interesting, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm watching. Yeah. I'm going. What are you doing? <laughs> that for? What are you doing, that boy? It's, it's weird, isn't it? Killing and that. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're watching radio, I'm getting good stuff. 
And good to have fun. Yeah, well, yeah. Euro Disney, that's good. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's the sort of satire and the way we can yeah. kind of tear apart popular culture and just get yeah. to the rain rub it. Um, but, uh, can I just leave with this? My, do you know my favourite country? Africa. <laughs> it is brilliant. Not it's strictly a country, huge. but it is huge. all the countries. Except the bad ones. Remember the bad ones? All the evil ones. Play yeah. record. Oh. Anyone at Radio 4 is listening. Yeah, we would like to get on some <laughs> kind of satire show, please. <laughs> Long view and further on XFM 104.9. Richard Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Trinity. Yeah, going well at the moment. Not bad, not bad. You were just talking about, um, foreigns. Love them. And I'll tell you something, I've been meaning to ask you this for a while, because I know you're a very well-informed man. You're yeah, political and sort of liberal and that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does Chinese work? Well, the language. I can't figure it out. No one knows. <laughs> I can't figure it no out. No one knows. It's like, it's not like any other language. No, it's not. It's, it's not. You know. Either spoken or written down. Well, it's not written down, it's, it's... Well, when it's written down, it basically looks like kind of little children's drawings of those little paper houses that Chinese people live in. Well, that's <laughs> what it is. Loads of, it is, it is, it is and it's little. loads of them, it's hundreds of them from what I can make But I mean, out. even French have a go. It's not, uh, even the French, um, like, write words, but they've got some they're of the right letters. Like and they're going, oh, hello, how are you? And it's exactly. sort of, they're trying to do the words, but yeah. there's just something wrong. I think this, this, this is like a speech impediment, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Germans um, are similar. Yeah, Germans are going, ah, oh, how are you? And they're trying to do the words. They're trying they're to speak just, English, but it's just Chinese. No it. effort. <laughs> it's just, for want of a better word, it's, it sounds, when I listen to Chinese, it sounds like gobbledygook. That is a dialect. I yeah, I that's can't. That's, I think that's the main dialect. That, Mandarin, and Orangutan. <laughs> I but I mean, I uh, uh, that. I can't, but seriously, I mean, I can't. Figure it out. I just, I, there's no, I've got no grasp of how, because it doesn't seem to relate to anything. Wait, there's not real words because there are sentences. Like, you know, we have a word, if we said, um, uh, a gentleman sits by the stream of fish. I've said it often. Yeah. We use all the different words to each one of those words. So we've got a word for each of them. Yeah. yeah. They haven't. They've just got, I think it's like a triangle with a line through it. Right. So, right, which right, can right. get confusing because, you yeah. know. Yeah. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That's just. That's what, I think that's like a, I think that's like a little paper house with a feather on top. <laughs> right, right, um, right. But if we, if we got- Personally, this is what I would love to do. I, I want to use the fact that we're on the radio to answer these questions possibly. Yeah, to, to tell me about other cultures. I would love to speak to a Chinese person. Yeah. A Chinaman. Well, or a Chinaman woman. A Chinaman woman, I thought it's fine. But I'd just like to speak to someone, ideally perhaps, you know, a professor of Chinese. Or someone who uh, works in a chip shop, but someone <laughs> who was actually born in Chinaland. <laughs> someone born in Chinaland. Someone born in Chinaland, a Chinaman or a Chinaman woman, just to talk us through exactly what that was go they're going on about. Exactly. <laughs> and it's not, it's just because I'm very ill-informed. I've only really seen, um, Chinese people in kung fu movies, <laughs> you know. So Chinatown. Chinatown, walking through Chinatown. Hmm. As we've said before. Not really a town. Not really a town. More of a novelty street. More of a novelty street. A slippery yeah. novelty street. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh. Because I remember watching Kung Fu a lot. They always used to speak. They always, they always speak very slowly, don't they? They do. They're very kind of mysterious. Yeah. Inscrutable. They, ne they never really set. They are. They are unscrutable. <laughs> you cannot screw a You Chinaman. cannot screw a Chinaman or a Chinaman. They are unscrutable. They are non-scrutable. Yeah. If yeah. I was to go out in the street now and try and scrute a Chinaman, <laughs> you'd have no chance. <laughs> I would not because they you are could not, You could not screw a Chinaman for love and the money. <laughs> they are anti-scrutable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I could possibly screw a Chinese woman. <laughs> well, I don't think you'd have any scrutable. luck. You've had no. But luck. anyway, if you are. A Chinaman or a Chinaman woman who can just tell us basically how it works. How would you teach us the basics of Chinese if you if we were going to go to China and we wanted to interact? Where would we start? What would be the first words we would say? How would we say them? How would we write them? Please help. <laughs> this is going to run and run. <laughs> What's the number, Carl? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three. See proper normal normal talking there yeah. from Carl Pilkington. Whole lot of love from Led Zeppelin classic. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've not heard much from Carl though, this week. We haven't had, uh, heard much from anyone who can speak Chinese for us either, so uh, we're not that one on the head. I don't, think, I don't think we'll be learning Chinese today, Steve. What annoys me is I'm gonna go out into the world still ignorant. I know, yeah. I, I, the only Chinese I learned was uh, from Benny Hill. <laughs> no, Benny Hill could speak fluent Chinese. Uh, well, I, I, the only ones I know is, um, uh, you silly idiot is Siri area. <laughs> yes. And Bloody Foreigners is 
bloody foreigner. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's, I, I, it's just a matter of, it, 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 it get you by in Peking, but I mean, <laughs> you, you come in, you hit a dialect and you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> your worms meet. Sure. Um, sure. Carl, yeah, we haven't heard a lot about that from you. We've, we've been going here, yeah, we've done a few features already. We've, oh, uh, yeah, talked yeah, about, yeah. um, different parts of the world, different parts of the world. Do you speak any languages? Uh, no, not really. Well, still struggling with English. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Learn a few words. I mean, literally. So, about yeah. 4,000, I think, now, Scott. I've had a lot of emails, actually. People saying, Carl, please don't leave. We don't want to see the show ending. Blah, 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 blah. And we've had what a couple exactly of calls is... bringing back, um, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Mm -hmm. And do you know what Carl said? He said, a bloke on the phone, he said, oh, bring back Cheeky Freak of the Week. He went, we can't. I don't know. I don't know. You know. And, uh, he went, oh, go on. He went, well, no, I had a story today. A, a fella born with two dicks, but sure. I can't do it. Now, Carl, you cannot not do a feature about a fella born with two dicks. Well, we'll look if we need it. I mean, how much more have you got on the Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We've done that. We've nailed Chinese. We've done it. That's done. That's put to bed. Fella with two dicks, please. No, we, we'll, we might get round to it later. But, like I say, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> sort of. We've put, put that on, on hold at the moment. Sure. Right. right. So, uh... What have we got? What, what, what are you what providing then today? Have you got a, a quiz for us? Uh, yeah, we've got what's her name if you want. We've got, uh... We've got what? what? Uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her name? No, don't Is that a new one? Don't know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what girl am I thinking yeah. of? Song's a phrase. We've Song's a phrase. We've got that coming up. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. Monkey yeah. News, I Monkey guess. News is safe, innit? Some Monkey News, that goes mm -hmm. out. I told a bit of Monkey News. I did a photo shoot with the zoo this, um, week, and, uh, one of the people Trying in charge- Trying to make yourself look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they told me that they used to have an orangutan, right? But, uh, it escaped, it worked out, it lifted up a drain, got out the drains and got out up into the zoo. It actually did a what? cold ex type escape, what? right? And, uh, Carl goes, what happened? I said, well, they, they sort of like, they surrounded it and sort of got it back anyway. That's no good though. I mean, it's not monkey news unless it steals a car and goes to Spain. <laughs> exactly, yeah, or opens a small I mean, bistro. that's real. That actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's not real unless it, you know, takes a gun, gets in a mistaken from a president. And, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it runs the country for three years. <laughs> there, was some, there was some more news about London Zoo this week about it. Uh, they're all excited because we've got, a, got an anteater in there. Right. This week. So. Is that good? Is that exciting? No, I think they've had a, an Akafi born. It's got a long nose. It's like a sort of tapir type thing. It's not interested. Have I said to you before about if, <laughs> if an animal is named after what it eats, how interesting is it? <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? <laughs> An anteater is the only one, isn't it? Uh, well, get rid of them. Do you no, know there's, lot, there's lots in there. What other ones are there? Well, there's flycatchers. There's there's lots of animals that are named after what they. Eat, What's there? a flycatcher? That's a bird, isn't it? Hmm. Seems ill-informed. I can't um, think of many beyond anteater. You're talking about because uh, you're talking about zoo though, and I watched I was watching the news last night, and it had um, a feature about Madame Two Swords. Oh and it yeah. Was saying that they they scrapped many of the royal family. Now, I don't mean this, but I've never understood the appeal of Madame Tussauds. I just genuinely, with no irony, I cannot see the appeal of sort of having my photo taken next to a waxwork of J-Lo. I know. I, I, I can't compute why that would be fun. I don't know. What is it? Do they move? Because they don't move, do they? No, they just stand they there. I know. So genuinely, I mean, it's so crowds of people queuing up and people queuing up to have their photo taken with the rules. And the, I the queue would put me off immediately. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just down the road, but isn't it? But so you go home to your friend and go, there's me, I, I, there's me with Kylie. Yeah, it's me not Kylie, is it? Oh, no, it's just funny. a wax effigy. Oh, I thought you yeah. met her. No, 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 it's just a waxwork. Right. It's not even the real person. It, it, I, if you've been to Adventure Swords, if you have any understanding of why the appeal there, email oh, and no, tell me. Well, no let's, let's not diss them because they might melt down um, Ricky Tomlinson one day to do me. <laughs> sure, You yeah. never know, you yeah. know. Uh, or Rick Waller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to put them off. But seriously, I mean, I don't, I'm not- You know, Roy the, Kinnear might be in there. What is make... the appeal? Genuinely, what is the appeal? To walk around a number of- Life but that's the same as lookalikes. When I see it at the back of the stage and it's got like, um, uh, uh, I don't know, Susan Gooding is Caprice. Yeah. And you want to go, what? What do you do with her? Oh, five hundred quid. She comes and stands at your party. Yeah. And people go. She looks a bit like Caprice. Yeah, don't go too close. She yeah. does. Yeah. It's like Caprice over there. No, but it's. <laughs> it looks a bit like. Yeah. There was one in the back of the stage which was so and so is Jordan, 
And it was a woman who was a little buxom girl wearing very little. I thought, buxom! <laughs> <laughs> Are you from the West Country? <laughs> I am. <laughs> but I thought to myself, if you're willing to get your knocks out pretending to be Jordan, <laughs> just get them out and become a page your model. <laughs> Stop pretending to be Jordan. And call yourself after another Middle Eastern country. Yeah. Don't just, yeah, yeah don't just- very odd. I know. God. Very strange. But you've got a look like now, haven't you? Yeah. It's but so it's, odd. But it's a bloke, right, um, <laughs> sort of at his desk, right? In the picture. Uh, in the picture, and it's, it's David Brent. Yeah. And it's got Ricky Gervais. Yeah. <laughs> so- but I don't remember it's just an old fat bloke with a beard. Alright, don't have a go. Alright. Play a record, Carl. I'll leave for that. Radiohead. Yeah? And go to sleep on XFM 104.9. Don't go to sleep, we've got some <laughs> more fun and great tunes coming up. <laughs> Alright? Uh, just to let you know that, uh, we've had a few new entrants on the listener's hate poll. I just noticed Chris Evans is cropping up. Chris Evans has snuck in a couple of times. Um, we've also had Jordan added to the list, along with, uh, Mick Hucknell. I think that's because, Pete, you reminded I people. I know, I know, I mentioned her and- Yeah. Yeah, consequently- Come on, yeah, she's on think. List. Mick Hucknell, and also, this is one I'm, I'm strongly behind, Daniel Beddingfield. If you've yeah, ever but heard I can't him hate him. Oh, if you've heard him interviewed, he's such a knob. Is he? He really is a bit Don't get involved. We see, the good about this is we don't get involved. You're this is true. not, does not reflect, necessarily reflects our opinions. That's, that's there true. are a people, a couple of people that are cropping up that I'm right behind, but I'm not gonna give that away. So don't, don't give your opinion, Steve, okay. because then we're, then our hands Do are you clean. you know who I love? Daniel Ooh. Beddingfield. <laughs> Bloody brilliant. <laughs> you know I think he's a comedy genius? Chris Miles. But let's <laughs> move on, let's not- So anyway, listen, we'll, uh, we'll be giving the top ten of you, the listeners, votes, uh, probably about two o'clock, and then from that list we if, can- If we remember. If we remember. If Carl that... doesn't lose the list. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, from that list we'll probably try and drop the top three, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so quiz time. I know everyone's been looking forward to this. Which quiz is well, it Well, we're gonna week? play along because he's done, uh, Songs of Phrase where he, uh, cuts up, um, uh, bits and pieces from, uh, uh, records. You have to guess the title or the artist. And, uh, makes a well-known phrase, i.e. a phrase that we've said a lot. And, uh, the challenge is that me and Steve have got to try and work out what it is as well before we tell- we will tell you the phrase, but let me just see if I can guess. Play it. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me I know what that is. I didn't hear it. Can you play it one right. time for me? Right. <laughs> I know what that is. Right, it's why don't they play the game of swing ball? Because that's what he said when he turned on and saw people in wheelchairs playing tennis. <laughs> and his point was... Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing ball. <laughs> 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 Oh dear. <laughs> that is so naughty. This show's been a bit naughty, I think. I don't know what's happened to us. I think it's, it's that, like, um, sort of end of term sort of madness. But yeah. I think we've got to calm down here. We've been a bit naughty there. We've we said, you know, bloke with two dicks. We said Chinese people don't talk properly. Which is a little bit... Offensive. Yeah. You know what I mean, Carl? Well, they don't know. Right, okay, let's leave it now. Okay, stop there, Carl. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of XFM or any yeah. other human being. If you think that me and Steve have been offensive, we are strongly behind the guise of irony, satire, and ignorance. Carl only has ignorance yeah. and hate. <laughs> yes. No, 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 but as long as you say something good about someone, you can also say something bad about them. How does that work? Go on, and give us an example. Well, Chinese. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Great people, right? Good. That's the the, the women, bit. women, really good looking as as, as younger people. No! <laughs> what are you older. doing? I'm just, I'm just saying. As long as you, you know, what I mean, there's good and bad and everything. For every well, what are the old ones like? Yeah, they, they, they don't age well. <laughs> what no, do you mean? <gasps> the fellow in Karate Kid, the teacher, was only about thirty six. <laughs> <laughs> we started this. We started this. Oh, oh. fact. Uh, so, song to <laughs> phrase, email in, <laughs> ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, right? I mean, I have to say, Carl, it's very tricky this week. You've got some very obscure sounding songs there. Yeah, just all we want is the artists. Right? I think just the song, Carl, mate. I no, think actually, that's, that's hard. hard. I no, think no, that's hard. hard. Yeah, the artists. Just yeah. the artists, then. Okay, so these are the prizes this week. Well, We've let's, got... let's play it again so they can hear it. Okay. Try and work out all the different artists. Yeah, why don't they play the game of, the swing, game of swing ball? Right. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. <laughs> it is tricky. That is tricky. That is good. But there's some great prizes, um, <laughs> including Carl. I can't help but notice 
torn from the current- well, I think it's today's issue of the Daily Mirror. What, is giving away a it's, giveaway? It's a free CD from the Daily Mirror, which you can buy it if you spend 30p on the mirror, you can get this anyway. <laughs> but it's still in the piece of plastic <laughs> that know, it came yeah. in, I love it's that. It's ripped. Anyway, there are some other treats for Oh, you you'll be loving getting that through the, uh, <laughs> the door. <laughs> so there's a, uh, the jingly jangly sound of summer. Good vibes, a two CD set featuring music from Crowded House, R.E.M., Simon and Garfunkel in the Beach Boys. I'll tell you what, I, I've got I've the thought of another game. We can put Carl's into theory, right? I can- I can tell him a sort of like a- a, a person or, um, you know, a, a people or a place, right? Uh, or a, a profession, and he's got to come up with a good and bad. <laughs> a good and bad thing. This, this, it, it is dicing with death. Yeah. Are we ready to do this? Well, listen, if we're quitting in the next couple of weeks, then who cares? Okay. Um, good and bad, right? Well, hang on, whoa, let me just- tell the, We're on the prizes here. All right, okay. So now 55. I know okay. there's a lot of XFM listeners who are going to be looking forward to the likes of S Club 8 and the Fast Food Rockers. They're all on there. <laughs> I can't wait. What is their second single going to be about? <laughs> the Smashing Pumpkins. This is quite a good little compilation of, um, sort of B-sides and live performances and stuff like that, which is, uh, which is not bad. The best summer holiday album in the world ever. I think we've given that away in the past. All sorts of stuff on there. Plus the director's cut of True Romance on DVD, the, uh, Tarantino scripted- Oh, it's a great film. Tony Scott S directed oh. movie. Oh. So there's some quite good prices. Let's just play it once more. So come. email in Ricky Why the don't UK. they play the game of swing ball? Just, just the artist, yeah. That's all we're after. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing <laughs> Very tricky. Brilliant. Very, very that is brilliant. All right, put the uh, song on. Put the song on now. What? Let's put a song on. Bit of uh, Farrell. Farrell Williams. Yes. Good and bad. Good and bad. Um, old people. Darkness, I believe in a thing called love on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl set the ball rolling with um, songs of phrase. Why don't they play swing ball? Referring, of course, to uh, people in uh, wheelchairs who play tennis because he was disappointed they weren't getting around the court quickly enough. So why didn't they play swing ball? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Someone just emailed in saying because. If they hit it to the top, they won't be able to reach it to unravel it. Exactly. Which is a good point. Yeah. But I mean, nonetheless, good and bad in people in wheelchairs. Do you want to do that? Good and bad. Good and bad things about people in wheelchairs. Um. Good and bad. Yeah. Um. I suppose. I don't know really. They, they take up less room in cinemas. They've got their own seat. <laughs> um. Good. That's good, is it? That's- that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, well done. Well done. That was bad. Uh, dunno, I'll have to think about it. Okay. But, uh, well, let's leave that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you started it. <laughs> the hate list. Can I just return your minds to the hate list? <laughs> I said on the hour that we would give you basically the top five. Now, we have to stress, this is the top five most hated people that you, the XFM listeners, have suggested to us. We have not massaged these. No. We have not made these up. These are coming from you. Last week we began it. This week you've continued to email. So this is the list. We do not endorse this list. Some of them we may agree with, some of them maybe not, but it's the list that you have come up with. We are merely the messengers. I tell you, it was coming through recently. Cameron, but he didn't make the top five. I'm afraid he was just a late- Williams entry. dropped out of the top five. Robbie Williams surprisingly dropped out of the top five. Yeah. Uh, so let me tell you now, in no particular order, this is the top five that you're voting for. Listen well, I say XFM listeners, people who listen to this show. I don't- I mean, XFM listeners aren't typical radio listeners, and I think our listeners aren't typical XFM listeners. Right. So, I don't know what this poll- uh, what it's worth. What no. any poll's worth, but I mean, this one is probably worth very little. In a way, it's sort of worth less. <laughs> yeah, go on, who's the top five in uh, no so particular we, order? We want you, the listener, to then just vote, uh, email in with the one name that you, uh, that you hate the most, and then from this list, out we can, this we can, list, we can yeah. figure out the number one. Okay. But this is in no particular order. Chris Tarrant. Yeah. A surprising entrant. Davina McCall. Well, I don't think- I don't think he's that surprising. Well, anyway, I mean, I'm, these, not gonna, these... I'm not gonna editorial No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm saying I imagine XFM listeners pretty much despise someone like Chris Tarrant. Okay, well anyway, Chris Tarrant's on there, Davina McCall, yeah. Patrick Kilty, right. Graham Norton, right. and Chris Moyles. Now okay. I'm not gonna say anything. Those are the names that you have drawn up. There are lots of others that didn't make the top five. Richard Madeley was on there, Michael Flatley, Vorderman, bizarrely. Michael Flatley's a weird one. Very strange. Um, so Jamie Oliver, a lot of votes for him, but he's not made the top five. So those are the top five, just Emailing with the number one yeah. that you 
Hey, and we're talking about someone another that- Another pointless inane poll. Exactly. And this, then this time we did it. Oh, dear. Moyles, Norton, Kilty, McCall, Tarrant, it's your choice. Who would you have Ricky out of who, who would you have in your list, Carl? You're allowed to talk because you, people know your opinions don't matter. So, what? I, hon I honestly don't really hate anyone. That's, that's that nice. I'm, I'm not that fussed, you know what I mean? We're not talking like so much him. about hate, we're talking about someone that- Yeah, we don't mean someone hate. You can't hate any of these no, people. All they've done was- it was pop and t up on telly. But I think it's people who- uh, as one, um, uh, listener, um, she put it, she sort of- so I think she had some of those, and she said, you know, I don't hate them. These are the people that if they pop on my telly, I have to turn over. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's not- you don't hate them, you- you, you yeah, know- sometimes it's not their fault, it's like Davina, right? I used to quite fancy her. And now, cause she's always on the telly, it's like, oh, I can't be dealing with her now. Sure. Right. But she's still- she's still the same presenter, it's yeah. just that I'm- I'm bored with it. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, I'm not- I'm not getting involved in it. Okay. Do you know okay. what I mean? Don't want to offend anyone. Let me just give the email address. But I mean- uh, Let me just give the email address, I just said it, so look, to walk over okay. it. Okay, I'm gonna do Carl's top thing. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. That's also the email address for your answers to this week's Songs of Phrase. Play it again, Carl, if you would. Go on. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Play the game of swing. <laughs> we just want the artists, is that right? Yeah, that will do. I've, I've got- I've got two that you- you- you don't like. Not, not- not that you hate them, but that you sort of like, don't agree with them. Um, would Liverpudlians be in your list? Probably. What about, um, gay fellas in toilets looking at you? Um, well I think they've sorted that out, so... <laughs> <laughs> One of the prizes this week in Carl's goodie bag features this song. Play it, Carl. Oh, the Monkeys. Pleasant oh Valley Sunday. Oh, God. <laughs> Monkeys, Pleasant Valley Sunday. Brilliant. XFM 104.9, Carl Pilkington. This show is monkey mentioned. heavy, it isn't is it? Indeed. It is monkey heavy. Carl, if you were president, would you sort of make compulsory to maybe have a little, little monkey? Everyone has a little monkey of their own. Little chimps out and out, old age pensioners. It's not a bad little, uh... It's funny, you know, cos there was, um, <laughs> a, s a story the other day, uh, when I was looking for monkey news. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah. There's a story about a couple who, who couldn't have any kids, right? There's something wrong with them, but they really wanted a kid. And they got some, uh, dodgy email address where they could buy a baby online, oh, right? Yeah. It was someone who would have a kid and you could buy it for three grand or something, right? Yeah. So anyway, they got one, they got picked and they're like, brilliant, there's the money. Got the baby and everything, they were loving it. Um, you know, playing with it and stuff. As it got older- Feeding it. <laughs> It got area. <laughs> oh, shut the f- oh, car. Turned out it had been sold a chimp. <laughs> you, you maniac, you stupid mank twat. How Don't talk shit. That is as if that- <laughs> uh, uh, What? Didn't know it was oh, don't <laughs> talk- are you- are you mental? <laughs> you I stupid- that didn't make it into monkey news. I know, yeah. Uh, they- well, that, it's a bit sad though, we don't like to bring- They bring bought- the feature down. Yeah. But and anyway. how long was this into- uh, It got hairier! They're born hairy! <laughs> no, they're, they're not born like humans then develop hair! Cause they go, hold on, we better ch we better get the chimp stuff kicking in now, cause we're in the jungle! School photograph, do I like, hang on a minute. <laughs> it looks a bit weird. <laughs> oh, you are just the- mad, the, the rubbish. Mad, innit? it? Mad, innit? it? <laughs> mad, innit? Imagine, oh God! But Just anyway. imagine if he was in charge. We did put him in charge of the country. Just, terrifying. Wouldn't that be amazing? Let him run the country. Just for a week. Or, or the mayor. What would you do if you were the uh, the president or the oh, Lord Mayor of London or the Prime, Prime Minister? Oh, Carl. I, I wouldn't know. do it. Like he's going to be off of it. It's a hypothetical question, Carl. No, but Su Suzanne was uh, all right. Me, me misses. If you're a new listener, you keep her. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, help her. She was she was watching the news, trying to follow some heavy stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. The weather? What? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I just was like bored and I was reading about that mouse that had an ear on its back and stuff like that. <laughs> so she said, well you take notice of this, should be, you know, you know what Ricky and Steve are like, they, you know, they try to teach you stuff and you don't even want to learn. Mm. <laughs> so to try and get me interested in it, she was like saying what would you do if you're president and stuff. Yeah. And I, I can't be doing with any of it. Hassle. What did you come up with? You must what have- What would your slogan be? What, what would you- what did you come up with? Did you come up with anything? I had a little, um, the design of it, right? I yeah. said I'd, I'd, I'd have like red and blue, <laughs> to sort of 
Do you know what I mean? Both sort of major sides into one. Yeah, yeah. That's well, well that's broken the back of it. That's that's pretty good manifesto so far. Uh, um, anything else? What's on the second page? I had like, uh, KP looks after me. <laughs> that would be the badges, would it? Yeah. That's um, good. I'm a KP nut. Yeah. <laughs> um, KP looks that's, after me. Yeah, brilliant. That's about as far as I went with it. <laughs> What would you do? What about you know policies, transport, um, crime, uh, uh, you know, just just law and order? Um, yeah. How would you? What would you do? How would you deal with crime? What would your initial approach be? Would you introduce guns? Should police carry guns? Nah. No. Yeah. Um, would I have to worry about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, good point. good point. Good no, point. No, what um, I'm saying is that I mean Tony Blair isn't sorting everything out, is he? No, but he has a say in most things. Does he? <laughs> well, go on then. What, what are the problems at the moment? I need sorting out. Well, generally, how would you, how would what's the best way to combat? Would you uh, would you bolster up the prison system? Would you uh, introduce more community service? Would, would you make would you make, make would, would you go harsher for say for say um uh, I don't know uh, uh, drugs? Would you go harsher or? Or less harsh. There's there's pros and cons of both, isn't it? Because of course you ca you can't see to condone it, but some people, you know, you don't want to go through the court system and cost taxpayers thousands of pounds of money for someone. I don't know the difference between smoking a spliff and dealing crack. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You have to all these things. Do you have, to, have I lost you? Yeah, I'd, I'd just think about it for a bit. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You'd think about it for a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Probably ask Suzanne. <laughs> 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 this is amazing. Get her help on it. Yeah. Can now, we what about the foreign situation? Would you uh, would you have supported Bush in his war on, again, on terrorism? Um, you're aware uh, of this war that we had recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I mean, if I was new though, couldn't I just say, look, new slate? Do you know what I mean? Let's start again. Yeah. Right. Of course you can. I'm in charge now. Let's you know. Let's see if we can sort this out. What would you do then? And see what happens. <laughs> just leave Brilliant. It. Just leave Suck it. it and see. Brilliant. Brilliant. This, uh, yeah, this is excellent. Now so this is uh, this is not really your jurisdiction. This is not really your area. But you, I imagine you'd have some powerful friends. You might on, have a say go on, in it. Go on. Yeah. Would you? Uh, what would you do about uh, single sex marriages? Same sex marriages. See, this you... has got ca it's Cameron. I thought Cameron had blown it on Big Brother because they said. Um, you know, what do you think about, um, uh, gay fellas getting married? And he went, I oh, no, in the Bible it says, you know, a man and a woman. And I thought, oh, he's put off a lot of, yeah. I don't mean think many Christians tune into Big Brother, but we know the gays love it. Yeah. They love Big Brother, don't they, the gays? Yeah, so interesting. But, uh, so, uh, what, would know, you, what would your take be on that, same-sex marriages? Um, and then what, having a kid? Well, just to start off with, you well, know. that's alright, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just let them get on with it. It's sure. not affecting anyone else. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right. But it starts getting tricky. Right. When you get a kid. Okay. Go on. Why? Well, it's it's just tricky, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you could be right. I'm not giving any. I mean, you know, uh, we're not. There's no right or wrong it's answer. It's right. If you were in like, if you lived in the jungle, right, with no one else, yeah. right, and you just had these two fellas, right, yeah. looking after you, but. Because you've got no one else looking in on that saying, oh, you're a bit weird, aren't you? Do you sure. know what I mean? But right. as soon as you come so to- So is it, what, what, where the, so where have they got married? Do you think the gay people turn to a bloke because they couldn't get a woman? Um, If it, if you live, if, if there's two fellas go away and they're in the jungle, they go, we're definitely not gonna find a woman here, we might as well bum. That's not how homosexuality starts. People don't- It makes don't, you wonder if- No, no, it doesn't make you wonder. Gays don't go, well I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a woman I fancy yet, I'll try a bit of knob. <laughs> no, 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 but what I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in like a little jungle, right? Yeah. Uh, you how are you brought up? <laughs> Someone just puts you there. <laughs> No, no, what? I don't I know what's going on. I can't be bothered running the country. I can't be bothered running the country. Like, I'm too much trouble for you. KP <laughs> takes care of me. Right, yeah, fair yeah, enough. What okay. I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in a jungle. Yeah. Right. Right. Bro what own. do you mean brought up? Just let him finish. What does he mean brought up, brought up though? Like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell me what you mean by brought up. Just Wolves. Just chimps. What? Right, well there's a good example of what I'm saying to you. Right. Right, what I'm saying is, there's a fella, right, he's brought up in the jungle. <laughs> Shut up, just let him finish. Let him finish! There's no women about, he doesn't know about women, he doesn't understand what women are. Right. Right? But another fella walks in, in the scene. Yeah. And he gets pally with him. 
<laughs> what does he talk about? Then they've both got needs. <laughs> <laughs> this scenario <laughs> is ridiculous. What How has he lived? <laughs> or, or do you know what's his reference I points? I can't be bothered with this. Honestly, Saturday should be, you know, day off and that, not worrying <laughs> me about <laughs> problems. God! Oh! <laughs> oh! God! Oh. KP takes care of me. Oh, dear. Elbow. Fallen Angel on XFM 104.9. So, uh, there we go. Carl is president. He's still, he's still confused, aren't you, Carl? Just a little bit. Just a little bit sort of amazed. Yeah. By the body. Yeah. You're just in awe the, of it, aren't you? Just the way- I'm amazed how two people can buy a baby on the internet for three thousand pounds and not realise it's a chimp till it goes to school. No, 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 but seriously, what we were, d you know, talking about there during Elbow and Fallen Angel, <laughs> uh, we were talking about that I think- Yeah. If you're locked up, well not locked up in a room, you've got a normal life except there's no women in it. Yeah. Right? But how would that happen? What would this point of reference be? How would you bring right, up a on person a can I just ask and you totally- go on. How can infinite monkeys and a typewriter- Right, again, I've told you before, right, that is not- you don't actually have to test that model, it's- it's, um, basically a model for the- th that explains the nature of infinity, okay? Yeah, but... I've told you before, it- mm. it works because of the definition of infinity. There's no- there's nowhere in the world you'll ever be able to get an infinite amount of monkeys and typewriters to com- But anyway, all I'm saying yeah. is, I think if- if you don't know about women, would you crave for a woman, even well, though you, you don't you, know her you, 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 When you hit- Sort of puberty, your hormones will kick in, and you'd you'd start getting urges. But for what? If you don't know about it, you don't have to know about it. You don't, when if you grew up and you started feeling hunger, you wouldn't go and wonder what that is. You'd go get me a sandwich. I'm starving. It's different though. It's different. But I'm not. Um, but but we're not saying weird. it's uh, it's all hardwired or people are you can't change their. Their natural state. We do it all the time. We fight nature all the time with conditioning. That is weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that I, one. I'll tick that. Was... It's weird, isn't it? No, I'll the body is. There was something. Yeah. Did, you, did you read that thing the other week about um... men with two penises? <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't need that. We don't. Need uh, that. Lawyer who got in office realised he was actually an orangutan, <laughs> and they just shaved him, put a suit on him, from Hugo Boss. And the funny thing is, he won the case, and the judge said, "Well, <laughs> don't send him back to j jungle. Let him set off on his own. Budget, wibble, and podge." <laughs> <laughs> You'd make the best judge in the world. No, there's a fella. Here's a banana. There's a fella who um, was in a coma for twenty years. Mm. Just they they kept like taking him t through like the normal day. They take him to Alton Towers and stuff. <laughs> Doesn't know any about anything about it. Just kept going through the motions. Um, don't know if they kept charging him. Um, <laughs> kept putting him through all that. He eventually came out of it. 20 years. And went, stop taking me to Orton Towers, it's shit! <laughs> I, ju I just thought, imagine and how much post stop making, eh? How much post. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did God. you read about that guy in the paper, Carl? He, um, <clears throat> sorry, on the internet. Uh, he, he, in about, I think it was about 1984, 85, he had a terrible car accident. But this went, must be it. He this went into a coma. This is, must be what he's talking about. Well, they didn't take him to Alton's Of course they didn't. But you've got to try and decipher the truth from the conjecture, from the thing that he, he I mean, don't forget, Carl says, uh, realises that he's had a dream. He talks to Zan and goes, that was good, wasn't it, last night we were in the plane? She goes, no, that's a dream. He goes, oh yeah, where's my car for <laughs> You've got to, you know what I mean, I can now decipher what he's actually seen, what he's read. Well, go on, what, what, what did you- Well, I'm assuming it's the same guy. <laughs> Guy in, uh, there was a guy in uh, some small American town, yeah. and he'd had a car crash, and he'd gone into a coma, and his uh, wife had uh, left him. She'd gone on with her life because he'd been in a coma since then, and he had just woken up. Recently. Marriage wasn't working. <laughs> Marriage wasn't working. Uh, he just wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he actually had. She was pregnant at the time, and so now his daughter, his now, his daughter is basically the same age as he was when he went into the coma, and um, oh. he's just started coming around. He's just started making jokes. He says they said, uh, "How do you feel?" He said, "Horny," which I thought was quite witty for a man who'd been in a coma for. Uh, for many years, um, but anyway, yeah. So he's slowly trying to rebuild uh, what life he can. He can. That's what do you make of that, though? Because the thing is that he's missed. Imagine what he's missed, Carl. Imagine the music that he's missed. The Live TV Aid. Programs, missed the Live news. Aid. <laughs> Live Aid. He's missed, he missed uh, the Phil Spice Collins Mills. playing in two continents in one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, oh, frankly, I'd be devastated if I discovered that. Missed Bros. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he doesn't- so he put on ripped jeans and they go, passe. They just have to send him a series of those, uh, <laughs> I love 1986 exactly. programs with Kate Thornton filling him in on what he's Exactly. Doing. Peter Kay reminding him of space hoppers. Yeah, he read remembers about those. talking rubbish. Yeah. So, so, um. So extraordinary though, isn't it, Carl, to think? Mm. No, obviously. So, uh, at he age much? Because he hadn't had any problems or anything, no worries. Well, he probably, wouldn't, he probably wouldn't have. Physiologically, he probably wouldn't have the wear and tear of a 43-year-old right. man. Because he wouldn't have sun, he wouldn't have had sort of nicotine, beer, um... Unless they were just feeding that to him. <laughs> yeah, anyway, to still... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so... You'd feel groggy, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you might feel a bit groggy, yeah. 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 Well, he's not, he's not fully back to normal. I mean, there's no, some kind of residual brain damage. Yeah. But nevertheless, he can form sentences. He's got very, he's got no real memory, so he can't remember a lot of things. It was just when I saw Carl, that. You've been in So, are we, uh, <laughs> giving the answers out for what's in there? Oh, there you go. Now you play a tune. I'm yeah. bored. <laughs> Best Snoop Dogg? Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Snoop Doggy Dogg from 1993. And um, what's my name? Long time ago. <laughs> it was indeed. Ten years ago. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Wilkington. Songs of Phrase. We've had very, very few entries. I really think people aren't interested. They really have just given up. I mean, seriously, that's the one thing. That's the one thing you contributed to this show, Carl, and it's it's the the weak link. It's I the think link. in the chain, the missing link. Oh, do you reckon there is one, Carl? Do you reckon they'll ever find the missing link? Wandering around Manchester. Wait a minute, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the stats then. Let's have the answers if we can. Right. It was uh, well, specials. Play, play it once more. All right. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Special. Yep. Jermaine Jackson. Right, it was, uh, Play the Game of Love. Uh, I think that was Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders. Right, you right. think, but you're not sure. But Louis Armstrong was the, uh, Don't Mean a Thing if it ain't got that swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Queen, Don't Stop Me Now, We're Having a Good Time, and that. We're having a ball. We're having a ball. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, so. considering you yourself weren't entirely clear, I think it's only fair to give it to Paul Brown, who got some of the answers right. Mm -hmm. PB, um, you are getting those prizes. Well, they are on their way to you now. Way to you. Okay, the stats are in for the XFM listener hate list. Um, some interesting results. Go on then. Reverse order. Okay, in fifth place. In fifth place. Interesting. Davina McCall. Yeah, I think that's just. I think that's. Uh, is reflection of being on telly all the time and yeah. that running out of stuff and being a bit over the top and mm. yeah. Fourth position. Yeah. Christopher Tarrant. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's yeah. I wouldn't have thought he's the favourite. There is role a model joint of, go on. second place. Go on. Graham Norton. Yeah. He's alongside in second place. Patrick Kilty, which means Chris Moyles is the winner with an overwhelming vote. And I swear to God, I have not done anything to those stats. Yeah. That is exactly as they've come in off well, the email. We do not give our opinions on this. Do that was the XFM listeners, but, uh, well done. <laughs> Thumbs up, you all win a We're prize. We're gonna play you some nice records because of that, aren't we? <laughs> I reckon they sort of prefer some ads. Either is fine. Yeah. Feeder. Forget about tomorrow. On XFM 104.9. When I was at, um, university, my best mate was a bloke called uh, Wally, and he was doing, um, psychology, and I was doing philosophy, and, um, we both got into this thing, uh, theory called determinism, which is about the, uh, uh state of the mind, and it's a, a materialistic view that, um, everything is part of the causal web, and everything has a, uh, um, a reaction for something that happened before it, and, uh, um, uh, by the way, Carl, do not confuse this with fatalism. <laughs> Determinism is not predictive. It's just that if a brain state happens again, then uh, anyway, the famous Everyone one is uh, yeah. The famous one is um, if you know a butterfly hadn't shaken its wings, Queen Victoria wouldn't have sneezed. Everything's yeah. indiscriminately linked, right? We're thinking that, right? And we're thinking, what if um, you changed one word in like classic songs or one note in Beethoven's Symphony? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. How it just wouldn't work. Well, I've always thought that. Uh, um, Come on, baby, light my fire. Yeah. Not as good. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. Enigmatic, interesting. Not so good. More pedestrian if it was, Come on, baby, light a fire. <laughs> yeah! Just, <laughs> yeah, just one, just one thing wrong. Yeah. That would be great. Just sooner, Paul McCartney comes to John and he goes, All right, John, written a song. 
Because, well, she was just seventeen, well, you know what I mean? The way she looked was way beyond compare. I wouldn't dance with another. <laughs> I'll stop you there. That's, go on. I'll stop you there. What's the matter? Something not quite right with that. I love yeah. the song. It's great. Yeah. Just once more, for Well, us. listen, don't be too harsh, I mean, cause we write our own songs, no, but sure, 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 we can sure. still put both our John, names to it. I think you're a great talent. I think you're a great well, talent. Well, I'm listen, saying... listen, listen, you hippie, right? <laughs> Well, um, not yet. Well, not yet, but sure. I mean, there's a Japanese bird outside looking no, in. No, fancy, I'm not interested. No, no, well, listen, well. well I'll never right? change my view. <laughs> right now, listen, right? I wouldn't dance with another. <laughs> is that bit? Is it that bit that you don't like? Is it the. Thing. I just, just like the. Could you try and just, is there a different well, okay. pitch you could go on? I wouldn't dance with another. <laughs> so again. You don't like the. Is I'm it the just noise? I'm sure the girls are gonna go crazy no. for it when we do that just think, bit. Just, just think of- j Is there anything else you've got? I <laughs> love the idea of just changing one <laughs> yeah, yeah. lyric. <laughs> Radiohead. Well, that was their classic song. Really? Creep. You can't really change that, can you? Burke. What if yeah. they call it <laughs> yeah, Creep? Yeah. I'm a Burke. <laughs> I'm a twat. I'm a not. But don't worry about determinism, ma'am, um, Carl. Just Please. Cause, just cause it says we don't have a, a free will as such. You know, it's more an illusion. It's not the whether we, whether we choose our choices, whether we can choose, you know, uh, to choose our he choices. He knows all this. But don't, but don't, as I say, do not confuse it with fatalism. It is non-predictive and does not change anything. I mean, the moral upshots are frightening because if we have no free will, then are we culpable for our actions? But again, it changes something because you've got to take people out of society that are harm. Carl you know. has often said that. You all right, Carl? Am I still a president? <laughs> Yeah, go on! Yeah. No, no, I'm just- just asking, I'm not- Yeah, what would you do? What would you do about determinism? Change it. I'd have a day off. <laughs> if you were president of America, would you ban guns? It's in the constitution, everyone's allowed to have them. Mm. I don't know, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. <laughs> sure. Imagine all your, your different aides and the Secretary of State and generals coming to you and uh, they come out and they go, what did he say? He goes, he said he's gonna think about it. Again, did he say that again, did he? Yeah. What was he doing? He was on Alan Over looking at monkey news. <laughs> Apparently, uh, a chimp stole a car and drove to France. Ah, uh, no, monkey news. You're talking. Mo I'll tell you what, should we have a great song, then monkey news? It'll be an absolute treat. What about a little we? bit of David Bowie, Sorrow? Uh. Yeah. Didn't write this one, but I mean, he sings it bloody well. <laughs> David Bowie, Sorrow, on XFM 104.9. Nearly there, but you know, we're working our way up to the grand finale. The bit where Carl spouts absolute nonsense from a dodgy source on the internet about a monkey who did something impossible. Let's cue up the jingle. Hang on. All right. Perfect. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> right. Uh, let's have a look. This one's from uh, <sighs> from some woman, right? Yeah. And she's um, she was taking part in the London to Brighton bike ride. Right. Mm. Lovely day. Weather's good and everything. What year? She's uh, just a uh, couple, couple of months ago. Um, she's done all the training. <sighs> Right, done all the training and stuff. Mm. Uh, got a brand new bike for it. Got a little puncher outfit and stuff. All set for the day. Right, it's a nice day. She sets off. They all start pedalling and that on the way to Brighton. Yeah. Right, so she's, she knows the route and that. Got a little headphones on, cycling along. Uh, suddenly. Right. Okay. I'll stop you now. Um, if uh, a cyclist overtakes her <laughs> and it's going really fast and it's sort of hunched over but it's got like lots of cycling gear on and a helmet and goggles and they can't tell what it is but they just know it's a, like a uh, little hairy um, fella um, who hasn't bothered shaving his legs which is weird isn't it because cyclists usually shave their legs and this bloke had really hairy legs but um, and it won they gave it the medal it won three years running they gave it the key to the city uh, it had its own game show and then well, someone said hold on though this fella's all hunched over and he's only three foot five and his arms are longer than his body uh, it's a Chimp! If it goes anywhere near that, we're never doing it again. More monkey news next week. <laughs> <laughs> she's cycling so along. So anyway, she's cycling along, right? And uh, this tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't predict that. <laughs> There's oh. always one element you can never anticipate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got a kiddie's tricycle with a little kid on it. Little hairy kid with a helmet. Okay, just <laughs> go on then. Well, a tricycle comes. Whizzing past, yeah, thing. strong legs in those chimps. So she's thinking that's, but didn't get a chance to see the face. Oh yeah, couldn't quite see the cyclist! <laughs> you, oh god! You bald mank git! 
Go what? on. Yeah, research scientist Carl Pilkington. <laughs> so anyway, she gets to the end line, right? Yeah. And um, they got talking. That's it. It was a nice day, nice race, and all that. <laughs> so did you see? Uh, a little, little thing on a tricycle. Thing? Well, no, no, well, well, a person, surely, just a human. Did you see that- no. Did you see that bloke on the bike tricycle? So anyway, oh, turns tricycle. out- Tricycle? <laughs> yeah! Well, what did you say thing? Well, no, was, well, was, no, no suspicious. I mean, why did you say, did you see that fellow on a tricycle? <laughs> anyway, so it turns out- Go on. It was a chimp. You're joking! <laughs> right? Well, Christ almighty, there you go. <laughs> Unbelievable, and it was a chimp all along. So anyway, right, so the woman's like, um... We're never doing this again. Checking out the news, right? There's n there's nothing on it. She checks out XFM Monkey News. Right, okay, I'll I stop you there again. It. Right? If it turns out she does not the news, right, and the circus goes, we're looking for our <laughs> chimp, it used to ride this tricycle, and it escaped with police chasing <laughs> no, 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 it. No, no, no. So she listened to XFM, see if I had picked up on the story. Yeah, sure. Didn't, I didn't have it and stuff. Um, so she got in touch with the organisers of the London to Brighton bike ride, said, look, saw a little airy fella. Why did she care? Because she wanted to know, she thought it was a bit odd. Well, Turns out it was a chimp, they weren't happy about it. Of course not. Because now the owner of the chimp wants to enter it into the Tour de France. In, uh, in 2005. <laughs> now, a couple of questions. I, I trust you'll be able to answer these. Um, oh, God! How, Steve, help me out. How did it get hold of the tricycle? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. That's, that's, that's not an important know. point. Like, that's important. How What's the matter with you, Steve? He doesn't know that. How did it know <laughs> to... Uh, well, firstly, how did it know which way to cycle, but more importantly, how did it know there was a major bike ride on Follow the, following the crowd, no, Steve. No, What's the matter with you? The owner of it had trained it and so <laughs> far. Oh, no, he hadn't! It had already done the run beforehand, before the big day. No, it hadn't. Um, uh, like I say, it wants to do the Tour de France in 2005. No, it doesn't. Um, but there's something about animal rights. If, if they don't let it enter, you, they can kick up a bit of a fuss. <laughs> It's cruel to make a chimp ride a bicycle! Not, Not if that it's to. prejudice that it'll go, is it because I is hairy? You idiot! Right. So. Wow, that is the worst, that is the worst <laughs> one yet. Absolute twaddle. Absolute rubbish, Carl. Have you got a tricycle? <laughs> Unbelievable. Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers on XFM 104.9. Thanks to uh, Lauren Laverne there for the last few hours. <laughs> Coming up, we have got some great music, Steve. We've got Kings of Leon, as you, you heard. We've got Alba, we've got The Darks, we've got Coldplay, Coral, Rolling Stones, we've got some Springsteen, The Smiths. Do you know what I mean? Do you need any more? And with all that, we've still got Pete Skinner with his wacky weather report. <laughs> Actually, good old Pete, eh? <laughs> nice to have oh. him back. Uh, good to see you. I've got some here uh, brought in. Um, it's, uh, it's just a normal soup. Uh, it's Rooster's Pride. What flavour soup is that, Steve? <laughs> oh, I know it's your brother. And it's all the genuine, it's a genuine article and it's cock soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, can I have a closer look at that? Maybe there's yeah. some more humour I can draw. What, you want, you want a closer look at my co co cock, cock soup? soup. Just cock soup. Cock. Let me just... It says here, delicious, appetising. Oh, Three to it? four servings. Oh! Because oh, you know what I'm thinking of when you're talking about the soup. I was thinking of innuendo. No, I'm just thinking of a man's cock. Penises, yeah. Let me just say. It's the darkness. Um, use Rooster's Pride Cock Soup as a snack with crackers or toast. Still think of a normal knob. <laughs> an appetizer, again. <laughs> or a soup base. That doesn't really work. Doesn't no, it's was spur. That's disappointing. We'll work on that, though. The darkness. Growing on me on XFM 104.9. Going well, innit? I've enjoyed it so far. It's been a bit, oh, a bit naughty and everything. Yeah, a bit, a bit like, smart. Uh, oh. Nothing wrong with that. No. Carl. All right. Have a good day. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. Uh, what mood are you in this week? What mood are trying to assess each week? You know, it's a bit edgy. He's got a red head. What's what's all? You've got a red head all around the side in the front. Mm. What's that? Sunburn? No, no. I think I'm I'm allergic to having my head rubbed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Now, who would rub your head? That sounds a bizarre thing. Your girlfriend? Weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, who's rubbing your head? Well, yeah, but, um, I was squeezing his head, fair enough, and he was screaming in agony, and then he went and made me a cup of coffee, mm. and as he came over, just spilled boiling hot coffee on my legs, I'm all in shorts, and he went, sorry, just like that. Just, it's like, it's like a series of jackass out there this morning. <laughs> it, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I mean, my legs are burnt, your head's a little bit red, mm. but apart from that, having a good day? Not bad. I was on the way in today, right, Steve? Mm-hmm. Uh, walking in? 
walking in, always walking in. I like get left early and stuff. <laughs> I like to get in early, get some bits done and that. Yeah. Uh, Man can use songs of phrase. That sort of thing. And living in London, right, a lot of- there's a lot of shops that open early and stuff, do you know what I mean? People say that's a good thing about London. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like 24 hour city and stuff, yeah. right? I'm walking in and there's like, you know, you've got your news agents open. Obviously. You know, selling newspapers and that, that's yeah. good, they've got to be open early. Yeah. Then you've got your, your coffee shops, your Starbucks, yeah. you have a cup of coffee in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're doing well in the morning. Yeah. Um, then you see like the odd restaurant and you think, well, maybe they sort of got the doors open but they're preparing for lunch, so you think, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I'll right. let that pass. Yeah. Carrying on walking down the road. Bondage shop. <laughs> open. Sure. About yeah. past ten. Yeah. Busy, was it? <laughs> There's a couple in. <laughs> really? Some good offers. <laughs> half past ten for a bondage shop. I'm assuming if you're into bondage though, you you stock up at any time, day or night. I mean, you don't. Yeah. Well, I assume it. I suppose you get up and you go, oh, I've got nothing on. I need to be a bit. Oh, I need to be a bit tied down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need some rope. These clothes are too baggy. I need more yeah. belts. Oh, God. I need more straps. Yeah. Oh, get yeah. some rubber on my face. <laughs> Weird, don't it? <laughs> what were you doing in there? So I'm just having a browse. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, oh. So a bit worried, really, because the things that I've noticed this week, like that, that's probably a little bit smart. You've brought your soup in. I just found it out there. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. It is ro Rooster's Pride, cock soup, noodle soup mix, chicken flavour. Mm. Mm. But I mean, th do they not know that is obviously just going to be used on the Graham Norton show and Chris Tarrant when he's doing his show abroad? Yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? Well, how could they call it cock soup in this day and age? I don't keep saying it. Well, no, it's fine because you don't say cock as long as it means the male. We've done this. Oh, do you mean do you mean a chicken? Yeah, look, it's a picture of a chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. What did you think it meant? No, I don't know. I, I don't know. Oh, my head. okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, there's something else that's a bit sort of a bit blue. A little bit blue, but then it's real as well. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's, that, it's that a problem. It. Go on. There's a program. We couldn't have said the cock soup if we'd made it up, but because it's real. It's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. We also couldn't have said the cock soup if we'd have meant a male. Penis. Thankfully we don't, so. We mean a yeah, little yeah. chicken. Go on. Um <laughs> Yeah, this program was on. On mm. I think it was Wednesday night, something. Mm. Oh, this <laughs> little lad. Mm. Yeah. Um who was a fella and a and a woman. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what what was do it you like mean? A, what, like a cartoon <laughs> with a secret identity. <laughs> by night by yeah. night. <laughs> what do you mean? He had both. By day a boy, by he night had, a yeah, woman. He had it all. Well, had what 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 sorry, I won't. So so he had male and female genitalia. Yeah. So what what do you call someone that's born like that? Weird. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now what's the term for it? Uh, go on. You know it. We've talked about it before. Aphrodite. <laughs> really? So close. Uh, Hermaphrodite. Yeah, hermaphrodite. Uh, yeah. That's weird, don't it? Yeah. And he had uh, he had the ball. Yeah. And he had the... Well, what happened was he was born, right? Obviously. And, uh, and the doctor said, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Have a li lovely little boy and girl. So the mum was like, what? So he said... No, I don't think the doctor was sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, what? I, I don't think the doctor was, um, sort of dissing them. Yeah. Uh, there you go. What do you mean, doctor? Um, have a look. Um, <laughs> there's the cock, there's the minch. <laughs> All right, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you gonna call? Hit. <laughs> uh, but doctor, what do you mean? Have a look. He wasn't sarcastic. He didn't <laughs> give Doctor, clues. Tell me what you mean. Give me a straight answer. He probably went, "Oh shit, she's got a cock." He didn't go. He wasn't sarky to the parents. No, anyway. no, but I'm just getting across. Do you know what I mean? I always had a little bit just to. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. Yeah. You should be a newsreader. Be brilliant. So, uh, so yeah, so there's a little kid lying there. Yeah. And uh, and the and the mum says, you know, what what am I going to do then? So, the doctor. I mean, I'm condensing this. It was like sure. an hour long. Sure. Hour, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so he says, "What will you know?" She said, "What will I do?" And the doctor said, "Well, he's not sort of well hung, right?" <laughs> oh, for f so he's, he's not <coughs> sort of well hung. <laughs> Th this doctor has sense. been, I assume, has been struck off since for saying these things. It was a real doctor. It wasn't Doctor Fox. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, so the doctor said, "So I recommend that we make it a woman." Right. Right. So they sort of do a little bit of jiggery poking. Yeah, a little bit of work. And I that. don't think that's <laughs> true, Carl. No, it is. It was on the program. But I think they can tell, uh, really, what they were 
meant to be from the chromosomes. I can't know. They can tell whether X, Y, Y. Yeah, not just. It's not it's very just, well at home. No, I yeah. tell you what, because back then when this was going yeah, on, yeah, no, right, I'm just thinking they might not have had to. The, the doctors then thought if you had a kid, right, and you thought it's a bit ugly, maybe it'll have a better life if it was a a fella. If it was a girl, and it's a bit ugly, and you think it's going to get hard time. Right? Don't talk shite. What? 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 That a doctor would go? <laughs> right? You've had you've had a you've had a young girl. I tell you what, she's a pig. Let's pop a cock on her. <laughs> Don't no, no, talk no, I'm not shite. Saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. What <gasps> I'm saying is, say if you have a uh, like I say, a girl. I, I just think it's harder if a girl's ugly and yeah. she's growing up. Yeah. She has a harder time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you agree with that? Possibly, yeah, but, but you don't, but change, don't change someone change, when they-, they don't, when, don't, when, no, yeah. You don't change their gender no, because no, no, they're just saying the what, what I'm saying is the elephant man would have had a harder time if it was elephant woman. <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> but listen to me, listen, listen. What the doctor was saying is, if you get a baby before it's two- Yeah. Back then they thought you could sort of say, well give it- instead of giving it a go-kart, give it dolls to play with. Right, back when? What are we talking about? The Middle Ages? We put a song on, come back to the- Yeah, it's oh. Bruce Springsteen, Atlantic City. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, Atlantic City, on XFM 104.9. Okay, look, have another go, Carl. What were you saying? As a, an hermaphrodite, yeah, he was born both sets. The doctor said he's not well hung, let's lose that. Let's get rid of that. Let's make, make it, it into woman. a girl. Okay. I'm with you so far, go on then. So, anyway, gets away with it a little bit in the, in the early years. Right. right. Starts going to school, Ooh. gets away with it a little bit. Sure. Right. But then, do you know when you get to that age and your head goes all funny? Like when you, when you're a teenager and you, you sort of, you, I don't know, your school goes. Mine never did. What are you talking about? No. That's what sort of teenage, your head goes teenage all funny? years when you look a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? You go from being quite a good looking person and then you, your body starts growing. At a different rate, so, right. you, yeah, you, don't, so you never know where, you never know till 21 whether you're gonna be a looker or not, or whether yeah, it's just- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know, right. go on. Yeah, I'm still waiting. So, uh- Your head grew outwards at exactly the same rate, didn't it? That's why it's so Your head grew faster than your hair. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lovely head of hair, exactly. but just, just below the skull. Yeah. He's got a little afro in there, yeah. but it just couldn't get through the follicles. It couldn't catch up the skull. <laughs> <laughs> Expanding. Oh, bless him. Oh, come on, come on, Baldy. But the thing is, right, <laughs> so you see these pictures of the lad stroke woman yeah. who's trying to be a woman at the age of 14, 15. Sure. Yeah. She's got one of them big heads. Right. Like right, okay. a lad. Um, <sighs> doesn't, you know, she starts having a hard time. She doesn't want to play with her mates, with the dolls and all that. She's more into go-karting and that sort of sure. thing. <clears throat> um, gets to an older age. Yeah. Decides to go back. Is now sort of with a woman and having a life of a fella. But did he put, have it, put, did the doctor keep it for him in case he needed it? No, he's had his own one put on though. Has he? Where did he get that from? Don't know. Don't know, maybe that bondage shop. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do when they do that? Do they put on a, what do they do? Maybe someone could call in and tell us. If you're a woman, <laughs> and you have a- Do you want to speak to someone who's got that information? Yeah, I do want to know. What, do they, do if they you've got that information, I don't want to talk to Do them. they construct one? Do they construct it? From plasticine. Or do they whack on a dead one? What? What? Whack on a dead one? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? That's not, it's not, what do you mean? No. When a, when a woman has a knob put on. Yeah. To have a sex change, where do they get it from? That, is it constructed? Do they find like, I don't from know. A donut. A, a, a donut? <laughs> from a donor. Oh, well, yeah. A donor? A what? donor, yeah. Yeah, but presumably it's like Maybe a, there's someone well, who wants to become- dead, I mean. No, I thought maybe there's- It's not like giving someone a kidney and then sort well, of like celebrating with them. Maybe if you're them. a guy and you want to become a woman, you've That's got one to spare. That's true. Yeah. But a swap? Yeah, just yeah. do a little swap, probably on the internet or something. Or no lemons. <laughs> what do you mean? What, on what? swap shop. He's not a man. No, no, but he could go, uh, we got a, a, lo a fella here who, uh, got a lovely, uh, nearly new, uh, unused piece. Yes. Uh, <laughs> wants, yeah, Keith Chegwin out wants, in kind of Bogner Regis. Wants a couple of tits and a fanny for that, so, uh, <laughs> call in. Uh, it, it reminds me of the, um, do you remember the Jane, the John Wayne Bobbitt? story, which yeah. I, it's always seemed odd to me. I never really kind of got all the information. Do you remember that one, Carl, where the woman cut off mm. her husband's penis because he was sleeping? Or something. He, I think she mean, she, ra she drove off. I and think she woke up woods. quite quickly. She yeah, she <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, that's, that's so much better than the, the alarm clock. Yeah. yeah. And she threw it off. She threw, she threw it out, out of the, the car into the woods yeah. and he went and found it. Yeah. But imagine if he'd got to the hospital and sewn it, they'd sewn it back and he'd gone, that's bigger than I remember. <laughs> that's, I'm that's not sure this mine. is mine. How many of you cut us where we dump all the knobs? <laughs> we dump all that's the knobs where, right there. Yeah. 
Well, oh, that, that oh. was an extraordinary story. And then, bizarrely, he became a porn star. Yeah. Yeah. Very strange life that man's had. Well, it is a bit of a shock to the system, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Oh, cutting your knob off. I know. I know. Do, do you remember that, um, French bloke, the performance artist of, the, like, 1910? Do you remember him? No, uh, no. He, uh, as a performance art, he cut his, he had a, in a theatre, he cut his knob off to a crowd of people. Now, what? That's, yeah. That's only a one night trick though, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But what if there'd have been a bang <laughs> outside? He went they encore. He went, what? Yeah. Or they looked outside because <laughs> a, a car backfired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you see that? I go, what? I go, oh, for <laughs> just cut the, <laughs> did ya? Yeah. Mm. Think of that. Sacre bleu. I uh, know. French are funny, aren't they? Cutting your knob off for, for your art. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Long view. Further on XFM 104.9. As we're having so much fun with penises, yeah. I thought perhaps I should just uh, mention. That's a, that's a slogan. <laughs> we should uh, just mention this story briefly. It's in the paper today. A Russian is selling what he claims is Hitler's mummified penis for twelve thousand pounds. Yeah. Uh, Ivan Zadurprov says his ex Red Army soldier dad hacked it off as a souvenir after storming the tyrant's Berlin bunker after his suicide in 1945. Yeah. Mm. Not. You why, why, did, why did he wait till now? To yeah. He's found out that, uh, yeah, it, that might that might get a bit of like, 12,000 12, pounds. pounds. It doesn't yeah. seem a great deal. It doesn't seem a great deal of money, really. Well, it's useless, isn't it? <laughs> True. You're not going to be able to use it. It's not no. going to be able to. It's not going to be a donor. Imagine that, if you walk round. <laughs> yeah. You'll never <laughs> be- making love to a girl. You'll never believe who this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll never believe who's doing you, yeah, love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is gonna freak you out. <laughs> this is, yeah. Just relax. Exactly. Okay, sit down now. Was that oh, right? It you. was brilliant, it was brilliant, yeah? So you enjoyed it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, are Did you, you know a fan <laughs> of the Third Reich? <laughs> exactly. Well, no, awful racist. Okay, okay, let's go a different tack. <laughs> yeah. Um, you did like the sex. I love the sex. Okay then. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be Hitler's knob, is it? But um, I like the idea that, I mean, you're a, you're a ex red, you're in the Red Army. Yeah. You've just stormed Berlin. Yeah. 1945. You crash into you've the. You've gone bunker. through. You've gone through terrible, how? terrible. terrible. Work, how you've lost 20 million comrades. It's unbelievable. Oh, uh, oppression it's everywhere. Been going on for years. You're in there. You see the man. Stormy, the, he's, yeah, here he is. He's dead. He's dead. He's oh. The figurehead and leader of one of the most despicable. He, you know, you turn to your friends, there's a tear in your eye. Yeah. And your immediate thought is, <laughs> I ought to chop off his todger. Yeah. 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 Well, no, I said Bagsy. I, I said Bagsy's, Bagsy's wink winkle. I said Bagsy's winkle outside. <laughs> Whoever it was. Yeah, you know, I didn't know it was gonna be Hitler. Brilliant. It's just, I, I can't, it just doesn't make sense. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. And I don't know how, how is he expecting to prove this? Because I want some proof. Well, this, I think that's why he said that. Um, he probably started off with, uh, Oh, I've got Hitler's face. <laughs> and they went, brilliant. Oh, let's have a look at it. What do you mean, let's have a look? Well, just check Hitler's face. So obviously, I know what he looks like. Oh, yeah. No, it's not. Ah, oh, yeah, you know what he. No, it's not his face. What, what, what wouldn't you know what it looked like? Well, I mean, no one's ever seen his genitals. That's what I've got. Yeah. I've got his. I've got his. It's got no. a little swastik on it. Is that. Is little, that proof, is it? Yeah. Little have you got his ball? Well, no, the Albert Hall's got one. His mother's got the other, so I don't know. See, the Albert Hall, I would have thought, would probably be paying that 12,000 pounds, because apparently they've, they've already got his ball. Yeah, they've got one of his balls. They've got one of his balls in yeah, the Albert Hall. His mother's got the other. Yeah. But if they got the, the Todd's If they wrong, can track down the one his mother's got, they would have a complete set of Hitler's. I'm just hoping it doesn't fall into the hands of some kind of crazed genetic scientist. What, I could clone it from his mouth? could clone a Hitler. Back to, oh, I, I don't even want to think about the future if that's the sort of way we're going. <laughs> exactly. If that's the sort of way we're going, Carl, <laughs> I'd rather not know about it. What Carl, do you make of it, Carl? Weird, isn't it? It is weird. I mean, I don't want to go on for this too long. We've probably got about a minute left for the first half hour, and I reckon should can this sort of. What, 30 talk minutes about. of genital talk? Go on, just, just quickly. On a there's there's, there's go on. one in a museum. I think it's like that London museum. What? One what? Well, do you know like how people are buying weird stuff and that to put in museums? Yeah. There's this device that, <laughs> but, I mean, think about it, years and years ago they used to torture people, didn't they? Yeah. Really badly. Mm. And the device well, yeah, that they've got- there's no real good torture, but go on, I see your point. Yeah, but this, this device, right, think about it, you've done something really bad years ago. Yeah. Right, and you're thinking, oh, what are they gonna do? Do you know what I mean? Could they do anything here, this, this could be the end for me. The device they've got is this thing that you put on your, uh, your bits, as a fella, <laughs> and it's sort of metal, <laughs> so it means you can't sort of, you know, get excited. <laughs> it puts a stop to you, sort of. That wasn't a torture device. I think it was a Victorian thing to stop um, adolescent boys wanking. They used to have things like wrist things as well with like spikes on them. It's not a torture device, is it not? Well, not really. 
Is it, imagine that being captured by no, a right. You're never going to hard on again. All right. It, not really a torch device, is it? Well, there wasn't that many nice-looking women wandering about anyway about them, was there? <laughs> didn't, <laughs> didn't get excited about stuff. What are you talking about? Well, they're filthy, they're stunk and everything back then. What do you mean? Call you all of it? All right, we've covered that. <laughs> no more of that talk now, <laughs> right? Let's uh, move on. Filthiest, all Victorian women, <laughs> filthy uh, and stinky. Yeah. Oh dear. Bit of Rolling Stones yeah, and set up the old songs of phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stones, Beast of Burden. We've not played it before. It's an absolute jam. The Rolling Stones, Beast of Burden. Can I just take this opportunity, Rick, to uh, to say to um, Sir Mick Jagger, yeah. happy 60th birthday this year, uh, Mick. Is happy you... 60th birthday this year. Yeah. Was it today? I don't, no, I don't know. Well, it's otherwise you'd be saying happy birthday to everyone every day. Every no, no, year. no, 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 no. Because I don't know Mick Jagger, do I? So I'm just taking the opportunity in case he happens to be listening today to wish him a 60th, happy 60th, or someone who knows him. Might what, be about what about Brian Ferry? What about Brian Ferry? How's Brian? Right. Well, well, I mean, he's he's not, he's he's he's, he's got a really birthday this Brian year. Ferry. I'm not going to wish Brian Ferry a birthday. Oh, happy happy birthday, birthday, Brian. Well, silence is easy. Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. Right, it's the uh, it's the quiz of the week. If you want to go out and do some shopping, <laughs> this is probably a good time. We can come back again for about quarter past. But so. don't forget, um, w what I will say is even though these clues, uh, we're gonna do songs of phrase, by the way, where, uh, Carl picks out a phrase that he might have said once, mm. uh, <laughs> tries to find words from songs to put it together, you've got to guess as many as you can, song or artist, I can't remember. Um, but even though you might look at it and go, that's mental, I don't know any of them, you might win if you get two, right? I mean, I think the winner last week got about three out of three well, or seven. I have seven. to be honest with you, I mean, last week, I mean, Rockbusters, surprisingly, was a very, very popular quiz. Yeah. It just happened to be po awful. Yeah. This one is pitiful. I mean, it's truly atrocious. Yeah. And it really doesn't even have a fan base. I mean, there's no one championing this one, Carl. Last week, seriously, mate, I got about oh, seven- Oh, Carl's face! Seven or eight that, replies. That, is, that oh, God, that's terrible. That was like when you told a kid that you couldn't afford a Christmas present this year. Look at his face! Yeah, it is a bit distraught. Carl, it's, it's, it's like Chris Evans' face when they said they were cancelling girls and boys. <laughs> it's like, well, but I, can, I can come up with great TV game shows <laughs> like that. No, you can't, Chris. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, his little glasses slid down his yeah. nose. I'm the guy who don't forget your toothbrush. Yeah. What was that money you owe me? No, you owe us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> believe it. All right. So. Well, I just play it to you and whatever, you, Carl. Try and work out what phrases. Um, so it's a phrase that might have once been uttered on this show. It was said last week. Oh right. All right. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Here you go. I know you're just sixteen, but look at all of who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I right, right. I know what that is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what was right? it? What it is, is it's something like, right, <laughs> you're only 16, but you look 26, and the Chinese look older than they are or something, because he said that, the Chinese don't age well. That is mental, Carl. <laughs> it's the most convoluted, ridiculous, racist <laughs> piece of material ever to be uttered on radio. Play it again. <laughs> I know you're just 16, but look at all of 21. That's Look, older. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're just 16, and look at all of 21. That's because the Chinese look older. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, there you go, the well-known phrase, <laughs> you're, uh, you're 16, looking all of 21, that's because the Chinese look older. Well-known phrase there, sweeping the nation. <laughs> that's, uh, that'll be up there with was up, um, and shut that door. <laughs> if they do a poll, right. <laughs> um, okay, play it once more, we're after, we're after the artists. Just yeah. the artists. Yeah. I know you're just 16, but look at all of 21. That's... Uh, Alright, let me tell you what the uh, prizes oh. are. We've got, uh, I assume this is the new album from Mower. <laughs> um, everyone's going crazy for Mower. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard people stop talking about Mower. 
<laughs> but, uh, there it is. We've got the new album from the Webb Brothers, um, which might be quite good, uh, the Polyphonic Spree album. The best dance album in the world ever, which is ideal, perhaps, if you're having a barbecue and you've got lots of eight-year-old children <laughs> coming. <laughs> the Polyphonic Spree, I look at them and I think, well, you know, they're a pretty good band. But, um, if that album sounds like a million, you're gonna make about 40 quid each. I know, it's extraordinary. Well, it's, I mean... They're the sort of indie equivalent of the So Solid crew. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna make any money. The manager's getting That's 20%. Exactly, yeah. And, um, also on DVD, uh, Red Dwarf Series 1. So, um, some absolutely barnstorming places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you can identify what artist to use in this well-known racist phrase, <laughs> that's because the Chinese look older. Play it once more, Phil. One more time. I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's... Ricky God. Dot Gervais this at is sfm.co.uk. Player record, this is Radio. <laughs> Radio. Panic, the Smiths, on XFM 104.9. Well, we've got the, we've done the first half hour, which is now mainly genital related. <laughs> then we've kicked in with, uh, some racism. <laughs> uh, you have to well, guess what artist. It seems appropriate yeah. at this juncture just to mention something that's in the paper today. Uh, Dominic Mohan, I know you're a big fan, and as yeah. am I. He, uh, is just writing about the demise of Radio 1, or as he, as he perceives it, and talking about the Radio 1 breakfast show, and apparently it's lost lots of listeners, and he says, uh, talking of the BBC, it must act swiftly to replace Sarah Cox and look to exciting and inspirational figures like Jonathan Ross, Anne and Deck, Johnny Vaughan, or Ricky Gervais to try and save Radio 1. He's right. I mean, He's right. Has he ever heard this show? <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about? All those other acts, they're dynamite. I can't genuinely, I... <laughs> that's someone who said I quite like Ricky Gervais show, but he's never, he can't have listened. I mean, uh, can you imagine what we just played? Or in fact, can you imagine the last 50 minutes on Radio 1, on The Breakfast Show? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could, we could pre-record it though, so I wouldn't have to get up early. <laughs> sure. That's not your point, is it? <laughs> that's not really no, it. No, your point is the quality of what we're doing, <laughs> exactly. not well, how early it is. Sure, sure. <laughs> get it, get it, get it, What yeah. would you provide though, Ricky? Do you think if you went to Radio 1, what sort of, cause I mean obviously- Wank, wank, oops. <laughs> I can do all that. Because I'm uh, obviously our, um, our time at uh, XFM is gonna basically- we're I'd be- empty, I'd be the furry shreddy. Right. Yeah, so, so I'd get that. Uh, would you have some wacky catchphrases? I think I would. You'd bring back Holy Fook, presumably. Holy Fook, yeah. Oh, ding dong. <laughs> oh, hello. It's my little Chinese neighbour. Hello. What's your name? My name is Holy Fook. Oh, hello. <laughs> Oh, he lives just going, oh, I don't know why you didn't even do the Chinese accent that time. <laughs> well, that'd be racist. Okay, sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. it's just his name's Holy Fuck, and there's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong or funny about that. Nothing so, yeah, you'd have that, you'd have, you'd you'd have crazy that. comedy characters, you'd probably have some wacky quizzes. Yeah. Oh! Oh, look, he's dirty old queer. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> uh, now, I've not, he's a new character to me, <laughs> I'm quite excited, he sounds very modern <laughs> and contemporary. <laughs> yeah. A new spin <laughs> yeah. on, uh, yeah. on an old idea. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit more. Oh, wow, um, mm, he's an actor, isn't he? And, right. he, uh, and he likes to, uh, <laughs> take it up. Oh, right, well, that's just, um, if anyone from Radio 1 is listening, and yeah. they've, uh, they've listened to Dominic Mohan in the paper, they thought, yes, you're right, we need some new blood at Radio 1. Ricky Gervais, he's got a myriad of comedy characters. Yeah. Whack, whack, oops. I can do <laughs> sound effects. <laughs> you can do sound effects. So. You could probably do funny voices like Chris Moyles, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Not as good, but I, I mean, I can- What I'm, about <laughs> comedy songs like Moyles? Again, not as good, but I mean- Do you uh, remember it, when Moyles rather hilariously <laughs> changed the words of This Is My Moment by Martin McCutcheon to This Is My Motor? <laughs> we listened to it oh, though, didn't we? unbelievable. <laughs> I remember when he was doing a competition, this was pathetic, wasn't it? We were listening to, uh, uh Radio 1 once on our site, and uh, I don't know why, we just wanted to, uh, I think it was research, wasn't it, for the office? Yeah. And, um, he was doing this, uh, he had to phone in with- We were um, listening to idiots and- <laughs> No, no, no I'm not saying that. Um, and he was doing this competition, you had to call in with, um, some, uh, songs that are golf related. And people were throwing up going, uh, uh, drive the cars. He was going, drive the cars, good. And I was on that phone, I must have wasted about 40 quid, and I wanted to get through and go, hello, Chris, it's not Miles, he, Miles, he, yeah. It's Derek here, Derek here, I've got one, got one. Oh, go on then, Derek, what is it? Um, something like Spandau Ballet with golfy, golfy, golf cart and that. <laughs> and I just wanted to, <laughs> and I waited. And just, uh, I thought yeah. the joke's on us. Yeah. I wasted my phone bill just to say something stupid. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh. This show's better than this. Yeah, anyway, if you've got any hilarious Yes, <laughs> golf related song <laughs> titles that you'd What's like the to number? email in. What's the number? Oh, I'd like to email in. <laughs> Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, what uh, would a song title be if perhaps we were doing something about, I don't know, air travel? 
Yeah. If you've got any crazy ideas, email in. We'd love to hear them. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a thought of another golf one. Okay. You know Duran Duran? Mm. Um, summit down the fairway or something, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the girls on the putting green. Yeah. Or All right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, have, have you introduced it? Mm. My name's Holy Fuck. My, I'm the old queer. <laughs> I could do all that. Ding dong. Whack whack. Oops. <laughs> Elbow. Fallen angel. See, they're the odd one out, you see, because because of what they're like and who they are and how successful they are, I can imagine saying, will you please welcome to the stage, Elbow. Indeed. But yeah. I wouldn't have. I'd have, on paper, I'd have thought that was a... A terrible band name. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. There are exceptions to the rule. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Boomtown Rats. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'd have thought that was a. Yeah. I, mean, I think it is a bad name. It is a bad name. But you can't imagine it yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a uh, bad name. So call in if you've got email addresses and <laughs> let's call in with funny <laughs> observations <laughs> on life and shit. <laughs> 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 well, it's going yeah, well. Isn't it? it's, it's, what, that's uh, halfway through. Well, 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 it's it's what do you think? Yeah, it's been all right. It's been all right. Yeah. We've, uh, we've covered a lot of bases. We haven't, um, we haven't taught, taught them anything. Not taught them anything? Mm. No, I think that, I well, think... we told them to tune into a different station. <laughs> yeah, but... I think Heart One and Six Point Two is probably picking up a few, few of our listeners as we speak. Yeah. Who's on at the moment? Don't know. Doesn't matter on there, does it? They just sort of don't slag them off. No, I'm not slagging them off. I'm just saying I don't think you, you tune in because you want to hear Simply Red and that, don't you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, they play other great stuff as well. <laughs> Magic is the one that I love because I only <laughs> ever listen to it in a cab. Yeah. If I'm in a mini cab. Good, that's, that, that's good. That is a good station. But Magic station. is dynamite. But it, I know yeah. for Magic, the DJs have got like five hour shifts. It's yeah. incredible. They're all- And, the, and they do read their own news. I know. It's like, <laughs> they've, it's like they've cut out any expenditure on that channel. Yeah. It's just <laughs> yeah. some old records. Yeah. And one guy has to go on for five hours, read his own news, his own travel. It's they, there's nothing else. I saw a bloke, I know a bloke struggling once. He sort of wants to be a bit of a sort of comedian. And, uh, he does one link. It's sort of one, Sort of fifteen second link between each record because it goes that's Celine Dion. Uh, there's a story in the uh, paper again that um, people were late for work uh, on the underground because there was leaves on the track. Just wondering if uh, leaves are ever late for work because there's people on the track. <laughs> it's simply red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. I swear that he's got to come up with them <laughs> for like five yeah, yeah. hours. He's been <laughs> sweating. Uh, before I was going, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. Uh, I was just thinking this, thing in this story about, um, uh, war on Iraq. I imagine if, I can't do this anymore. I can't imagine <laughs> if, if, uh, if humans become extinct. With leaves. The dinosaurs <laughs> would kill Iraq. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, <God>. God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Carl's face when I said that. <laughs> the <laughs> man moth. Yeah. They've cloned a man moth. No, but that's that's the sort of thing I think we need now, right? We've covered a lot of stuff. What education? What teaching, yeah. Well, okay. Um, what what do you want to know? Uh, don't know. Have you I got just, something? Can uh, you educate us on anything? I've been reading. Bits so could we bring back just for one one for one night only, educating Ricky? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, do you think it warrants that? I don't. I don't know enough about it. Do you know what I mean? About what? It sounds perfect. Play the jingle. <laughs> 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 Oh, educating Ricky. He's getting smarter. <laughs> Couple of things happened in the week that I read about. Okay. Keeping up on what's going on in that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one was about, about that Galileo fella. Okay. Uh, was it about 1636? <laughs> 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 oh! Was it? Was it? I think it might it have been earlier. Go on. Did some stuff with light and that. He, uh, yeah, he did lots of physical experiments, yeah. Is that it then, Carl, is it? He did, he did some stuff of, with light and that. What did he do with light? What was that? Well, he did, he, well, he, uh, I think he invented the first... Telescope? Uh, yeah, telescope. So, I, I, I think it's a particular lens, though, that, that, um, and, uh, he did experiments where he dropped two, um, famously, two different, uh, weighted, uh, balls from pizza, pizza, and, uh, they hit the ground at the same time, showing that it doesn't matter, the weight doesn't matter, but air resistance does and stuff like that. I think he probably explained it a bit better than that. Yeah, but I'm talking to Carl. Sure. But d d did they need to know He's stuff- He's just thinking about pizza. <laughs> yeah. Did they need to know stuff like that back then? What do you mean, did they need to know stuff like that? It's just, it's just- There weren't people going around going, I've got to drop these two things off the Leaning Tower of Pizza, I, I just don't know which one's gonna land first. Yeah, I need to know. Why do you need to Bring know me that? Bring Galileo. <laughs> yeah. It's for a bet. <laughs> yeah. No, but if I was knocking about then, I'd be like, stop messing with that. We need a telly. Oh. <laughs> 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 
I bet he thinks the Flintstones is real. I know. Like, that'd be brilliant. That's what I'd do if I was a caveman. I'd make a telly out of rock. <laughs> yeah. And a pelican and a, and a cement that I mixer. Ran along the room with. Ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we need a car. Yeah. Well, we haven't really got the internal combustion engine. Can you stick your feet through the bottom? <laughs> yeah, just get me a car for Christ's sake. Anyway, so I learned that. And yeah. then, um. What? <laughs> he learned his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other people I know the name of this week. Oh, if a chimp could watch telly. Go on, Carl, go on. And there was also a fella in the week who said, uh, that women shouldn't be wearing trousers. Why? Because they don't look good in them. Right, and um, who is this man and, and from what French year? French fella, French fella. <laughs> uh, last week. Did he mean walk around naked? He just said, um, women should wear skirts rather than trousers because no woman looks good in a pair of pants. Right. How old was he? Uh, it was probably about sixty-seven. Uh-huh. About that, sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wasn't happy with that. What do you think? What do you think about that? It's rubbish. Yeah. These are the only things <laughs> that have caught your eye over the last couple of weeks. This is the entire news. Galileo did something with light. A French fella said women shouldn't wear trousers. See, that, that to me wouldn't pass as education. <laughs> it's not education. <laughs> I don't know where you could ever use that. I don't know when that would ever be applicable to I life. Ju I just like reading stuff that sort of reminds me of, do you know what I mean? If I read it and it gets me thinking, I think that's, that's a good little piece. But, but I mean, uh, but surely me, um, sh can't you just sort of like sit near something that vibrates to keep your brain going? Or shake your head every now and again? I mean, what, what does this do? You mean it makes you start using your brain? But what aspect of the, a Frenchman said women shouldn't wear trousers got your mind working? What questions were you because asking? Because I thought that's, that? that's a bit, that's a bit daft, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Okay, it ends there with me. <laughs> there's nothing else, there's nowhere else for me to go on that. He Your mind's still worrying. Yeah, go on, what do you think? Let's go through this. Oh, I wish we could download his I thoughts. Know, I Just know. watch it. Yeah. Uh, uh, wouldn't it be great, like a DVD? A like, like a added, imagine that, uh, extra footage on the office DVD. Yeah, Carl's oh, brain. That would be with amazing. A oh, well, with a commentary. Is. Go on. Women wearing, wearing trousers and that, right? <laughs> on the estate that I grew up in. Yeah. Mm, on, on, right? Uh, there's a woman about four houses down. <laughs> right, right. Rough. She, she's the <laughs> she one She was, or the estate? She was, right. <laughs> yeah. She's the one whose kid took a horse into her house. Yes. Right. right. Now, we won't go over that again. No. If yeah. you're a new listener, I think we covered. I think they get That's the idea. That's all you need to know. Right. Yeah. Now, she used to wear leggings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're a bad idea. <laughs> they are a terrible idea. I agree with you there, Carl. If you're a lady of what the colour? normal were, persuasion. Were they, were they, they were pink? No, they were sort of black, but with all bits on them. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? What, yeah. toast and just bits. horse droppings. Yeah, go on, yeah. And she used to, um, she's quite a big woman. Sure. Pauline Quirk, I think, yeah. described well, her as. Looked like a light bulb. Which it is those kind of women that are attracted to leggings. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. They are drawn to them like a moth. <laughs> 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 yeah. She yeah. used to wear them, and, and, and that's what I remember when I read this piece. And <laughs> uh, she used to work on one of those sex line things. Right. Right. She used to do that. But <laughs> what was she an engineer? <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing. The weird thing with her was, um, <laughs> she had big eyelids. That's <laughs> right. Go on. That, that were too big. And this, this is what I was thinking. What, right? what, do you mean she, what do you mean she had big eyelids? How big do eyelids have to be for you to go, they're big eyelids? <laughs> or she shoplifting with them? Would she come out of Dixon's with like radio stored in them? What do you mean yeah, she had no, big it was, eyelids? It was another one of them popular things around that way. Do you know like, What do you mean popular things? I they think they go, they go, oh, that's how I all the rage. Can I get some big eyelids, please? No, no, no. It was just like one of them things that people suffered with. Just big eyelids. They could hardly open their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? That, that's one of the popular things around where I grew up. People had big eyelids, they could hardly open their eyes. What does that mean? What sort of freak town were you born in? You had webbed feet people with big heads, you got women with big eyelids. What does big eyelids mean? Are you confusing her with the horse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did she have hooves? Look, what? Just, just too much skin. It was like the, the, the neck of a chicken. <laughs> But on the eyes. Well, what's your point? Anyway, so there's this big eyelided woman with the legs. And that's what I'm saying to you, though. That's when I read that story with people with trousers. Yeah. I went from that. Yeah. To a that. woman who used to have big eyelids. <laughs> still, I still know the point. But then, but then, and also the other bloke who had the eyelid problem was a was a mate of mine. Right. Yeah. His, his dad had it. Um. <laughs> same problem. Massive, massive eyelids. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um. 
I'm, I used to say to me mum, oh, I'm going round to, you know, Dave's house. Yeah. And, uh, or to say, repeat, well, <laughs> that's all right, but make sure his dad doesn't take you out in the car. Because he could hardly, <laughs> he could hardly see. He had to have his dad. <laughs> he gets to tilt his head back to keep his eyes open. Make sure! Did he have a couple of matches with him all, at all times? <laughs> Oh. What a load of gobbledygook. Oh, well, yeah. know, but this began as educating Ricky. I know, it's like he was people thinking, with eyelids. But it's like you're supposed to make that leap as well. Yeah. If I mentioned the, the trousers, Ricky will probably be thinking about people with big eyelids <laughs> and women <laughs> yeah. wearing leggings. Play a record, Carl. Got nonsense. Adverse. No. No, oh, right. Muse, time is running out on XFM 104.9. Just a couple of emails just to update you on what's coming in here. Go on. Um, Natasha has emailed us. She says that she's of Chinese origin and at 27 she often got mistaken for 24. So your notion that Chinese people don't age well is obviously uh, factually incorrect. Yeah, well, we didn't need, uh, thank you for saying, <laughs> but I mean, uh, honestly, trust us, Natasha, we didn't need you to tell us that. We what? know Carl is talking absolute nonsense. Wait till you get to 30. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, now this is, uh, this is quite a nice email from Paul. He says, uh, let Carl know that I have a Chinese friend called Oi. Imagine the confusing and amusing situation for James. <laughs> out and about in yeah. busy solo. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> Does your surname come here? <laughs> <laughs> Lightning wit. White from, uh, from till you're 30. Yeah, I know. Brilliant. I know. But no, oh. actually, we've had a surprising response to, uh, Songs of Phrase this week. Despite the fact everyone has agreed that it's a racialist, <laughs> they've but nevertheless uh, had a go. Yeah. So, uh, keep your answers coming in. Um, Good. Because we may as well. You're a hit, Carl. You're a hit. What, have we still got monkey news? Yeah, that's still coming up. That's yeah. Guaranteed. Later on, later on. Um, we're, we're not doing Cheeky Freak of the Week anymore. Uh, uh, we're not. <laughs> no. No. Don't want to upset people on that. Sure. But there is a good freaky program on <laughs> this week. Go on. I think it's on Channel 4. Yeah. A woman, a woman with a big head on it. No, I think it's BBC Two. Is it? Yeah. All right. Well, unless there's two on, because that would be a great week for you, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Won't be coming out. Is that the one when you said, "Go on, say, say, right, say what you said when you saw it." Uh, the woman with the with the head. Yeah. Just said it looks like a cartoon. <laughs> That's so mean. I don't want to discuss no, that. No, it's not. It's not mean. It is mean, Carl. Again, Steve, if we were in a restaurant and I'm arranging to meet her, and I said to the guy on the door, I I'm meeting, you know, Lisa or whatever her name is here. Yeah? Right. What does he look like? Well, looks like a cartoon. <laughs> I'll be over there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't think he'll he'll get mixed up. What would That's you say about me and Steve again? If you were meeting us? Uh. No, it just starts getting nasty, doesn't it? Um, I'm meeting, uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, we're very busy. Uh, what does he look like? Um, he looks like Charlie Brown grew up, he's got a complete little round bald head, and he's got a gormous look on his face. He's over there, mate. <laughs> yeah. All right? Let's start the ball rolling for you, Carl. I love that, that it's okay to say what you like about people if you go, yeah, but if I was looking for her in a restaurant. I know, but. <laughs> yeah. And why have you arranged to go on a date with this woman? Because I am. <laughs> for her or for you? Well, I'd like to have a chat with her. Mm. You know what I mean? Just find out what worries her and... You know what I mean? Because some girls People worry like about things. Yeah. Like their hair being a mess and that. Yeah. You know, with her, it's like, we see your problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fine, alright. Well, let's move on. We're not doing Cheeky Freak of the Week anymore. No. We, let's do something nice. Let's talk nicely about things. What, what's happened nice in the world, Carl? What do you like in the world? When you get up and you go, oh, that was a brilliant day, I... dot dot dot. What do you do when you go, oh, that was brilliant? Uh. We had a game, last, a game of snooker. You like snooker, don't you? I mean, you and Steve played snooker last week. Yeah, but things are always ruined. Do you know what I mean? I might be having a nice time having a game of snooker, mm. and then, you know, we're, we're having a proper battle, mm. and I'm trying to concentrate on taking a shot, and then you'll say things like, look, look at his little monkey hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going for the black. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or maybe I'll say, I'm just, just going to the toilet. Yeah. And then one of you will follow me in and peer over the, <laughs> over the door. Oh yeah! Do that one! That was when you were actually in a cubicle sitting down, wasn't it? Yeah. And Steve Merchant's head appeared and went, all right. And you went, what if that wasn't me? Oh, that was great. Yeah. Uh, uh, doing a George Michael on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is one of the benefits of being very tall. You can look over You can look car. over the stalls, uh, in toy <laughs> lavatory. <laughs> Giraffe out. You're sitting down there and you look up, right? And he's peering over yeah. the top. 
Oh, oh yeah. the fun we have. Oh, it's great, isn't it? But anything intelligent. It's like the monkeys. About. We are like the monkeys. Oh, we are sweet. I wanted to write a thing for the darkness. I want to write a, like the, the new monkeys. Like I want a TV show. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. Well, if they're listening, or their radio show, uh, what, a record company are listening, or their manager, big fan of the darkness, my favourite. Well, don't make a point. Well, no, no, like no, that. no, my, my favourite band at the moment, let's, uh, we'll do a pilot. They're no, the monkeys. But they don't make Running round, speed it up, they can have their songs in it, they can write songs specially for us. What if they can't act? And it's them, they can act, they just act themselves running round. We're getting people like Henry, M what's it, McGee and that, to come in and sort of be the actors, and, yeah. you know, all those posh actors that, that appear in Ali G and that. It sounds like a lot of hard work. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay, forget <laughs> it. Knock on the head. Yeah, let's play Radiohead. <laughs> Radiohead and let down off OK Computer on XFM 104.9. Right, let's think of some nice stuff then. Annoyed I was yesterday. Go on. Just got off the train and, um, guy comes up to me and he says, uh, excuse me, can you spare some change? I'm, uh, I'm from Liverpool and I'm homeless. And I was so angry. I really, it was in a bad mood anyway, and I just wanted to say to him, well, there's your mistake. <laughs> Go back to Liverpool. That's why you're homeless. You're in London. Well, he might have been you're homeless idiot. in Liverpool and thought- Well, why'd uh, you come down here? Well, where would you rather be homeless? Liverpool or London? Well, Algarve. Mm. Well, no, but I mean, I'd certainly- Yeah, you know what but I mean? just, why, why supposed to say I'm from Liverpool and I'm homeless? Why is that supposed to be a persuading factor? Just annoyed me. I thought there was enough problems here. He's going for a double sympathy, double sympathy vote. Yeah. I'm homeless <laughs> and I'm a Liverpool. He could have just said I'm from Liverpool. I'd have given him some change. Guys, he was from Manchester once. I gave him a sandwich. Yeah. There's yeah. a thing the other night, right? They do this program. Uh, it's only on in London. So if you're listening out of London, you won't know about it. But it's about uh, Oxford Street, mm. right? And um, about all the thieving that goes it's on. It's like thieving. Yeah. Uh, you know, drug problems yeah. on the streets and that. Yeah. Uh, you know, what gets on people's nerves, those people with the boards, that, mm. you know, golf sale and all that. Mm. And, um, <laughs> is this bit that concentrated on the homeless problem, right? And, uh, he said, you know, this fella looks after the homeless, he goes up to him and says, how are you doing? Are you hungry? Do you need food and that? He said, you know, a lot of people worry about the homeless, but we do try and look after them. And the Salvation Army were there, and they said, and this is where they can come if they need anything, if they need any food or, uh, any clothes if the, if the shoes are worn out. And he said, oh, can we have a look at that, right? So they go in this little room where all the clothes are, uh, and they go, and there's, there's like a, a load of jumpers for them in the winter in the cold. And the camera sort of pans across. A load of ties. <laughs> 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 right, for the homeless. <laughs> what? Ties. The ties, ties for, for the homeless? The, for round, round the neck, like, to look smart. No, they use them as belts. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a lot of- Or as a lead for their dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah. What are you talking about, ties? That's what they did. They said, and here's the room with all the stuff in it. Right? <laughs> for the jumpers. <laughs> for the homeless. <laughs> jumpers, <laughs> shirts. And uh, some uh, trainers. Uh, and you saw a load of ties. Nobody yeah. wanted one. Some evening dress. Any and they cravats, got a formal function. Any cravats. Now, where's the cummerbunds? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of being homeless outside the Royal Albert Hall tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where the real pickings are. <laughs> I'm breaking in the back door of the Savoy this evening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another, dear. another charity thing that I was reading about the other day that they're doing. Do they give them trainers? Because I've seen a lot of tramps with new trainers, and I think they must be like. Like a, like a equivalent of a soup kitchen where they get shoes because that's, that's it must be yeah. Otherwise that's weird, isn't it? You get a you buy any money you, you beg all day and get a nice new pair of yeah. Nike. Yeah, no, you, don't waste it on clothes. Get some <laughs> tennis. Yeah. Get some yeah special brew. That's the best value. Yeah, Go on some smack. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a lot of worries, you yeah. on the street. Little starter bag, your mind off fiber. Yeah, yeah, take your mind yeah, off it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's weird you say that, because, <laughs> you know, that a train is the most important thing, because, like, you know all the problems in Africa. Sure. Right? A lot, lot of problems going on there. Yeah. Uh, the other day, they're asking for people to send their spectacles <laughs> to Africa. <laughs> right. Would you be happy if you were over there and, like, you're hungry and that? <laughs> and then they say, here you go. <laughs> well, yeah, but it must be for a reason. I Just don't think see, it's... they've got bad eyes and that. Yeah, I know, but I don't think they go around. It's not like when you see those things on Live Aid and there's people dying, but mm. they're putting specks on them. No, I think that's what it is. No, it's not, Carl. They I sort out food and medication before they put a little pair of specks on the lads. That isn't how he came across in the advert. <laughs> I think they probably walk hand in hand. You know, the people handing out the food are also, you know, walking alongside guys with the specs and they're handing them out as well. But what have they got to look at? <laughs> what? They don't own anything. <laughs> they'll, rea they'll realize how bad everything is. God, it's rubbish here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, 
tell you, I try and help out the world. I've joined a little charity thing. They pay me five pounds a month. Yeah. yeah. I'm all up for helping. Yeah. Sure. But sometimes you think, what can we do? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. What can we do? Okay, what can we do? We can't do anything. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> 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 Play record. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about the debt the other day. I was reading up on the amount of debt that South Africa are in and that, and it's just like, mm. that's without any shops. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If they had shops to spend the money on, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be murder. <laughs> that third world debt isn't because they bought too many smeg fridges from us. It's <laughs> shopping. Look, who's been shopping? <laughs> I have. Oh, well, you've gone over the top. You're on a budget now. <laughs> yeah. You're getting nothing but grain and blankets for the next year. Because you go mental. Who's, who's, who who just spent be... a billion quid in diction? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Forthcoming single from The Thrills, that's called Santa Cruz. <sighs> on XFM 104.9. Um, we were just talking about people who do good work, you know, wandering up and down Oxford Street, giving yeah. stuff to the homeless and things. Yeah. And I was at a little, they have a little kind of music festival back in my hotel, hometown of Bristol, periodically in the summer. They can never really attract any decent right. acts, but, uh, you know, we support Not it anyway. Not even Portishead? Uh, no, they never tricky. No, 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 no. no. Right. I think that, well, this year it was Robert Plant. Uh, who sang, um, lots of old blues covers, and people were quite bored until he played Whole Lot of Love at the end, and then we sort of went, Ree, you should have done all the old Led Zeppelin, <laughs> stop playing all this other nonsense we're not interested in. <laughs> so I was set this for exactly, next time. Yeah. Robert, 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 no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. But, um, I just uh, snuck off into the woods for, you know, a waz, because I'm quite rock and roll like that, and I was passing, and these are a group of people, and I've always thought they never get enough praise, enough credit, and I genuinely, and I mean this without, it, Entirely sincerely, I really do. I don't mean to be, I'm not taking the mic at all. But the St. John's Ambulance people, they're absolutely blinding because they are, they all look like nerds. I mean, they all look like kind of, because they're normally kind of fat women or kind of, or kind of well, blokes. I think, doing, I think you're doing very well for their, um, their new recruitment campaign. Well, so, I was uh, going to say, I think no, you're selling it to people who This want is to join. my point, Rick, is that they've not changed the uniforms in like 40 years. Literally. And it is normally, <laughs> yeah, it's normally the kind of, the nerds from your school who went into yeah. it or whatever. It's kind of old people. I saw them, they were all sat around in this little area. No one was, you know, they were just sat around, they were bored, they weren't really enjoying the music. And I thought, look at that, they're not, that fat kid over there, I, wa I pointed him out to my mate, I said, see that fat one over there, in the uniform. With the glasses and the hairbrush forward. With the glasses, hairbrush forward, yeah. the kind of blue navy jumper. Satchel. There's a little satchel, yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. He is never gonna get off with a girl, probably until he's like 30. And yeah, even then it's- It gets to loosen clothes. And even then it's cause, <laughs> cause he's giving mouth to mouth <laughs> to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, and I thought, he's never gonna get anything. And I'll tell you this, all these trendy young girls walking around in their, you know, in their kind of, you know, cool summer gear, in their trendy tie-dye and the like, I'll tell you, when one of them, you know, takes something that's a little bit dodgy that they bought off some guy with dreads, right? And then they're desperate for him and they zip in there. Oh, quick, quick, my friend's, you know, passing out, she's had something, she's had a funny turn, and he's straight there with his water and his medication. Oh, yeah, they need him then, but he doesn't get any action the rest of the time. You know, she's human, that's what annoyed me about. I thought, they're doing a bloody good job. They turn up at sports events, at festivals, no one gives them the time of day, you never hear any good praise about them, and they're there, sat there, Steve, hot or cold. Tell me the truth now. Did you join St. John's Ambulance last week to get some birds? Got no. Action. Really? Oh, like, no action. Uh, and I've been passing some dodgy ease, man, all the festivals. <laughs> By the way, your dreads are awful. <laughs> you, can, you can see they're fake. They're made out of newspaper. They're awful. You really do look an idiot. But seriously, I'm all joking aside, I genuinely wanted to give some massive props. <laughs> 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 if I could give some big ups to the St. John's people, because I genuinely, without any joke, and I genuinely think they do a brilliant job. Could I just say how good I think the Salvation Army are? Because you see those elderly ladies with surgical supports, a lot of them, mm -hmm. all look like Thor Herd. Yep. Um, well, that's a prerequisite to get into that secret army. And they play that bloody tambourine, rain or shine, <laughs> yeah. and they are just, all they're trying to do is, you know, save you from burning in hell. <laughs> and they don't get any respect. Of the Salvation Army, do they, like, would they have to get called off? Yeah. They <laughs> if we, if yeah, all they, they, It'd be the Gurkhas first, then all the regulars, then the TAs. I think then, uh, it's... I think then it's sort of like police. Lifeguards. Lifeguards, like yeah. Down to, down to, I think, AA, and then it's the Salvation <laughs> Army. <laughs> right. We send in the Salvation Army, obviously, if, if you know, we really have we lost a lot of yeah. casualties, sure. you know, and uh, they're, they're the last to go. Yeah, but they are so, all highly trained, aren't they? All those old women. Yeah. They can kill a man. Yeah. They're, with yeah. a single blow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, good, good, good to them. Good to John's Ambulance. Good to, uh, Salvation Army. You know, big up. But Pick I think we should just, you know, if I might introduce a new feature every week, let's just give some props, let's just give some massive to respect to someone who doesn't get enough respect. Yeah. 
Um, who doesn't get enough respect? Uh, who's done a blinding job? Um, <laughs> Mother Teresa, she's- She's gone though, she's yeah, gone. She uh, won't be listening anyway. Uh, who's the best person that there is? <laughs> who's the best person that there is? Um, I'll tell you what, we're gonna take it, but I'm gonna call, um, uh, either Carol Vorderman or, um, Esther Anson and say who's the best one you've ever met that, you know, did so much. Yeah. Alright? And we'll, and we'll heap praise upon them next week. Yeah. Great. Mm. What? I just well, don't like, you know, they know, they know they're doing a good job. Right. If I did that job, I want a pat on the back. You wouldn't uh, need a pat on the back. And people are starting to, you know, it's like Carol Vorderman, I like her, she's alright, she does a good job. But now that better homes, they only tend to turn up at people who have had problems. Do you know what I mean? Right. Well, well leave you can it, have leave it. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Go on, what do you mean? No, it's, it used to start off and it's like- I haven't seen better homes, what is better homes? It's, they, they go around and do someone's house up. Right. Do you know what I mean? But then they get, they get a bit of bad news. And Carol thinks, I'll cheer him up, I'll give him a new kitchen. Yeah. And it, it annoys me because if you haven't had bad news, it doesn't mean you're not worth a new kitchen. Did you, you send in an application? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. They say that I'm, I'm bald, I'm from Manchester. Well, um, if you'd written that, they'd have rush round. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? What they, they say, so-and-so's had a, a bad year, his mum died, he lost his leg, um, and all he's ever wanted is a chaise long and a uh, hostess trolley. <laughs> and the annoying thing is, right, they <laughs> might not be the ones who write in, it might be a neighbour, yeah. but they also get something sorted out for them. Really? So even though the neighbours had a bit of bad news, they go, I'll cash in on this one, I'll send a letter into old Carol, tell her that, uh, you know, mum's passed away, yeah. Yeah. I'll get a new, uh, conservatory sorted. Sure. And sometimes a neighbour gets a better deal <laughs> than the person who, do you know what I mean, the person who's had a bit of bad news yeah. gets like a new little kitchen, whatever. <laughs> Neighbour next door. Leave the kitchen. Let it go, Carl. New, new decking in the You had to pay for your kitchen. Uh, you know what I mean, now? though? It's yeah, all done the, now, the kitchen. kitchen sorted, the bathroom needs to You had trouble with the grouting, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. Oh, no, we have got we've got to do- Oh, look, play a record, we've got to do the results. And then we've got to do monkey news. Could we quickly do the results? Yeah, well, you say we've got to do the results. There's not people hanging on for them. Let's <laughs> 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 do it, Just knock it out there before- Well, let's play a tune, let's come back and do it. Eddie and the Hot Rods, yeah, surely. Eddie and the Hot Rods, do anything you want to do. That's uplifting, isn't it? Oh. Oh, the drumming. Brilliant. Takes me back, all the way back to 1978 on XFM 104.9. What were you doing? What were you doing? What are your memories? I was actually probably dancing around miming the drums to that in my bedroom. In fact, <laughs> I remember- you mute? Were you mute? Uh, no, no. I remember, I think, I had that what one on a what single, but I'd got it from an old jukebox, so it didn't have a middle. Sure. Right, it, I think they're called dinked, right? And so I had to line it up really carefully, and sometimes by the end it would just slightly go out where the record was moving. Mm. Where well, I just had to- interesting anecdote there. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What a lovely insight. you right, right, asking me what I was doing 25 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. Carl, quick, the results, then monkey news. I need some monkey news, but I need the results first. I'll right, play right. it again and give the answers. Here we go. Songs of so was the phrase? Name what? the artist. Name the artist. I know you're just 16, but looking old. Oh, you cry. That's. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> that's Philip Bailey again. That's too little. Right, it was. That was uh, Roxette. The look. Yeah, yeah. Right, we had, uh, You and Cry started yeah. it off. Yeah. Uh, in 16. That was Dean Martin. Because oh, yeah. Jane, Jane's that's addiction. addiction, yeah. That's because Ch yeah. Chinese Philip Bailey. Uh, Philip Bailey, that's second out in his ad. Uh, last one, uh, we used him for Chinese, <laughs> where there was a hairy Chinese kid. He's never got so many royalties being used <laughs> in racist uh, game shows. Brilliant. Then Roxette and finishing with George Michael. Oh, right? dear. So, Brilliant. Right. Who's the winner? Well, the winner, actually, uh, it looks to me like he's got all of them here, uh, from Bognor Regis. It's Stuart Birch. Well done, Stuart, and you get that bag, bag of tat. Bognor um, Regis. Yep. Oh. Just need his address. Takes me back as well. Yeah, um, if you don't, just email in your address, uh, Stuart, and you can have those goodies. If you're not interested, don't bother. Steve. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Okay, monkey related news from Carl Pilkington. Right, uh, do you know the monkey that went into space? Yeah. Yep. It happened in 1958. Right. Now you know that. Yeah. Yes. What did he do next? What, what did, did the monkey next? do next? Yeah. One appearance on, uh, Celebrity Squares and it was, like, forgotten. Right. Uh, yeah, cut a no novelty record. Yeah, well, just like Rick Waller. I'll tell you what happened. He, uh, <sighs> he got back and all that. <laughs> he got back. <laughs> Heroes welcome. NASA sort of said, you know, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's where a lot of people think, think, you know, it all ended. Sure. Yeah. But NASA were like, well, hang on a minute. We spent He's a trained. lot of time, we've trained him up and stuff. 
So he's like, you know, he's saying, sure, sure, you know, I've learned a lot, I've still got it all, I've kept it all, I know what to do. So they said, right, we'll use you. So he turned into, like, a bit of a trainer. At NASA. <laughs> we both have to send you out on the top of an organ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put on this little bellhop outfit. <laughs> Could you smoke fags? <laughs> yeah. I'll have a go. So he was, they were getting in new monkeys. You know, the, the main man at NASA was saying, can you teach these the same? He's going, of course I can. Do you know what I mean? I remember it all, I know what's going on, I'll tell him what buttons to press, what to do in emergencies, that sort of thing. Um, it was technically, sort of, employed by the army. Right, can, can I just, can I just fit in here? I, I, I don't know the story, Carl, and I, I might embarrass myself here, you've got an army of people out there that have probably sent me, uh, an equally, um, deranged email from a different website, but I'm pretty sure when they sent the monkey into space, it was to monitor his f physiology. He didn't, he didn't <laughs> press any buttons or learn to dock or take off. <laughs> It's just, it was just the effects of weightlessness and space on, um, basically a primate. I'm pretty sure he was tied in with electrodes to mm. his head. Mm. So, yeah. well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I people, could be but on. even if that were the case, and he had learned to press one or two very basic buttons. Definitely not. Definitely but not. even if it were the case, no, I'm pretty certain not. they wouldn't have brought him back to train up Neil Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely. Go on, but go him on. Going, Neil, what are you gonna say when you come out there? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I was thinking of just saying, like, <laughs> I'm on the moon. Hello, it's made of cheese. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't what say about, that. I've noticed that you got little legs, yeah. right, but mankind stepped forward. Well, how could I put that? I was just gonna say, oh, I'm on the moon, scraped the beer, no, wish you were no, here. I've got things so Hi, bad, man. Yeah, go on. Anyway, basically, he got back, they sorted him out with a nice pension, he mm. was happy. Um, because of, like, the rank that he got, he, the, he was like, you know, he had loads of, uh, medals and stuff, he said, right, we'll make him a colonel. He got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. like I say, he got a pension, um, I was at the end, he died in 1969, he was ba uh, buried with his wife. He passed <laughs> away. His <laughs> wife! I'm sure, I'm sure it just goes on to a different website. <laughs> yeah. About something completely different. And yeah, you're like, talking about Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His page is missing. Oh, dear. So. Well, that, w Carl, I'm, like, if someone could call in, did they train Lyca the dog to sort of like, you know, dock and re-entry? He never made it back, did he, Lyca? Well, they didn't out, bother. We'll they didn't actually. even bother. They, didn't bring him they back. just sent him up there and uh, they didn't have to bring him back and they just went, yeah, that's there. That's brilliant. Well, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, amazing. Really? Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? Rubbish, isn't it? Sort of brought it down a bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the little monkey made a colonel. Hero. Big hero. What was he in? What craft was he in? Uh, Sputnik. Hang on a minute. He was in, um, Jupiter AM. Yeah. Let me see that piece of paper. Yeah, I, I, I can guarantee there's nothing there about his, his training other than Let's hope he's not sick on the control panel when we shoot him up at 400 Gs. <laughs> oh dear. What's, what's I love monkey? the fact that you think that this monkey was a high- <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do, do <laughs> you, when, when you think of these things that are less in the monkey's face, do you think of the planet of the apes? Like they're sort of talking, sort of chimps and gorillas and they're, they're in tunics on horseback <laughs> with snub-nosed rifles. <laughs> what do you think of? Just a little monkey getting on with it. <laughs> He knows his job, he knows what he's got to do to get somewhere. with it. Look, look, he's pressed the button, watch him press the button. This takes me back. Do you remember 1965, I think it was? We're gonna use him to train other DJs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it then. Goodbye. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.